All right. Uh, court will call 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stauk. Record should reflect the jury's not present in the courtroom. Um, before we start today, I do want to talk a little bit. Uh, Mr. Tolini's here. Good. Okay. Um, I wanted to make a little bit of a further record on the Medina case uh, and some research that I've done since then. Um, 168109 uh, CRS um, section 16-8-109 uh, permits a lay person to give an opinion regarding a mental condition uh, of the of a defendant. Um, Mr. Tolini has cited uh, People versus Medina. Uh, Five twenty one Pacific Second twelve forty seven Colorado uh, nineteen seventy four for the proposition that uh, the the individuals which the district attorney's office sometimes requests be permitted to give an opinion regarding sanity. You can go ahead and have a seat if you want. I'll, I'll give you a chance to talk. Um, the um, but the uh, defense has uh, objected on the grounds of Medina. Um, and I reviewed the facts and circumstances of that case. And in that case, uh, the trial court, this was back at a time, let's see, it was 1974. So it was back at a time when the issues of uh, guilt and uh, sanity were tried in uh, separate phases. And actually, this case apparently had three different trials, all on the same um, facts regarding a robbery. Um, and in that case, the trial court allowed a sheriff um, to testify that uh, he thought the defendant was presently sane, and I note that word presently sane, uh, based on a uh, contact that the sheriff had with the defendant while transporting the defendant from Dallas, Texas, uh, back to Fort Collins. It does not say when the crime occurred, and it does not say when the sheriff had his first contact with the defendant. Um, so that's not uh, terribly helpful. The um, next person that was allowed to testify was an investigator. And according to the facts, the investigator did not uh, first met the defendant approximately two months after the offense. <laughs> And uh, the Supreme Court ultimately held that it was uh, that the trial court abused its discretion in allowing that testimony, um, saying that uh, before such opinion evidence from a non-expert can be admissible, the specific facts upon which the opinion is based must first be stated by the witness, and his testimony must also show a closer, intimate relationship with the party alleged to be insane. Um, they also cite a case called People versus Cole from Michigan, um, and it appears to be that the emphasis of that case was that uh, the witness must establish that he was sufficiently acquainted with the defendant or testator so as to testify to the mental condition on a comparative basis and not merely to some manifested idiosyncrasy or eccentric behavior. Um, Also, however, reviewed the case of People versus Tally, 7 Pacific 3rd, 172, uh, Colorado Appellate, 1999. And um, I will tell you that there is an error in that case uh, because it says that cert was granted August 28, 2000. That's not correct. Uh, cert was denied by both the United States Supreme Court and uh, the Colorado Supreme Court. <clears throat> but in that case, uh, it involved a, I think it was a cable TV installer. Um, yeah, cable um, television company installer. Uh, and the one worker killed another worker for, I guess, infringing on his turf is how it's referred to in the case. Um, and the defendant at that point in time, or some months before the killing occurred, uh, told his supervisor that if the victim was not kept off his turf, he would go to a higher level of security. And the supervisor was called to testify at trial. 
and was allowed to express an opinion on the on the defendant's sanity as of the dates other than the date of the offense. And the, the uh, Court of Appeals in that case found that it was not error to allow such testimony. It also noted People v. Gallimanis, G-A-L-I-M-A-N-I-S, 944 Pacific 2nd, 626, Colorado Appellate, 1997, um, holding that it is proper to inquire into the mental condition of the defendant both before and after uh, the commission of the act. And in this case, it said the defendant's supervisor expressed his opinion that the defendant was sane as of nine days after the killing. Even if his testimony as defendant contends also expressed an opinion that the defendant was sane at an earlier date, that opinion referred to defendant's sanity only three months before the killing. <coughs> Um, so as I see this, I, I think that the foundation that needs to be laid for an opinion to be provided is what were the circumstances of the contact between the witness that is testifying, the circumstances under which the witness had contact with the defendant, how the defendant was acting, those sorts of things. Um, I also note that in this case, everybody except for the defendant's brother and uh, Mr. Stauk had contact with the defendant either at or near the time of the offense, which is alleged to have been committed in this case. Um, so it seems to me that uh, a person can give testimony regarding whether or not, based on their context with them, uh, whether they thought the defendant was sane at the time. They cannot uh, give testimony unless qualified as an expert and a sufficient foundation is laid. They cannot give testimony regarding uh, a diagnosis that may have rendered the defendant uh, insane, um, but they can testify as to whether or not they saw certain uh, things, whether she was, I think uh, the prosecution has gone down the line of, did she refer to herself by a different name? Did she um, seem to know what was going on? In addition, with respect to, I think it was Van Nest, uh, was the name of the nurse yesterday. Um, she's in a little bit different position. Number one, she was qualified to testify as an expert. True, not in the, uh, as a psychologist or psychiatrist. Um, but part of her job requires her to obtain consent from a um, patient uh, in order to perform an examination. And before she can obtain that consent validly, as she testified, she has to make sure that uh, the patient understands the procedure, understands what's going on, understands why she is requesting what it is that she's requesting, and that the patient has the present capacity to be able to understand all of that and make a decision regarding that. So I think her testimony regarding whether or not the defendant was sane was properly admitted. <coughs> so with that, Mr. Tolini, did you, excuse me, did you want to make further record, sir? Just briefly, um, Go ahead. In regards to um, the insane nurse, I think it's different for testifying whether or not she was mentally signed the releases and so forth. I think she has a training on that. And that's my objection, my source, my objection to her to bring that she's saying, I think that has a legal connotation that she's not qualified or does not have the foundation. I understand the court's ruling, but just that's what my objection okay. is too. And I understand there's Medina and there's in my reading of Medina, there was kind of two issues that the board had with the officers, with the two basic law enforcement people testifying. One was, I understand the board saying the proximity and time of when they're in contact with them. Um, it also seemed that they were stressing that the contact was of somewhat of a limited duration. Um, and it, I think one of them only had like an hour long interview with them. Um, Tally, and, and I understand Tally, it's unclear from the case, how much contact the supervisor had with yeah. the defendant, I whether this that. was, you know, we've been supervising for years, we've been supervising for, you know, a month. And so they don't necessarily have this that we had to focus on the time. Um, 
it's depending on how this case goes out. We'll have some direction from the Supreme Court on how to interest of Medina, even though it's a 50 year old case. It doesn't seem that there's a lot of cases subsequent to it sure. explaining what the actual foundation um, is. And so I think I made uh, you know the record pretty clear. Um, and, and and again, I, I also want, I'm not going to make a long record, you know, in the Sure. For the district attorney, when they're asking that question, I'm objecting to I'm just I'm going to have that foundation. I think that would make it sufficient for um, so they understand what the focus is. All right. Prosecution, do you have any other record to add? Yes, people, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, it's the people's position uh, that we agree with the court on the analysis of the cases that you cited. However, the jury is also going to be instructed on what insanity is. They're also going to be instructed, at least in the packet that we provided, that a lay person can weigh an opinion about insanity. At the end of the day, all of this goes to the weight of the testimony because they also are going to be getting instruction on the credibility of all witnesses. And they can base the amount of time that the witnesses have spent with the defendant and weigh their credibility on that. So the instructions of law will cure any concerns that defense has. Okay. All right. And um, that was a long way to start the morning. Sorry about that. Um, Anything we need to bring up uh, outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? No, no. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. <laughs> Are you going to start with the video? Uh, no, I'll start with some testimony first, obviously. Yeah. And there's actually will be four videos during her testimony. The long one will be her interview uh, that she conducted on uh, January 29th, I think it is. It's about a little over four hours. We'll also need to find a breaking point this yeah. morning. Okay. Yeah. All rise for the jury, please. Fine, it's all good. I'm positive. I can see it's fine. Thank you. May all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 uh, people versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Um, has anything occurred since we were last together that causes any of you to believe you could not continue to serve as a fair and impartial juror in this case? If so, please raise your hand. No response. All right. Yesterday, uh, when we took our break, we were still in the midst of the prosecution's case in chief. That's where we will resume today. Uh, Mr. Allen, call your next witness. Thank you, Ron. We would call Jessica Bethel. <clears throat> it's my understanding Mr. Cook is doing her cross. I don't know where Mr. Cook went. Okay. He's going to be right back. I will stand in for him. We're good to go then. Okay. All right, Ms. Bethel, if you would uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about giving this man will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Go ahead and have a seat in the witness stand. Please watch your step as you step into the stand. <clears throat> Can I proceed, Your Honor? 
You may. Go ahead. Good morning, ma'am. Will you please introduce yourself to our jury and then spell your first and last name for the record? Good morning. My name is Jessica Bethel, J-E-S-S-I-C-A-B-E-T-H-E-L. Ms. Bethel, um, what do you do currently for uh, work? I'm currently a stay-at-home mom. Okay. Did you at one point work for the El Paso County Sheriff's Office? I did. <clears throat> what were your What was your last assignment with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office? I was last assigned to the Investigations Division. What kind of education and training allowed you to do that job? Um, I went through a post academy to become a sworn peace officer for the state of Colorado. And from there, I received um, on-the-job training and advanced my career into the Investigations Division. Are you still a post-certified peace officer in the state of Colorado? Yes, I am. How long were you in law enforcement previously? Um, total, including my time served as a civilian, would be 14 years. I want to specifically get uh, get us oriented to January 2020 time frame. Were you working at the El Paso County Sheriff's Office at that time? Yes, I was. What was your specific job assignment then? I was assigned to the uh, majors investigation team, which consisted of uh, detectives that um, investigated homicides and robberies, assaults against people. How many different homicide cases did you get involved with investigating if you have a, a round figure? Oh boy. Um, I would say more than 100. At some point, did you become involved in the uh, Gannon Stout disappearance case? Yes, I did. What was your role in that case? I was assigned as the lead detective. What does a lead detective do? Uh, the lead detective coordinates um, the investigation mainly on a typical case and receives the, receives the leads and the information that's being um, collected by the other detectives. And then from there, analyzes that information and disseminates further leads, eventually leading up to either um, an arrest of the person or, you know, looking at, at potentially a different suspect. <clears throat> you said in the typical case, was there something about this particular case that made it different from those, what you would classify as a typical homicide investigation? Yes. What was different about it just from the initial um, standpoint? Uh, initially, this case was receiving a lot of attention in social media, and the case quickly grew to a multi-agency case. Do you remember off the top of your head how many different agencies got involved with this investigation? I would say close to 10, if not more. Did that include both um, state Colorado agencies like the El Paso County Sheriff's Office and other agencies, uh, also federal agencies? Yes. Did it also include agencies in other states? Yes, it did. Would that include um, South Carolina and Florida? Yes. Because of the scope of this investigation, did that change the role of a lead investigator from the sheriff's office to it, some degree? It did, yes. In what way did that happen? Uh, because there was so much information coming in, um, I assumed more of an investigative role as opposed to sitting back and collecting all of the leads at once. Would you classify the investigation as almost an all-hands-on-deck um, effort? Absolutely. <clears throat> Speaking about just generally how the course of an investigation might go in a, in a typical case, um, what are things that can influence the direction a case will develop into? Um, things that can influence it, um, I would say whether or not we have witnesses available, whether or not there's video, um, whether or not the suspect is willing to do an interview with us, and those types of things can influence it. What about the potential absence or existence of physical evidence? Absolutely, that can influence it as well heavily. Um, you mentioned witnesses, uh, willingness to give statements or lack of willingness to give statements. Can that also in, uh, influence the course of an investigation? Yes, it can. What about misleading um, statements from witnesses? Can that have an influence on an investigation? Yes, it can. <clears throat> those things that I just uh, referenced, uh, did some of those things occur in this case? Yes, they did. Did some of those things have a negative influence on the investigation? Yes, they did.
Can you, in a general sense, tell us what some of those things might have been that caused a negative influence on the investigation? Um, this ultimately ended up being a homicide investigation, and we did not have a, a standard homicide scene where there would be, you know, evidence of the homicide and a body uh, that was not present in this case. Also, um, the the suspect providing alternate leads, multiple stories of what happened uh, also influenced how we proceeded with the case. When, when you've got that sort of dynamic going where there's um, different stories being presented to the investigative team, um, do you have to sometimes chase those down to see if there's any validity to them? We should always chase those down. Absolutely. Okay. And why is that? Um, it is, it's just as important whenever you're trying to prove that someone did something as um, to prove that they didn't do something. We need to act without bias. And so if they present something to us, we need to take that just as it's a credible piece of information and vet it before uh, we determine that it's, it's not a good lead. When, when did you first become aware of this particular investigation? Do you remember? Uh, January 28th. So the day after Gannon was reported missing by a 911 call and a non-emergency call? That's correct. By the defendant in this case? Yes. <clears throat> because the initial call was for a missing or runaway child, um, did that cause a investigative impetus or momentum to try to find this child that potentially had run away? Uh, initially, patrol handled the case just as a missing or runaway child. Um, but then later, when it was brought to our investigations, we or our attention, we realized that he was 11 years old, um, the weather, his medical conditions, um, it became more important to find him soon. Were there lots of searches conducted in the um, area sort of surrounding the um, victim's home? Yes, I was aware of many searches um, being done by neighbors, um, some co-workers of Albert's, and also law enforcement. Did, did that include um, vast areas of field and even reservoirs and that kind of thing? Yes. Did any of those searches in the immediate area turn up any clues that would lead to uh, any investigative leads that you could pursue? No. You said that you first learned of this case on January 28, 2020. Uh, did you actually reach out to the person that ended up being the defendant in this case on that particular day? Yes, I did. Why did you make that uh, effort? I wanted to contact um, Leticia to speak with her more about Gannon's disappearance and to meet with her at pre preferably at her home so that I could look at his room to look for clues as to where he may have gone, if he had left anything behind, a note, or any behavioral changes. Were you able to talk to uh, Leticia? I was, yes. How would you describe her demeanor on that phone call? Was she willing to talk to you? I would say she was hesitant at best. Uh, do you remember how you described it in your reports? I don't remember verbatim, no. Okay, do you remember if you described it as being apprehensive, that she was apprehensive to talk to you? Yes. Did you specifically ask her at that particular time um, if you could go to the house and talk to her about what had happened? Yes, I did. Did she agree to allow you to come to the house? No, she did not. Did she give a reason? Yes, she told me that there were several young children in the home, and she didn't want them overhearing what we were talking about. <clears throat> what did you do then? Um, as far as trying to get her to sit down with you and give some sort of a statement to you? I offered to meet her at a place of her choice. She ultimately asked that I meet her at Starbucks located on Fountain Mesa. Prior to this particular phone call, um, had you ever met Leticia Stauk? No. Had you ever talked to her on the phone? No. Did you, in fact, then meet up with her at the Starbucks on Fountain Mesa? I did. Who was present for that interaction? Uh, Leticia was present, Albert was present, uh, my partner, Detective Mark Riley was present, myself, and Jason Hess, Sergeant Jason Hess also was present during part of it. Okay. Was, did you actually do this contact with her and Mr. Stauk inside the Starbucks business? Yes. 
So was there a recording made of this particular interaction? Yes, there was. Can you hear sort of the normal chatter that you would hear in a Starbucks on the recording of this? Yes, you can. Can I approach with People's Exhibit 335? You may. Ms. Bethel, do you recognize People Exhi People's Exhibit 335? Yes, I do. How do you recognize it? Um, it is a disc containing a field interview with Mr. Stout and Letitia. Is this the uh, recording of what we were just talking about, your interaction with them at Starbucks on Fountain Mesa on January 28, 2020? It is. Have you had a chance to listen to that recording? I did. Is it a fair and accurate representation of that interview? Yes. Now at this time, I'd move for admission of People's 335 and request permission to publish. No objection, Your Honor. All right, Exhibit 335 will be admitted. Go ahead. And before we publish it, um, the person that you had contact with that um, identified as Letitia Stauk, uh, did that person have the same voice as the person you talked to on the phone just a little bit prior to this actual meeting? Yes, she did. Do you see that same person in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Will you please identify her for the jury, pointing out where she is sitting and what she's wearing? She's sitting at the defendant's table. She has a pink shirt on. Uh, with her head resting on her uh, hand? Yes. I would ask that the record reflect she has identified the defendant. The record will so reflect. Go ahead. And then uh, permission to publish People's 335, and it is 55 minutes and 54 seconds, Your Honor. And is this audio only? Yes, this is audio only. All right, go ahead. I wasn't sure about what you were going to be in. Yeah. So, um, do you guys still want to stand out here or do you want to go in the... We can go in. Okay. I'm Detective Buffel, by the way. Okay. This is my partner, Detective Riley. Sorry, I'm so little. I can't be here. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here. I'm not so we were just notified about what's going on with Gannon, and so we I just want to start from the beginning to make sure that I have accurate information. So your name, ma'am? It's T E C I A. And same last name. Let's go. A U C H. Your date of birth? A four eighty three. Give me the address because I don't think that street name's right. It's just Mandan M A N D A N. How long have you guys lived there? A little over a year. And your name, sir? Uh, first name is Eugene. <laughs> your date of birth? All right. Where do you work, ma'am? Uh, Which school? I don't know. I don't know if I think it's for the other college. And you, sir? Uh, I'm in Ashley Garden. Full time. So tell me a little bit about this Gannon. How old is he? He's 11? Switch help it out. That's, attention to that's not true. Right. That's what I was told too. So we were like everything we've been basing the 
Oh, yeah, that sound actually takes. Yeah, exactly. Last night it takes me. I was in Oklahoma, of course, still for training. And I had to come home emergency. But uh, he takes me last night. He's like, "Yeah, we saw him on the camera. Came in, didn't look, did not look distressed. Bought some chips, left on foot. I, mean, I can show you the text if you want to see it. But when did you go to Fort Sill? When? Yeah, yeah just I left Sunday. I just I've been there one day. School does Hannon attend? Uh, Grand Mountain. Grand Mountain? Yeah, it's in our neighborhood. I was going to say, I think that's a new one that opened up yes. together. Uh, tell me about his friends. Uh, most of his friends are right there, like right around our house. Like he has boys that live right at the end of the street. Um, he plays with them most of the time. Uh, Braden is his name. What's Braden's last name? Uh, I, I mean, I got all his parents' phone numbers and we talk to him all the time. But, uh, if I could get their number too. Yeah. So you have Brayden. I don't. Brayden. So like, it's they're like two families that live in the same house, but they're like related. So. Um, well, Connor, I know, but Connor is the web show. There's a Connor, but he goes to the web show. Actually, like because they rezoned them because of the new school or whatever. So yeah. he went there last year. Connor's mom is in with us. The dad's there too. She works at. Um, yeah, she works at Webster. So this is one of them. That's Ian. So like I said, I think it's two brothers and their families live in the same house. Um, and they got like three or four kids. But that's associated to Brayden? Uh, I think that's Brayden's uncle. I got Brayden's mom in there too. But you can get to him, so we just got him. This is him. So. What was the last time that Gannon went to school? Uh, we've been last week. Right? Yeah, so again, I went to school on Friday. Friday, yeah. When does he return home from school? Oh, I'm like 3.15 ish. Yeah, 3 or 5 or 3.15. Yeah. They changed in the time of the school. Like, it used to be like 3.30 to 3.45. Was it like a snow day? So, Brayden and Connor, are those the only two friends? Uh, I mean, yeah, he know, I don't even know they don't care. Oh, I'm looking. He wants to meet them all on top of home because he has numbers. I don't even like, I know them from one of our house. Like, I don't have a flight down. There's one more. This, uh, so Lily is my really my daughter's friend, but she has a brother that's Gannon's age as well. And they kind of live like right behind us. What is the brother's name? Uh, Reese. Reese. I do know that because yeah, I hear Lane was say all the time. Yeah. Um, so they live on the next street over. And sometimes they'll ride their bikes over there, but they mainly play with these boys, these Braden. And then uh, right next door to them is a group of girls that my daughter plays with. Uh, I just know their mom. Campbell. Camera is the mom, and that's her number right there. 801. Oh, yeah. C-A-M-B-R-A, I think. So that's a mom of... Uh, my daughter's friends. So it's like three girls. Well, one of them is the age of Gannon. Yeah, I mean, they're all... These kids are like, range, you know, they range from like first grade to like their six. So these are neighbors. Yeah, basically, they live two or three houses down, but they live next door to one of them. Okay. And that's about it. That's all they really play with. Now he's got some other friends at school, but he doesn't never really goes to their house and stuff like that. Um the point of concern was this right here. This is where the concern started. Uh see the text message he sent him. Okay, so this was he stayed at home yesterday because his stomach was hurting. So he got hiking on Sunday. Okay. okay, so yeah. I would tell that part. Yeah, sure. He's about to stump. And we get about, we went to Garden of Gods, and we get probably about, I don't know, a few, few miles out, a few miles, a few feet in. He's like, oh, my stomach hurts. I'm like, you know, it's probably because you haven't been, you know, like, exercising on everything. He's had this problem for a while because he gets, like, really bad constipation. And so his stomach was hurting all through that, and it was, you, you were either on the plane. Yeah, so that's on the way We were, like, texting back and forth. And I was like, should I just stay at home because I didn't, there was a lot of stuff coming out of his big butt a little bit. And so I was like, I didn't want him going to school like that scared me to go to like multiple underwear. Okay. So and he gets really down and embarrassed about that so, too. Yeah, so. so he gets embarrassed. He's very like emotional about that type of thing because he's sad about it. So he stayed at home. 
Well, he, we, we went about and got the dogs um, some um, new outfits. We got two new puppies. So we went and got the dogs some new outfits at the pet code. I think it's on Cole's Nevada exit, maybe. I don't know the numbers, but I know it's Nevada and the Poles right there. So we went to Nevada and the Poles. Um, he sat in the car because he wasn't feeling well, but I wanted to make sure he was going to eat and I gave him some feeding light and stuff like that. Um, I think that's about it. I came back, whatever. Um, so when we came back, he was texting you, and that's where you got Yeah, so, so he, he had spilled a candle in the house whatever you know he was because he just felt like he was smelling bad because of his accident he lit a candle and was playing he split the candle so he got really upset because he made a mess with oh. that too so so they and, burned a big so this is where he starts texting me i'm, I'm in oklahoma so he told me my tummy hurts blah 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 and i'm just trying to stay positive you know um so he's worried about he just said he was really worried about getting in trouble for the for not for the accident but for the candle thing. So then right here, I was like, we'll talk later. And he's like, Do we have bath salts? And I'm like, immediately I know I know what that's all about. So I'm like, what the you know, what's going on? Where did he even hear this from? So I immediately texted her, I was like, We have a little bit for bass and stuff. So I was like, put all the stuff we use for our bass and put it away somewhere so we can't access it until we find out what's going on. And then I uh, asked him for what. Tell us about that. Yeah. So with that, the day before, when he tells me this, I said, he came in and asked me, did we have any the day before, which was the Sunday. And I, so I gave him a bath bomb because I literally didn't know bath salt. I, I didn't know. So I gave him a bath bomb and went to the, the bath. I still was clueless to the bath salts until we looked it up. So then, then he tells me this. My friend said if I got some, we could play this weekend. And I told him, no, absolutely not. But we were still talking at this point. And then he was like, he went on a little bit. And then he's like, his brother has a car for a sleepover if I can come over Friday. And that's kind of kind of the end of it, though. We need some more haze. So that's where we get the idea that he may have left. Well, no, she, he told her, okay, he told her he was going to play. So, which he does, which they do all the time. They walk out and they're like, you know, where are you going? Be back at such and such time. And they're always maybe he's ten minutes late, but you know, nothing like this. So, I don't even know who this friend is. That's the that's the biggest concern on the surface. That's why I said, you know, I should say, I always like to walk over and meet. Hey, this is blah blah blah. We don't know anyone. That's the car. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't like, nobody funny that had yeah. an older sibling that drives, right. none of his friends that we were aware of. So, but there's like we, all from these other people, we got some names of other kids on the bus that he plays with, and so we kind of hunted them down last night. We don't know what they did while I was on the way back. Yeah. Found one kid named Jimmy, but he wasn't, they hadn't seen him. And then they were like, Well, this kid has an older brother or whatever, and they went to their house, and they're like, No, we haven't seen him. So, that's when it really, really was. Gave information that jimmy had a older sibling so of course right. we all went I mean, you know, we, we think it was the around. putting people together okay. you know. so then jimmy's dad answers the door okay. and they show the picture to jimmy connor's mom with the one with my daughter she's a 17 year old um so he's like yeah i think i know that kid and then they were like do you know jimmy and the guy was like, yeah, that's my son. And then he was like, I'm sorry to tell you guys, but we don't have a whole older child. I don't know if she said Jimmy was the oldest, the oldest but whatever it was, dad said there was no older boy that was in their home. That but it was like he said, pieces were coming in from different kids trying to give us information and names. I see the, the biggest big deal here is it's not like... And, and I know kids, you know, get influences, but he, he's, a, he's a homebody. I mean, I'm, I'm like the same way. He, he'd rather be at home playing his little Nintendo or, you know, watching cartoons. You know, sometimes you gotta, I gotta make him go ride his bike, that kind of thing. So he's not one just to walk off. And, you know, he's had times where he's been a little embarrassed about his seat still to come, but never anything to drive him or something like that. So that's why. I, I mean, I, I had to come to grips because I'm pretty convinced that something bad. Either, I'm, we, we kind of, between ourselves, kind of broke it down to we either feel like he's at a house where some of this stuff is going on, 
Yeah. Yeah. They can, you know, they can Has anybody called the school yet? Yeah. So the principal called this morning. I got okay. back up. I emailed the teacher first. I'm like, can you give us any information? I knew she couldn't, but I wanted to start with that dialogue. So can you give us any information about Anna's friends or anything? She's like, no, but I can go to the administration. So, uh, principal, uh, and somebody reached out last night to her. And she was said he waited up the front just to make sure he didn't come to school with any side or whatever. And, uh, and an announcement is that they have the information, that's going to help Gannon. And, um, and they also just sent an email on the uh, do not reply. The district panel no, just came to us where the principal said he sent it out all families. Okay, so yeah, so they're they're doing their due diligence. So I just came to us with what kind of social media accounts does it have? Um, I don't even let him get online with these things. Does he have a phone? Obviously, he has a yeah, phone that he's texting. But, like, we check through that. I, ch I checked the phone logs on the, my, my TNT account, and we had texted anybody other than the one friend. So, yeah. we have the capability to do a download on the phone and potentially see things that are deleted that you and I wouldn't see immediately. Um, it would be like in cash data or whatever. Um, would you be willing to let us look at his phone, yeah. do that download, see, just to make sure that he didn't delete something that, um, that we need to look at? Okay. Um, so it's an iPhone? Yes. Yeah, that would be great if, if we could. Um, I know we'll get to that, but I brought this because I, some of my buddies at work were like, you yeah. Track, um, they didn't know how to wait the device is hooked to the internet somewhere. Okay. So maybe he's somewhere and played his game on their Wi Fi or something. That is the Nintendo Switch he, missing? Yeah, he, could, he had it with him. So, like, he was going to play games. Uh, that's why, obviously, I brought it. You know, he, was, he was going to play games with his buddy or something. Um, What's the serial number on that? That is going to be right there okay. if I'm not too. Where things should be in. Yeah. I think that's it. So, see, other than the stomach issues, does he have any other uh, ailments, disabilities? He just uh, he takes um, ADHD medicine, but that's never really caused him a problem. Other than I mean, he makes straight A's. He got actually got his first B this past time. So <laughs> that's his phone there. Yeah, that's two nine two two. Two nine two two. Two nine two two. Um. No. Yeah, let me give you this phone number. Uh, and I, I, I don't know if you have to subpoena the information or not, but so my friend looked this up and found, um, and said that uh, sure, police can subpoena connection location for the switch, and that's the phone. And that just, he found something on the internet that said that. So it's, it's at least worth looking into, I think. Yeah, we've got a database of stuff that we work with, okay. so yeah. we'll be able to find a contact. Okay. If that service exists, but okay. that any any I'm show you, can I show you something? Yeah, here? I mean I know you'll find it up, but I was just not sure about the history. Oh yeah, he yeah looked up only one something that was. Oh, that's okay. Where's the history? Are there any other children in the home? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You turned a seventeen-year-old. The um. Biologically, both of yours. You no, know, so I have, I have Gannon and my eight-year-old daughter. Um, and their their mom is on the way now, so she's going to be here. Tonight. But um, what is sister's name? Lena, L A I N A. What's her date of birth? One twenty-two twelve. And you have custody of both of them. I do. What you is know, mom's name? Technically shared, but uh, they live with me and go to our senior summer. So I, I we call it. It's near, but it, I really have this. So mom's name is Landon. L A N D E N. That's in Do you know her last name? I H I O T T. Date of birth? Uh, four eleven. Four eleven eighty five. And we have one other child in the home as well. Her biological daughter. Okay. What is mom's phone number? Phone number? Yep. 
And you said it's your biological daughter? Harley. But H U N T. No, Harley. Oh, Harley. Yes, sir. What's Harley Super? Five one zero two. You mentioned younger children in the hall. Well, mainly if I was being Elena because here's what happened. One of the people called this morning and she was sleeping and heard a lot of conversations and she's been like just crying and things like that. So, yeah, and she already has like a precondition or an anxiety, but she gets very... It's worked up easily. Yeah, worked up easily. So I just, she's she's having a hard time because like the National Guard came earlier. So many people have been coming. So she's... It's a lot. So like you said, there, um, I guess the search history had been deleted, but like that one right there, Monday afternoon, I, and I don't know, I, I, I don't see a time on that, so I don't know when that happened, but I'm sure that could be found, but it says, can my parent find myself in a bizarre? So I don't know if he intended to take the what phone. Is Where does... FGTV live. That's so. This FGTV, some little kids show that they what what the kids watch, and um, they got like six, famous YouTubers. It's like a YouTube that's thing that's going on. So. Okay. But he, he left. Is, the he phone. Talking, is he talking to any girls? No, actually, I, I joke with him about that, but he, uh, he had a puberty class and he was like, yeah. Ew, I don't want to do like and Yeah, he, they just had a little puberty class in school, so he's still in the doom face. Yeah, go ahead. Now, if you see the messages that say to mommy in the last day, that's me talking to his mom. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't give her a moment. To see if you get any uh, searchable stuff on the maps. Yeah. Uh, so he searched for 10315 declaration. How's that, you guys? Declaration is probably it's somewhere. Up on somewhere. It's so probably it's somewhere. It's, it's always right. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's probably. Oh, glory? Yeah, it's probably something that we were. It, it could have been things What's that. What date was that? 10315 declaration for I. What was that part? It says Classic Homes, Wilson Ranch. Yeah, I mean, that's our neighborhood. All oh. right. Declaration, declaration. Well, I didn't look for any declaration. Bethany was on Catch Yeah. Okay. Or, 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 or. But we were we were driving around over there and somebody said that they saw a camera uh, that was the on the old Rory had just on there. Huh. Okay. Wow, I didn't think about looking at that. But well, this how does it make any sense because he went the other direction? Um, three. I feel like that's someone's address. Yeah. I mean, like I mean, <laughs> some of the people. Is it recently? Because like so, this is this is how it was when I pulled up his map. I don't know. Um, so you know, I just that address. So when I click on it, I don't know. If you just put horse and ranch, so good is that the random address for that office? Address of declaration. Just on top. Bring up with brown to see you look for hours. I'll send the car down the back. We'll figure out what that is. It's good I know it's right there around the first office. So it's going to drive by the house. But it's kind of farther towards the school than our house. So that back side, yeah. we're up right at the front. Yeah. That first section. What model iPhone is that? It's like a six. Yeah. 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 They're over here. So this here is it's a computer for the point, but we're going to use cell phone. 
So basically, um, what the cell phone waivers would say um, is that we're going to we're going to dump this phone with your permission. You have the constitutional right not to have it searched without having a warrant. I think that at this point, I would be good started. Yes. But everything that's on that to include all deleted items, everything. It just makes a copy of everything, and then we'll get it back to you. And we'll analyze the copy that we take from it. Um, again, it's you're you're providing consent. I can't force you into doing it, um, and I would have to obtain a search warrant uh, if you didn't consent. Uh, twenty-eight. I believe so. Yep. Twenty-eight. So we will we'll keep the phone and start searching for the searching through that. Where might he go other than, does he have any other relatives in the area? No. No relatives in the area. It's just us and those two friends. Yeah, I don't know. I don't recognize it. Yeah, so. we're almost in the car over there. Okay. Figure out why it's in the car. Did you ask about the bath salt now to the address? Yeah, so we don't know that just the friend. We don't know who the friend is. I can show you all it said. In that text. He said to me was best all. It's like, do we have any? Does he want to take him to a friend's house? Yeah, I know. let me let me pull up so I don't get it wrong. Huh? Oh, thank you. You want to get another water? Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Um, so you can just read through it. It starts, I was in Oklahoma, but it's in the dark right there, so you can just scroll down. So we get this detail as we do with him. He's been having some stomach problems, so that's the one he talks about. So tell me, he had a little, made a little accident, dropped a candle, so he's upset about that. But then you can read the part about the glass cells. And in context with that, at the same time, when he, as soon as you said bath salts, I got on the phone from her and was like, hey, because we do have something to take more, we'll just take bath salts and stuff. Yeah. That's like, get it all, hide it, put it away. And I told him figure that out what's going. he did ask me the day before. Yeah. And I didn't know because I didn't know. So, like, see, it's very vague. There's no, like, friend's name or, or where they live or anything, because the intent was to have that conversation face to face or whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, when did you say you went to Fort Phil? I left Sunday morning. Well, actually, I, I went Sunday night because my mom flew out Sunday or Saturday night. My flight was Sunday morning, and then uh, I got, of course, got there Sunday, that one day at class, and then this all happened on Monday night. So, I, which was, yeah, yesterday I came back. And what time did you guys go to Petco? I, I don't know. I think I probably looked at the time we set the alarm. Okay. That was Sunday, right? No, Sunday was. Um, yeah, hiking. So. Did you go to Petco Sunday? No, we went. Petco Monday? Yeah, because it was just, just me again and again on the okay. car because the stomach. Okay. Because Lena went with us hiking, but Lena was with us. Yeah. I was supposed to date you. So. Tell you what. Bad Yesterday was 27. So we're going to have to the house. The only thing I can think of, though, if that was the person that we took the jingle basket to. Oh, Jesus. Anna was with me. Okay. So if it ends up being the person with like the neighborhood to the jingle basket, that's the only thing because it was somebody in Orson Ranch Brown. Yeah, so there you go, like the people, but that would have been December. So I don't know what they got. I don't know if that's their address, I'm just saying that. 
Any clothes missing? I, I mean, like I said, like literally from what she explained, everything was consistent with I'm going to play with my friends. So it was like whatever clothes he had on, he had, we make him put his play shoes on. We got nice shoes and play shoes. He had his play shoes on. So, I mean, it was pretty obvious that his intent was like, I'm not leaving, but I'm going to play. And I'm, you know, doing everything I'm supposed to do. And she let him take his switch. I mean, that's, don't really ever do that. So, just for an intent. When was the last time he talked to his mom, his biological mother? Or something? He had been talking to, he talks to her, right? They talk almost, I'd say five times a week. I know he talked to her Friday and Saturday because my mom was here and, you know, he, he was on the phone first. So. Sorry, there's just a lot of 27 numbers. Yeah. Bio mom's coming in from. Yeah, she's on the way now. I think she just got on the plane. South Carolina. Yeah, that's where we're all originally from, South Carolina. I am not here for the military. So. Um, I mean, not to add any confusion to it, but like the mom's married to a guy that's got a lot of trouble with the law. That was one of my first instincts when it was like when the come and go thing came up and they said that he walked in all nonchalant, like everything was normal. It was like like the dude was here or something because he's, he's got a lot of trouble like that in his background. So I was like, it came on my mind. It's worth putting down, but I mean, I don't know if it's anything to. Does she have your address? Yeah, she does. I know we dis. It says I disarmed the panel on Monday, January twenty seventh at two twenty nine. So that's when we would have, and I set the back door to close because I would have liked let the dogs out back then. So that's when I. That's when you got home. Hang okay, on, I'm still scrolling up. I just didn't want to have to go to the back. And then let's see, it says basement motion. I might have didn't set I might have set the alarm. It's not showing when I said the alarm, but it says um living room and basement motion at ten ten to eight. Oh here it is. Arm by master right here. So Monday, January twenty seventh, I earned the alarm at ten oh five AM. 10 05, you guys want to? That's what time I armed it, so I'm assuming. Yeah, because we had motion that morning because we were there. Which alarm do you use? ADC. What What did you you participate in? Bingle? But they do these little basket things where, like, uh, they would like a group on Facebook or wherever of like so 10 women and 10 families just you said a dollar amount it's like okay you bring a basket of stuff to their house okay. so it's like a secret santa i don't know something like that but for the neighborhood i could eat uh, book on the lady who sends it you want to see if that's the address she said it doesn't matter we're going to send a card okay. anyway uh, okay. so we'll make contact okay. verify okay it's weird to do without that address response. Yeah. Does that mean if that's like research or no? I don't have a way to see when you have search. I can just see where the address is. The only address on there. Right, right. Has he ever left before? Oh, I tell you what. I mean, I know your parents says this, but he's a pretty, pretty straight, straight up kid, and uh. If ever he does wrong, like the only thing he ever sneaks is, you know, playing his games if he's grounded or something. That's a, that's it. I mean, other than that, he, you know, he does his chores. I mean, he makes straight A's, kind-hearted. I mean, plus with his sister. But and never. to add to that, I know Fiora K was saying that the counselor has said every. Yes. Yeah. So I, I because of um, so his mom in the situation with that. Her husband, like she, she basically has lost everything. Doesn't have a place to live. It's gone through a lot, you know, and on drugs and stuff. So I got custody of them. It's been pretty hard, you know, for any kid. And um, I went through some of that as a kid. So I was like, let's get them counseling, just just to be, you know, certain there's nothing that they're dealing with, and they know it's okay to talk. So they go like once a month on base. And uh, I always ask at the end of the session, hey, is there anything alarming that you brought up or? 
anything I need to know about. And yeah, she always says that. for him, it's it's nothing that he's just open and you know he's going through normal emotions of uh, you know loving mom and loving dad and stuff like that, but nothing like hey, you need to. Does he go on Carson? Yes. And what's his counselor's name? Doctor Burton. I have her number. Yeah, that'd be great. Looking through this phone and listening to you, it's exactly like looking through a twelve-year-old's phone and talking to him. Exactly. He communicates over a couple of game chat. He plays his game long to know. You got to play a computer game. This is it right here. And and I have I refused unless he's done it behind my back. I know he gets on YouTube and watches some stuff, but I have absolutely said no online game. Yeah. So unless he's got on there and figured it out, then... So not, not necessarily communicating through the game. We have apps and stuff. If you can talk back and forth it with your maybe I, I, blogging game and stuff, and he likes to send those instead of text messages. And you can say, you can never have. I would look at you see that recognizing you and talk about the game ones. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Our son did it. Yeah. So I don't recognize any of them on there from what you do. Um, yeah, and usually, once again, he's pretty innocent by by telling us or at least hinting at things and he's never even like said oh i learned this from this how he learns is he researches like youtube and stuff okay. i can see the way he was talking to you in our text messages about in trouble and he still plays right. and stuff like that but i did block him from the wi-fi because he was using TikTok. Out of something about some choking game. Yeah, I, I, that I noticed, and I, you know, paying attention to you know what the news and all that, I, I banned them from TikTok and said remove it from all your devices because of the bad. I'm sure there's good stuff, but that stuff that encourages those challenges or whatever. Yeah, going when was that? Oh, uh, so, within the past week. Yeah, I took them off, but like even on the Xfinity or yeah, and yeah. Myself. yeah you did so that. I did that because I look over and it was some some people were choking and the quarters and I don't know what it was like I guess to get high this is <laughs> like you choke yourself or something and so he was laughing but I think he I'm saw it as just people being silly I don't think he was realizing like how serious, how serious that was so I told him a story of which was a true story he was playing a quarter game and it went down his throat and he had to be rushed to the hospital blah 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 and so then he kind of looked at me like you know like it was serious so I didn't think anything else about it and think he was going to do anything like that I just thought he was having he thought it was funny to see the kid is so like tender-hearted like his I, I know it, the kids are obviously influenced, we know that, but he would never like smoking or anything like that because his, his mom's done, got into that stuff since we split up and stepdad as well. And then and his grandma, mm -hmm. his mom's mom smokes real bad. Mm -hmm. And so he knows that that causes right. you know, bad stuff. But and then he, the thing was in his book bag. What was in his book bag? So we found, she found. After the bath salts, after the bath salts, I said, "Go, go check his book bag just in case." Initially, she found nothing, but then after he disappeared, they went back and. No, no, no I didn't love her go look at it initially. Oh, I thought she looked. At no, it. you asked me to go look at it, but I was, I was okay. looking at other things. So like they found early. found a two pack of those little Swisher sweets. Yeah, I sent so, early to go look at. I don't know. Somebody had to give him those. When did you find those? last time yeah so Har i sent harley to go do it so harley is, was like pulling out the book bag stuff and she's like oh i didn't see anything and then the folks she got a folder in her hand and dropped that folder so she immediately <laughs> text out but it didn't look like anything to me excuse me brayden and connor uh, connor not uh, not as much because yes, we've been to their house uh i don't know did they talk to the police last night Honor's mom did. Honor's mom did. But the, I was texting the other parents because they were out in the neighborhood looking. Brady's parents wanted Yeah, out in the neighborhood looking around. Yeah. yeah. You talked to Brady's yeah. parents. I'm not sure if y'all talked to Brady. I know you. T I know they talked to uh, Brady's mom because so she was at a. Okay. All right. Time. There you go. I don't know that you talked to Honor's mom, but I do know she was there at the time everyone was there. What is the Rubicon Drive address? Rubicon Drive address? So Lily and. Um, so, you, you know, like the friends that live on that address. Mm -hmm. Okay, nine eight six five Rubicon Drive. If, I don't know the number, but the Lily and Reese I spoke about earlier, they live on Rubicon, which I think is a street 
right behind us. Is that Ruben? Yeah, yeah, Ruben's behind us, but I don't know anybody. I thought Gaphelm was behind us. Okay, hold on, let me look at it. What is it again? Um, Nine eight six five Ruben Nine eight six five. No, what is this? Something. We that was the usual hangout, yeah. Oh, okay. Who gave you this? It was listed in the report. You guys gave it. Yeah, I didn't give anybody no. So, there was information that you wanted to go to a party with the vast homes. That was a slip over. Is that right? No, so no, he said I want to go to a friend's house. They said bring bath salts and my older brother will come out. Yeah. That's that's oh. piecing it all together, but in his terms, that's yeah, but I didn't hear the same thing you but, say about So this Rubicon So we live we live on Mandan right here, that Rubicon would be those boys that the uh, Braden's family right here. Right. I'm sure that's um, okay, so that's Braden's house. I would assume that by because they don't know anybody else in Rubicon. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't look at and Lily and Lily and Reese. Well, I don't know. Rubicon goes around here, so unless he was going somewhere right there, I don't know. But the boys do live there. Rubicon. Lily and Reese live on Capitol. So I also we also have a deputy back over at the Hummingbird. Okay. So we asked him to send us the videos. They can't do it in the store. They have to do it in the corporate office. To wireless system or whatever, yeah. if you're allowed to, I like, guess, send it to the deputies. We go on back over to review that. It's Linda Reese. Yeah. Or Reese Linda. Oh, at that uh, declaration house? I mean, to know if there's any kids there, we'd have to go through the school probably. That's what they're doing now. So they're going down to the school. I mean, they home. They have any kids. Uh, it's okay. Okay. Uh, you why we would have searched that address etc and start from there so okay. we're headed down there yeah down so definitely over we're going to look and focus you over there did you talk to Jeffrey Donaldson yesterday oh uh, we've just been late last night guys no we've been during it would have been probably before court came out uh, I'm trying to the only deputy I spoke with that I remember one one called me because you got we were getting overwhelmed. Yeah. I don't know I don't know who I spoke with. They were at the house though, right? There's a lot. I think I think they were at the house and then uh Donahue Donatel, yeah. Sean Donahue. Uh, now Chris Donatel. This is a a, a yeah. Vassal County, yes. Deputy Sean Donahue, I think is the one I talked to because he said he would, okay. he said he would text me the case number and, well, and then but then he said we got come and go footage, so I texted him back. Yeah, I mean you can read the rest. So the, the deputy the clerk said, Oh yeah, he would the deputy reviewed the video and he does not think it's not he saw here. the one viewed it today or last night? Last night. He's going back again today. But see, Donahue said basically that it was. He said there was nothing out of the ordinary. He didn't seem under duress. He left on foot. He only purchased a bag of chips. And I continue to ask him questions about. First of all, I think that came from the clerk. And the clerk said, yeah, it's him. But they definitely ran the new video. The kid is that in the video buying the chips. Yeah. He doesn't think it's your son. Okay. But he's gonna, he doesn't need over there back now. If we can go there and look at it, but we can't get a copy of it. Yeah. It doesn't have to have the hero. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I was over there when, I don't know who was over there at like 1130. There was another deputy over there. Around that would not have been, that would not have been the guys over there. Yeah, so I've, we were driving around. I saw a squad car or whatever there. I pulled in and I said, hey, can I look at the footage? He said, I, I don't have permission for that. But he said, I've looked over an hour and a half. I don't see Description of your son or something that's close to him. What kind of five folks on man? Sorry. Uh, um, let's text real quick and it's, it's in my note. I think it's the kid's stop, isn't it? I'll need a username and password. Yeah, I got it in my phone. Uh, Do you see anything in our report? I saw a, uh, a screenshot on the phone of a kid on the sidewalk or something like that. You guys, that, you guys, you guys somebody sent that. So there's been like a hundred um, videos, photos that I okay. went through, and I know that a couple of them were 
But, but appears to be him because it's the same outfit, the same looks like him, you know, people scrolled in on the we had like four hundred comics to go through So that that should be the iCloud. We sent the username and password for his phone. Was available. We write them back. Then uh, or whatever. So yeah. Yeah, you can write all that. And that's the, the Gmail username and password yeah, tag. Oh yeah, we do you care if I just take a picture of that? Yeah, cool. have a screenshot and send it to you over there. That's cool. Like it was on Gaplin. Um, one of them I sent to my husband. I just don't remember where this is. Really weird that you got there. That's the only thing. Gapple, Gapple's behind us. It's always a chapel. Oh, yeah, no, Gapple. Okay. That's, That's good. way up in the city. That's All right, what's your, uh, what's your number? 719 208 so, and I just left my that's my daughter's iCloud too. Not that it'll be matter, but just in case I just left that one on there for you. You're pretty sure that's wrong? Yeah, okay. But I mean So where was this one taken out with time? I need to look back I give you a number I can send a picture to you. I'm gonna send it to the guy that's over looking at video. And that one was that one was somewhere over by your house. Yeah, what what video here we did you can beat over the coming door? Oh I I don't say where I was like, I don't really think pop soon for this box like that. So I did see he had a whole bunch of emails for some way. Well this is why. This is that's no, so this is why. So we'll all be in there. They only let you do the just for you, keep on clipping. So everybody in the house with phones have to get has to get it so she talks. Game the system. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, I, our, our son gets random emails from it. You'll notice like, six was on Wednesday. <laughs> My email box. Yeah. That's your point. That's why it's Select so all for me. That's all. That's. And then I'll get in there and be like, what number am I putting in and try them all? Has anybody searched the guy's house yet? Yeah. So that's, that was the first thing they did. Was, um, it was about six people um, showed up. And because we waited about oh, well, four hours. And the first thing they do, they come in, they just were like, hey, they need to get your ID. Maybe like, you have to run in, like, uh, I guess, like, search when I say and stuff like that. And then they said, well, um, typically, or sometimes kids can, like, hide. And someone told me somehow it's going to be in the dryer and not realize that they could breathe, you know, like different places. So the guy went through every room and all the officers and everybody else, like, stood this way. And he did like flashlights and checked all the spots to make sure he wasn't like hiding because at this point it had already been so long. I had if he he doesn't ever come in to hide, he might do like a play like jump out behind that thing, but you know not like anything. He's a big yeah. So he went in like all of our closets. We like yeah, stuff, stuff. You know, everybody was silent. Then we then we looked at the alarm to see. Like if there was any motion that might have been in any direction that we, you know, like we didn't know. And so we spent, well, I didn't do it, he did it. We spent a while doing that, going over certain things. Like they walked me around, they were like, does he always leave this here? The clothes that were laid out, because we laid up, when he goes out of town and it's you know, just me there, I try to lay out all the clothes and I do it for him too if I'm somewhere. So they can just get up and find their clothes. So <laughs> they were like, all these clothes are laid out. And I was like, yeah, it's sure. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Because he's got like two beds. So he needs to see other beds. It's like the layout all this stuff. So they walk through. We just ask them simple questions. Uh, we normally do this. We normally do that. I'm working on the Nintendo right now. Okay. 
Does he have a gamer ID on that switch? Um, yeah. You don't remember the phone? Can come to on the phone? Can I see this phone? It might be absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, we he had one, and then uh, we got the new system. We just created a password for it. So. Yeah. 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 Um, when he goes to play, I know you had said that you have to like basically kick him out the door to go ride his bike event, but when he does play outside, where does he go? Just to Braden's house. Well, you don't have to kick him outside. He's not on his meds. If he's not on his medicine, he's hyper, he'll go to But if he's on his medicine, it's more like a, if, to it wears off, it's five minutes for ADHD. So until it wears off, it might be a, you know, like, I don't want to play, like, it's a zombie mode at first. So when it wears off, like if it's the weekend and we give it to him because we have to go to church, he would not go outside on a Sunday because it's still in the system at the church. But he didn't take it because he, he didn't take it Saturday. He didn't take it because we went hiking. We did a six mile hike. He didn't take it Sunday. I'm sorry, that was Sunday. He didn't take it Saturday. He didn't take it Sunday. He didn't take it Monday, which causes stomach problems. So, so he was off his medicine. I don't even think he ever told me. It said that the manager of the store says it knows the kid. He comes in with the dad. So, that's not us. Right, which, which we constantly think commonly have. Sometimes it's something go, oh, yeah, that's a kid I see. So, they said that they. They're saying it's him, but he knows they're making the tournament all the time. Dude's like, put so, like, the send it. So, it's like, show back on, but it's definitely not enough for a clerk to know it. And, um, uh, all this says is this. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We go get gas over here. And That's all I see. Or purchase or sometimes. And um, the Gmail account associated. I think should be the. I don't think he was asking for it. So I'm like. So, so, I, I don't think you can last year. The guy that Bristol was quoted in the Arizona, that won't work. He's saying, yeah, I know. I'm like, this guy from the middle of the time, I'm just not do that. Right. Yeah, no, I don't think it's ever even. I'm out of it for one time. The deputy was looking, the deputy did not think it was him. He's going back to look to see if there's a chick that he sees in the store that he might be chilling with. He got into the car. I don't think that's going to be a child. I don't think he made it up. It is going to be wrong. But it does not look like that to me based on what Thomas I have a lieutenant and kind a of deputy going down to that. He said, oh, that's so, so, yeah, yeah. right, right now, but we went down and talked to them. Uh, okay. Check in the golf course. Uh, yeah, because we saw him put the light on and we thought, like, there was people out there, but they were doing, like, another call, so he, like, kind of chased them down. No, it was actually, it was actually for you. Oh. They didn't know what they were going to find and whatnot. Yeah. They didn't want to get people all riled up. Okay. They were checking on it. Yeah. There was some noise coming from the shed. It was at that golf course area. Oh. So they went in and started. Okay. You can see where the ventures pushed down. Right. He was not in. But I want you to know, I just, that wasn't in booking, but it was in lane or following tip. Because they were just like, we were going to talk with somebody, and we both drove off and was like, we both drove, make sure it's not the car. We both drove off and they're going into woods and talking people. Because we thought, like, yeah, okay, whatever, and drove on. So they, they were going into that. I mean, because there's a, a, a an abandoned shed or something back okay. that they went in there. They were going there. That's what they were going there. Okay, thank you. I mean, like, I'm glad they weren't, like, saying that soon it would have been. They, like, they, they just didn't, they didn't want to. Right, right. Yeah, you, know, you got a tip, you might be over here. And, yeah, you know, 30 exactly. People are running toward the shed. Exactly. Yes. Like, well, yeah. Yeah. Right. You guys can work with it. Um, I would like to talk to you. I'm just going to go to the I'd like to talk to your students. 
out there and every color. You know what I mean? Yes. They might know where this party is supposed to be. What color is the Braden's house? I don't want to talk to my parents. I don't want to talk to I don't handle anything. I don't even know. I think it's like 10. I don't even I've never even spoke to their parents until now. Who is your husband now? Yeah. I think it's like 10. Yes, <clears throat> I mean, I drove by and I thought I saw it. Eugene? They need the catch. Oh, yeah. Sure. What color is Braden's house? I'm sorry, I didn't know. Is it on your street? You are the So, come in our neighborhood. Our house is like a yard from the end. Is it something like that? The intersection, dead end right here. There's Canberra, that's what I referenced, and then the Braden. Basically, you come and you go straight to their house from the house. So this is this is us. That's uh, Mandan and Rubicon. Right? Rubicon. We'll find out about that declaration house. If nobody's there, we'll start Rubicon. going back search. Braden and then Cam and go for that. We'll be out there trying. All right. You said Amber, which uh, she's in there somewhere. And Where's Connor at? Connor, they live over oh, like Academy or something. Somewhere, yeah, over way over up Academy. It's just his mom teaches at that Webster school or works there, so that he goes to that. And they just Connor's mom's number. Did you give her that? No, we we got sidetracked. She just actually fifteen other things. Yeah. Sorry. So I don't have Brayden is go. on Rubicon. Goes by Cam. Goes by Cam. Yeah. Yeah. You guys let me know when you be down that section. Okay, we'll do it. Well, we're doing everything we can for you right now. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys help. We got your number. Uh, make sure you're all charged, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. That'll work. And so, this is a uh, school it's down here, Grand Mountain. It's just to the reference. And what is it? What is it? Fontaine? Fontaine. Fontaine was the main yeah. main drag coming in. Right. Mark Shuffle. Yep. I didn't know that part. Okay. We're the first turn when you come in. So. Anyways. Okay, perfect. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to... Do you have a card on you? I'll have mine on the car. Um... We're going to head down to talk to, to see if we can get a hold of Brayden. Yes, time. time. Sorry? Time break? No. I got shy. Might be at school. Um, we may, and he goes, he goes to Grand Mountain. Yeah, they all, the whole neighborhood does not. Except Connor. Okay. Well, Connor's, because he's way over yeah. here somewhere. I don't know, I'll just have him up Brayden does. We're going to try and talk to Brayden. We're going to get a dump on the phone. Um, Sergeant Hess, the guy that was sitting here, um, he's also working on things in the area, too, with other patrols. He's sort of like the lead for uh, in the field. We're going to see what information we can gather from there. Um, and I will inform you guys as soon as I can what we find. If something comes up, no matter how minute, please call us. Okay. Um, that two zero eight number that you texted—that's my direct cell. So, um, and I think I, ca I called you, Carmen. So you should have an earphone. So yeah, hit me up. Let me know what's going on. If I don't answer immediately, send me a text too. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. All right. That's a good place for a break. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will take our morning break. If I can have everyone back in the jury room at, say, 1040, we should be able to start on time at that point. All rise for the jury, please. Okay. Thank you. you. may all be seated. Record should reflect that Terry has left the courtroom. Ms. Bethel, I want to apologize to you. Uh, I didn't realize that the video was, or the audio was going to be that long. Um, I would have offered you a seat in the gallery as we have other witnesses, uh, because that witness chair is not the most comfortable to be sitting there for uh, 
55 minutes and 12 seconds listening to something. So um, next time uh, we'll do a better job about that. So what are we doing next? Just continuing with her. There will be another video here shortly that is much shorter. Let's see. Three minutes and 43 seconds will be coming up here in just a okay. little bit. And then we'll get into the really long one, which is four hours and 19 minutes. Okay. So we'll probably get about a little less than half of that done before lunch. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Just find a good breaking point for that, and then we'll go from there. Sounds good. Okay. All right. The court will be in recess. Just All about, right. You can go ahead and step down. Thank you, man.
to the degree at this point in time. Not from us, Your Honor. All right. No, Your Honor. All right, then let's go ahead and bring the jury in. Really is a pain, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. And there's not a different setting, is there? No. And it's, yeah, proud of it, but it's easy, but. You just got to remember to do it because yeah. it would be disastrous otherwise. It's going to be a disaster. It, it just is uh, that camera's view when it automatically reboots up and starts again. Every time we start it, it has the yeah. whole jury box. Oh. <laughs> and so you have to. You have to zoom it in to cut out Ms. Gratiano um, so that we know that we're not getting the jury box. And because there's a juror that sits right behind her, too, so you can't. <laughs> All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury have returned to the courtroom. We will recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Um, Mr. Allen? Thank you, Arm. <clears throat> so, after we had a chance to watch that initial conversation that you had, I guess the initial recorded conversation that you had with the defendant, I want to clear up some things that we hear in there. <clears throat> In your uh, initial question and answers prior to us getting into what actually watching the video, you mentioned that there were concerns about any health issues. Did some of that come out in this particular recording? Yes, it did. <clears throat> Was that the ADHD and the bleeding from the rectum uh, um, report? Yes. There was reference of a pet co on North Nevada that um, the defendant indicated she had visited. Uh, is that the area up at University Village um, dominated sort of by that Costco that's in that shopping center? Yes, it is. <clears throat> there was reference to uh, a Nintendo Switch and trying to track that. During the investigation, did you learn whether you could or could not do any tracking on the Nintendo Switch? Uh, we could not track the Switch. Um, did you learn later that the Switch was actually found in the house? I did. There's lots of discussion in that video or that recording, I should say, about things <clears throat> that required investigative resources. Um, do you remember hearing those things? Yes. Does that include um, going to different residences um, like that? I think it's 10350 Declaration Drive um, to look for potentially clues that would lead to discovery of where Gannon might be? Yes. In your experience as a um, seasoned homicide investigator and detective, um, is time an important element in an investigation? Yes, it is. <clears throat> is the fact that resources are being expended to chase down potentially a runaway child as opposed to a homicide investigation, did that waste valuable time in the investigation? Yes. And was that wasting of resources a direct result of um, misdirection from the defendant. It is. During your course of uh, conversation with the defendant at that Starbucks on January 28th, um, is this essentially the fourth time at least that she's given this story that Gannon has run away? Meaning there's the 911 call, the call for service, um, reporting it to Al, and then now reporting it to you in this recorded phone call. Yes. <clears throat> so almost a quadrupling down of that runaway story. Yes. What was her demeanor like? Um, I guess because we can only hear what is being said. What were her outward um, demeanor expressions like? Were they normal? She was calm and collected. <laughs> Did she ever change personalities while you were with her during this recorded um, interaction? No, she did not. 
Was her personality consistent throughout that interaction? Yes, it was. And then there was reference to, um, by the defendant, there was reference to ADT um, data to show uh, what time she had returned from doing the run to, to uh, Petco. Do you remember that? Yes. Did you also, during this investigation, um, become aware of uh, neighborhood ring or doorbell cameras that caught that action as well? Yes. That confirmed sort of that timeline? Yes. <clears throat> Was it um, consistent during your course of this investigation that there would be some kernel that could be confirmed, a kernel of truth that could be confirmed from the defendant wrapped around things that were unconfirmable or turned out to be totally false? Yes. <clears throat> some point um, later that particular day, uh, 3.45 p.m., did you reach out to the defendant again by phone to request particular items? I did. What were those items? I requested that she bring a toothbrush and or hairbrush with her of Gannon's. What was the purpose for that? Uh, to collect for DNA purposes to develop a DNA profile. Is that a common thing to do in a uh, missing child case like this? Yes. Why is that? Uh, because if the child is located, um, and is deceased, we're able to identify them. By comparing the DNA from the body to the DNA profile that you might gather from toothbrush or a hairbrush? Yes. Were you making efforts to get um, the defendant down to the sheriff's office to sit for a formal interview? Yes. While that was happening, did Al Stauk, Gannon's father, show up at the sheriff's office and actually sit for an interview? Yes, he did. Was that about 4.30 p.m. on January 28th? Yes. Did you um, send a text to the defendant asking her to come down at roughly the same time? I did. Did she, did she come down? No, she did not. Did she even respond to your text message? I don't believe she responded initially, no. Okay. Later that evening at about 6 p.m., did you get a call from the defendant? Yes, I did. <clears throat> What's the, uh, and what was the call? Was it to your cell phone? Yes. Does the sheriff's office have uh, areas in the building that make cell phone service um, difficult? Yes, they do. <laughs> did you experience that with this particular phone call? Yes, I did. So what did you do in response to that? Um, because I wasn't able to completely talk to you. Letitia on the phone, I hung up with her and I called from a landline located within the sheriff's office. Did you get a better connection on that? I did. Was that particular phone call recorded? No, it was not. Do you remember what she told you or what the discussion was during that phone call? Um, she was discussing her relationship with Gannon and Lena. She told me about how um, her parenting and Al's parenting was separate, that they never formally adopted each other's children, um, that she wasn't allowed to make parenting decisions for Gannon or Lena, and Al was not allowed to make parenting decisions for Harley. Okay. And then did she tell you during this particular phone call the last time that she actually saw Gannon, at least the way that she's reporting it? She did. She mentioned that she saw him, I believe it was between 3.15 and 4, and she had mentioned that it was a, there was a TV show on that she had liked to watch. And I asked her what that TV show was, and she could not tell me the name of the TV show. Did she describe the clothing that Gannon was last seen wearing by her? Yes, she did. What was that? She said it was a blue shirt, blue pants, and his tennis shoes. Did she also mention a blue hoodie? Yes. Did you ask her during this phone call if she would come down and talk with you at the sheriff's office? Yes. Did she accept that invitation or did she decline it? She declined. Did she give you a reason why she was declining it? She said that her stomach was bothering her and she was having to make multiple stops at different Walgreens to use the restroom. Okay. Later on at about 7.03 p.m., did you get another call from the defendant? I did. What was that phone call about? 
uh, she was FaceTiming me and she was mad because her daughter was left alone with a bunch of men in the home, she claimed. At that time, the sheriff's office was at the home to get Lena um, at Al's request. So I think that's later on um, when she's asking about that. Would that potentially have been at 11.52 p.m., that particular call, a FaceTime call where she's upset about and needing Al to come home? Uh, that could have been, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Did you, did, I guess, uh, after that 703 call, um, did you get another call from Al in which he was upset? Yes, I did. What was that all about? Al, was, Al called me and he was sobbing. I could tell that he was upset. And he told me that he didn't tell, tell us everything. He had previously uh, done an interview with my partner, Mark Riley. And... He explained that Leticia had rented a vehicle from the airport when she picked him up and that he did not disclose that to us. Did he um, also talk about trying to find her normal vehicle, the um, black T1? Yes. Was he able to find it? He was not, no. Was, was that causing him distress, at least as he's relaying it to you? Yes. Did that lead to him coming back into the sheriff's office for another interview? Yes. And then later on that night, about 10.45 p.m., did you get a uh, text message from the defendant, a rather long text message? She texted me multiple times that night, yes. Do you remember the specific content of that text message? I don't for that time frame. Okay. If I showed you a report, would that refresh your memory as to the specific content of that text message? Yes. Your may approach? You may. This paragraph here. Got a chance for you to do that? And for the record, uh, what I had handed to Detective, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Bethel, is pagination 01-0043. Um, did that refresh your memory as to this longer text message? Yes. Uh, what did the text message say to you? She was asking what I wanted from her, and she was saying that she was being set up and that she learned that information from a fellow, fellow blue with El Paso County. Um, was that basically an implication that she had an inside source to the investigation to you? Yes. Was that, did, did that turn out to be true? No, it was not true. Did she also express during that text message the same sort of theme that she was upset about her daughter being in the house with people from the sheriff's office, men from the sheriff's office? Yes. Did she relay in that particular text message um, and uh, the idea that she could hear what was being discussed inside the home because of cameras or something in the home. Yes. Did you respond to her? I did. What did you respond with? I asked her if she had any information to help me find Gannon. Did you also invite her to come into the sheriff's office to talk with you? Yes. Did she accept or what happened? She declined. Okay. I'm retrieve that page from you. And then uh, just a few minutes after that, 11.52 p.m., is this the FaceTime call that you got from the defendant? Yes. Uh, was this a recorded FaceTime call? Yes, it was. Audio recorded? Yes. Gary, may I approach with People's Exhibit 336? You may.
Do you recognize People's Exhibit 336? Yes, I do. How do you recognize it? Uh, it is a FaceTime interview with Letitia. Uh, have you had a chance to listen to the content of that disc? Yes, I have. Is the uh, recording file on there a fair and accurate representation of the audio of that FaceTime video of call? Yes, it is. And at this time, I'd move for admission of People's Exhibit 336 and ask for permission to publish. All right, you may go ahead. What? Are you accepting it as being admitted? Yes, yes, it's admitted. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and play it. I would okay. just, I'm sorry, I was distracted because I was looking down at this. This is, while it says FaceTime, it's only audio, right? It's only audio, yeah. And just so that the record is clear, I never did hear whether um, there was an objection or not from defense as to it moving it admission. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Exhibit three thirty six will be admitted. Go ahead. So, sir, I'm just trying to figure out. You, I got your message about something I talked to you earlier. You didn't say anything else. So I'm just trying to be. I'm confused at what you want me to do. What's going on? You talk. You talk to me now. You want to talk to me again? Well, you you sent me that message saying I don't know what you want from me. So. Yes, because I mean, my child couldn't leave. I couldn't go to. I couldn't go home. I I don't have anywhere to sleep. I mean, like I, I just don't understand. Um. Well, I, I'm sorry. I mean, that 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 sort of kind of came out of left field for me. All I'm trying to do is gather information to to find Dan. I don't understand what you mean. Came out of left field. So, um, my because own child could not leave, so how how is that out of left field? What do you mean your child couldn't leave? She was trying to go to Starbucks and was left there and forced to stay there with men in and out of the home by herself. Okay, I don't know what happened at the at your home. Um, I know that she was offered the opportunity to come into the office and she didn't want to, so she she didn't go into the office. But, but what does she need to go in the office for? She can't go get food? She can't go get coffee and have to be asked why she gets coffee? <clears throat> Either Starbucks staff to see that she gets coffee like every day? Hello? Is there anything more that you you might be able to share with me to help me find Gannon. Give me this. Where are you now? You keep asking me this over and over and over. Where are you now? I'm not going in to talk to you okay. without an attorney when you already talked to me earlier. Okay, that, and that's perfectly fine. But I just don't understand what's going on. Do you, do you have any? Do you have anything, any further information to give me that may help me find Gannon? Any new developments, no. new information? I told you this. Okay, well then um, I'm going to go ahead and end the conversation then because we've already spoken. Okay, so why do you keep saying to, because someone came and looking for me, wanting me to go talk to them, so now it's you, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. You and I have already spoken. Um, if, if you don't want to come in to speak with me at the office, um, that's completely fine. Okay, but why was someone... I don't, I don't know. And, and so what I'm saying at this point in time, Letitia, is if you don't have any other information for me to actively look uh, through to find Gannon, um, there's, no, there's no point in me continuing this conversation. I, I, need, to, I need to get off the phone here and, and start working on, on leads and developments. Okay. All right, thanks. So, first of all, where were you when you got that FaceTime call? I was in the sheriff's office. The uh, other noises that you can sort of hear in the background, do you know what those other noises were? It, to me, if I remember correctly, it sounded like windshield wipers on a car. 
Okay, making that weird moaning sound. Yes, they're rhythmic. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the sounds like potentially um, her demeanor is a little bit different than what was happening at Starbucks. How, how would you describe that? Uh, she was angry with me. Could, and angry because of the um, idea of trying to get her down and talk to you at the sheriff's office? Um, I'm not exactly sure what, why she was angry with me, but she was angry with me. What was your goal? What were you trying to achieve as you're um, accepting this FaceTime call from her? I thought that maybe she had additional information for me to follow up on so I could find Gannon. And did she resist that, uh, giving you additional information that might help find Gannon? Yes. Um, besides the fact that she's um, expressing anger, did she have a consistent personality with what you had experienced in a previous phone call and at Starbucks? Yes. Um, there was reference um, made by her that she wasn't going to come down and talk to you at the sheriff's office unless she had an attorney. Correct. Did that indicate that she had a good understanding of what her rights might be if she does come down? Yes. Object to speculation. Ruled. What was your answer? Yes. And then did you, um, basically throughout that um, night, early morning hours, were you getting text messages from the defendant? Yes, I was. What, were those, what was the nature of those text messages? Um, a lot of them were about her. Uh, focused around her. I kept asking her to come in to talk to me if she had any additional information for me. And eventually in the early morning hours of the, of the 29th, um, she gave me a story um, that she needed to talk to me. She was asking for a friend if, um, if we released information to the media. I told her we did not. She said something that had happened to her and she couldn't tell me around Albert because he would be mad and would become violent. Um, and I ultimately arranged an interview for her, which was supposed to start at 10 o'clock at the sheriff's office on that Wednesday. 10 o'clock AM? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> was it odd to you, um, as you're describing those text messages, the early text messages, that the focus from her perspective was on her as opposed to finding Gann? Absolutely, yes. Why, why was that odd? Um, in my experience, investigating other crimes and investigating other missing children, uh, the parents are always willing to give me whatever information they can um, to find their child. And it... I've never experienced a parent um, being concerned about their own well-being or welfare while their child is missing. In those text messages, did she also describe injuries um, that Gannon had suffered? Yes. What were those? Um, she said that he had blood on him. Did she say from cuts? Yes. Did she also describe burns? Yes. Did she... Um, deflect any um, cause of those injuries away from herself? Yes. <clears throat> did she in fact say that she did not hurt Gannon? She did. At that stage of the investigation, um, was that an odd uh, development that she's now indicating that he was hurt, but she didn't hurt him? Yes. In, in what way? Um, most times, if you don't know what happened to somebody, um, you wouldn't put yourself out there to say that you didn't do something to that person. So you mentioned uh, that you arranged in these text messages to have the defendant show up for an interview at the sheriff's office at 10 a.m. on uh, January 29th, uh, which would be Wednesday. Um, did she show up at 10 a.m.? She did not. Um, were you able to have any contact with her um, around that time frame to indicate where she might be or why she wasn't there? I did text her, yes. Did you get any responses? Uh, she eventually did respond to me and told me that she was, um, she had to put measures in place because she was being, or excuse me, her, her daughter was being stalked 
and her family was receiving death threats. And so she wasn't able to um, come in until she got those things taken care of. Was there any indication, I mean, the investigation that either her or her daughter was actually receiving death threats? No. What time did she arrive? Uh, 12 o'clock noon. I may approach with 337. You may. Detective, or I'm sorry, I keep doing that. Miss Bethel, um, do you recognize People's Exhibit 337? I do. What do you recognize it as? It is a copy of the interview I conducted along with Detective Kat Houston uh, with Letitia at the Office of the Sheriff. Is this the interview from January 29th, uh, 2020, at, starting at roughly 12 p.m.? It is. <clears throat> Uh, have you had a chance to review the contents of, I think that's actually a thumb drive or a uh, portable drive, right? Yes. Um, is the content of that thumb drive a fair and accurate representation of that interview of the defendant? It is. All right, at this time, I'd move for admission of People's 337. Mr. Cook? No objection. Exhibit 337 will be admitted. Go okay. ahead. And you're on permission to publish. And, and just for reference sake, this um, recording is four hours. 19 minutes and 46 seconds long. Um, and so we will have to um, stop it uh, for the lunch break and then probably a second time as well. Okay. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, what we'll do is uh, this is uh, both video and audio, right? It is. Okay. So uh, we're going to start this. Uh, we will take a break, uh, a normal lunch break to flex that to a reasonable breaking period. Um, and then uh, we'll send you on your way and we'll come back. But in the meantime, start with that. And Ms. Bethel, you can step down uh, and sit in some place that's a little bit more comfortable for that long a period of time. Um, and prosecution, go ahead. Thank you. Kind of slide it to when they actually come in the room. Good idea. And then just because you're in here and you're in our in, in our building and stuff, do you mind if I just pat you down really quick? Um, that's how we hug. I need you to face okay. that way. <laughs> you need me. Yeah. Go ahead and put your arms out for me and just separate your legs slightly for me. There you go. Nothing that's gonna like poke me or anything. Like you're not diabetic or anything, are you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything in your purse? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Great. It's just fun to see you on the couch. We'll be right back with you. Thanks.
Your Honor, just while we're actually watching this part, I do want to put um, something on the record. Normally, I wouldn't necessarily want to play the dead time when there's not an interview happening, but I think her actions inside the room are also relevant for mental health issues. That's so I'm, I'm playing it differently than I normally All right, do. that's your call. <clears throat> Are you doing? Did you get some sleep? Mm -hmm. I'm eating today. Oh my goodness. Want something to eat? I've got some stuff. I would love that. What would you like? I've got some um, pizza hot pockets and <clears throat> some tamales. A breakfast burrito. Pizza hot pockets would be good. But I mean, you don't have to like. I don't. No, we can get you some. Okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, yeah. Let me get that started for you. Do you. I have like Coke and Sprite and like apple juice. Do you want something like that? You have diet. We searched high and low okay, for I'll diet. There's machine. no diet. I'll like, take a radio clip. Thank you. All the vending machines are even sold out. Thank you so much for getting that. Yeah, absolutely. Here's my card, just okay. so you have it, so I don't forget later. <clears throat> I'll, get, I'll get that judged. Okay. So that's my that's my partner, Detective Houston. I know you saw Mark with me yesterday. Right. Um, I work with a couple different people. Okay. Um, You're like in charge of. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm. I'm in charge. It's just you know we all pitch in and, and help out where we can. So, um, Mark helps me whenever I'm out and about, and Kat helps me whenever I'm here. Right. So she's she's going to be hanging out with us. Um, and, I, and I also have um, something going on. So if if this ends up going over, which right. is totally fine, um, I just want you to have know who Kat is in that. Okay. No problem. Um, where did, where did you park? Did you park in the garage? Mm -hmm. it, the garage that's way behind our building? I got a parking ticket. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, for validation, what kind of vehicle were you in so that I can put that on that validation slip whenever you, cause I'll, I'll give you something to turn in so you don't have to pay. Yeah, it's a Volkswagen, um, Tiguan. It's a Volkswagen Tiguan? Yeah. Okay. Um, and let's see, what else? Um, so I'm just gonna go through my normal spiel with you. Okay. Um, I know that we've we talked last night, but because you're in here in the police building, I want you to to know certain things. Okay. Right. So first of all, you're in here voluntarily. <laughs> um, you can leave. Okay. You just have to let me know that you want to leave. Right. Because I need to escort you out of the building. Okay. Um, if there's ever a time that you need to take a break, you need the bathroom. You need more water. You're still hungry. <laughs> whatever it is, let me know. Okay, I'm, I, I can't read your mind, so I need you to let me know what's going on with you okay. so that I can help you, mm -hmm. okay? Because the whole purpose of this, um, of us talking is to, to gather some okay. information, and I, I know you... I have a question about that. I understand that. I know it's recording and you know, all that. It's totally fine. Um, but does that, like, usually stay within the court and stuff like that? And I just ask them. Yeah, so this... Because I'm going to have to tell you some very, you know, personal things. There. Okay. And and that's perfectly right. fine. Yeah, and okay. and so it's it is not our common practice to go and, okay, and be releasing that. stuff okay. like that. Also, another little admin thing that I do just to sort of kind of cover my butt 
whenever I have people in here talking is to go over a Miranda waiver. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you're in trouble. It's just because you're in a police station right. and I want you to be absolutely certain of your rights. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go over that with you right now. Um, so you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. Mm -hmm. If you can afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. Okay. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Right. Do you understand each of the rights that I've explained to you? Yes. And having these rights in mind, do you wish to speak with me? Yes. Okay. So if you could circle yes, or I'm sorry, circle yes and then initial. It's sort of redundant, but if you'll initial next to yes. And then down at the bottom is an X here. Mm -hmm. If you'll sign that for me. Now, um, sorry, this was, I got a new watch and it does not like to work for me. It's 1210. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. So, <clears throat> because, you know, I know I met with you yesterday. We talked on the phone. We texted. We, you know, We've been talking with each other a lot, but because this is recorded, I want to get, like, let's start from the basics okay. of who you are. Do you have your ID? Uh, yeah. In yeah. okay. your purse? Well, those are my glasses. Yeah, did. What are they? Yes. I haven't heard of that. Is that a new, it's like, like a Quay brand? Quay. I'm, yeah, yeah. They're really good. They're, like, better than, like, the Michael Quarters and things Oh, like really? That. Yeah. Okay. I know this is your South Carolina ID. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. What's your middle name? Oh, well, it's um. I do my maiden name, which is Harden. H A R D I N. H A R D I N. Yes. Okay, and that's your maiden name. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me just write down. There's the deal number. <laughs> a given middle name? Lynn. Lynn. Mm -hmm. L-Y-N? Yes, ma'am. There you are. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What's a good phone number for you in case I need to get a hold of you? 843. Okay. 655-7460. Don't ever drink sugar, so this is probably going to be like so good. <laughs> um, what is, in, in case I need to send you any documentation via email, mm -hmm. um, how can I do that? C-E-C-I-A, like my name, Lynn, and then 2006 at yahoo.com. Are you on any social media platform, Facebook, Instagram? Well, I was not for a long time, but just recently I just got, like, my Facebook back because we were with, we didn't have for, like, two years. Uh-huh. So I do have Facebook. But I've always had Instagram, but it's mostly, like, my, like, a travel YouTube type thing. Okay. What's, uh, what's Facebook? It's just my name. Is it Letitia no, or Tisha? It's under Tisha. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you said it's under Tisha? Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, it's not. It's because I abbreviated it. It's T T. Is it your same last name? Mm -hmm. Such. Yeah, because I don't. It's really. I really don't like. I don't. My first name, I'm always like, oh, Kesha. They're like, what Kesha? Is? I, so I just put T because people are saying your name wrong. No, you time. haven't, but I always try to change it if I bobbed it like it. So, like, we <laughs> try to change it. So, yeah, so I just gave up just to put T. What do you What do you want me to call you? You can call, so, T. You can call me Tisha, which is my Tisha. Okay. Office. You know, we always have a name <clears throat> we don't like or something. Mm -hmm. And um, you said Instagram. Mm -hmm. Now, my Instagram is under Dr. Stout. Dr. what? Stout. Uh, is it the spelling of your last name? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I have my doctorate degree in education. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like, is this like a Dr. Pimple Pucker kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So it's for your education doctorate. Mm -hmm. All right. And then um, address that I need to send, if I, if I need to mail anything. It's 6627 Mandan Drive. Mandan Drive. And then 80925. And where are you working? Well, I was working with WD3, but I didn't want to work as a teacher anymore. Mm -hmm. So I decided I was going to be a flight attendant. 
So that's currently what I started doing with Spirit. So I had been going back and forth doing like um, uh, like FAA. You had to, first you have to get like a study guide. I know you probably were like, oh, you have a doctorate degree, you want to be a flight attendant, you know, I just like to travel. But um, my goal was to like teach online too and do the flight attendant so I could do both. Sure. So I've been looking over my uh, uh, books with Spirit and like things like that so that I could go to training. So I was supposed to go to training. We get like a training date February, March, April. So in the meantime, I was just doing like seven at the community, at the early college. That's why I told you early college, picking up sub shifts and stuff like that. Okay, so you're more of a substitute. Well, I was just, I was just a fifth grade teacher at French, but it has gotten so difficult in the elementary school. It's, it's, I just, I don't want to do it anymore. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like in between. I just finished working with them and. Yeah, I'm sure kids nowadays are a handful, right? It's hard because I did special ed for so long because that's what my doctorate's in. And then you're like, oh, like you, get you try to help so many, you try to help so many people and it's just hard. All right. So you're going to do flight attendant with, with Spirit? Well, have you been picked up by them yet? Well, I got an offer letter from Spirit, an offer letter from, I just got one yesterday from SkyWest. Oh, okay. Um, and the reason I like SkyWest is because they have a domicile in Colorado Springs and in mm -hmm. Denver that so you can actually like work there and I could do both at the top. So I was going to, um, I thought that was some of that, right? Um, I was going to do like Pike Seek and like, I'm sure I wouldn't have a problem because I just finished this past year. Mm -hmm. I was going to just do them both. And then, so I hadn't decided, but now that SkyWest just had offered it, I was like, that would be perfect because it was just like centrally located, you know. Right. So you could come home all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a big problem that we had is because I was going to take the spirit job and then I wouldn't be based anywhere. They don't have a base in anywhere in our area. Oh. So like I would have had to be in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. So I would never get to see anybody at home. And then you like stay in these crash pads. Mm -hmm. you, are you familiar with it? It. We were on vacation with some people who, uh, the wife used to be a nurse and mm -hmm. she actually transitioned into being a flight attendant. Right. She was telling us all about it. Actually. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, it's scary. It's it's so familiar. I did start getting scared about it being in Vegas and I was like, man, I'll never get to see everybody at home. And like, yeah. I, I mean, I love the travel part. So then I was stuck with traveling, but being alone or traveling with everybody else, but maybe not as much here. So, but you know, like that was in a nutshell, I was kind of. And I'm right, still okay. evaluating. Is it okay if I just stop that? Because it's like yeah, vibrate. Yeah, that's fine. But um, yeah, look at so I was in like a a self evaluation type thing, trying to figure out the transition from education and never having like another career. And then like worrying about how people would look at you, like, oh, you're you have a doctor degree, and you're a flight attendant. You know, you like you guys like don't make money, right? <laughs> you know, so my uh, my niece is actually a flight attendant so oh, yeah. for southwest they said that's the best one and whenever they have openings it shuts the website down oh that's what, well that's what i heard that's pretty awesome i didn't know about that yeah, apparently it's really hard to get into because mm -hmm. they're they they're supposed to like handle emergencies in the air so yeah and like the training is so you think people just think we, we will serve people but the training is so... I heard it's very intense. Yeah, they, like, mm -hmm. do ditching exercises. They kick people out every day. If you're late for class for one minute, kick you out. Oh, wow. And That's I, good. We need standards like that whenever yeah. we're so like, And let me just say this in case it comes up, like, somewhere. But Spirit flew me out to do the de December 20-something training, right? Problem is, I didn't have anybody to watch Harley. And Albert was working night shifts. And so it's always hard because it's always on me to find babysitters for everybody, all the kids. It was all, it's always on me. So I get out there, and he was supposed to help. I know she's 17. We let her stay by herself, whatever. But through the night, because he was working 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., that, that kind of scared me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, she just joined the Air Force. So, like, I know she's going to have to learn how to, like, shoot a gun protection. But, you know, like, she's not ready yet, mature. Like, she's very mature, but she's not ready. So I came back, you know, and I was like talking to them. I just told them I was like, my daughter's at home, whatever. And they're like, we can move you to the next class. Um, like I think it was February, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, so just in case you're like, oh, I thought you were, but I did fly out. They flew, you, they flew you out or whatever. And I came back because I was panicking about her, the dogs, everybody, and take care of. So okay. she's your baby, right? Yeah. So um, why don't we talk a little bit about 
what's going on. So start, I understand, so initially you didn't tell me some things because Albert was there. And when we say Albert, we're talking about Eugene. Yes. He doesn't like Eugene because his dad is Eugene, and he was uh, a child molester. Okay. So, like, uh, he, like, raped his sister. Mm -hmm. So he um, freaks out about the word, like, if he hears Eugene. But I said maybe that might help you. Yeah, if you don't have to call him Eugene, it probably would be. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I want you to do is is take me through um, Sunday into Monday. Okay. And, and be as detailed as possible as to what you were doing, who was there, where you were at, how long you spent, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, because the more detail I have, um, it might spark something for okay. me. Is it okay if I take my notes out? Because, like, I, I wrote down all yeah. kinds of stuff. Yeah, and I was absolutely. Because like, I was like, I, I tried to write down anything he might like, say and just in case, because I have, like, notes from different things or whatever. Um. So we already talked about the beginning thing. I think you're reading that. So I'm, my paper is that we're at the same story that you, we started with, but then you want me to start with Sunday, which was the day that we went hiking, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we went hiking at Garden of the Gods. Um, we actually, did you see the picture from Garden of Gods? I didn't. Okay. So we have pictures where we went to Garden of Gods. Um, we were going to take the dog for a walk, but then my daughter got called in to work because she works at Massage Day. Okay. So we were like, okay, we're going to go hiking. We crazy thing is like it's always like you got one kid likes to hike a lot the other one don't so spent the whole time like come on let's go we gotta burn calories excuse me all those type of things then he started having a stomach problem and he pooped in his pants so it kind of cut our hike a little bit short but i was like it's okay it was kind of cold but i say cold for me but i'm used to like 80 degree weather so it was kind of getting cold so we decided to go home Okay. So we go home. I don't really remember what we did the rest of the day. It was probably just like random things around the house. I thought like we went to dinner. Oh no, we didn't get dinner because he wanted to take he wanted to take a bath. Okay. So he came in and he asked me about that's when he asked me about the whole bath ball. Okay. And he had pooped in his pants, so I thought he wanted to like take a shower. So I gave him a bath ball. Okay. Um so Went through the night. That was we were just doing like a regular random. I feel like I don't know who you should be talking to, but um, you can talk to both. Yeah, of us. we used to be doing like ra random things around the house. It's Sunday, no football on. You know, I mean, I don't know like specific every little detail we did, but just a normal um, everyday situation. Other than he was in a lot of pain because he gets really bad. Is okay if I like show you like graphic, like, not graphic, but like with my hand motions. Yeah, that's fine. Like, he'll get where he has to like poop, and like I swear they're like that big. It might take like two to three weeks. He has a um, like a GI problem, so because he takes Vyvanse, so like he had went the whole time without without Vyvanse. Um, so whenever that happens, sometimes it'll get where he, his stomach like wants to work, but then you know like can't. So he spends a lot of time in the bathroom, like kind of like hurting and things like that. Okay. All right. So then at this point, the dog. We have two new little a Frenchie and a um, what is he? An English bulldog. They're really like, you know, <laughs> French and English bulldogs. Yeah, they are. <laughs> um, they're really kind of like, a, well, the state, Sadie, the French bulldog, she's kind of like high maintenance. But um, the kids always help out a lot with them, you know, but Gannon wasn't feeling too well. And the dogs, they all, you know how they like know someone's not feeling well. So they were all laying down there and it was gassy, <laughs> like very, very, they're, they're back with that, very, very gassy or whatever. And, you know, life goes on, but. So, Bannon had started a candle. Again, normal day. He's very, like, responsible in terms of, like, uh, if you give him something and say, do this, do this, this, and this, and, like, a list to prepare, it's fine. So, we let him, you know, do things like that. Like, Albert lets him, like, use the box cutter to cut the boxes down, you know, and, like, teaching things to be, like, a independent growing up adolescent. So, I didn't see a problem with him, you know, light a candle, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. Well, I don't remember the exact time. I'd have to look at uh, when the fire thing went off. Um, I was tired. Albert had lived because we so we spent the whole night up prior with Saturday because he was going to train in Oklahoma. So we stayed up most of the night. Okay. You know, just everybody was going to miss each other, wouldn't see each other for a while, whatever. So I was kind of like, you know, tired. I had dozed off for a little bit. And Lena asked me, could she stay up and still watch um, the rest of her iPad or whatever? Usually, I'm always like, no, 
strict, like, hey, no, you can, you know, whatever. But I did feel kind of bad because she, it was just her birthday. And at the same time being her birthday, we had a lot of stuff going on. Right. So we made it about her, but, like, I was trying to give her a little bit extra because not everybody got to make it there. And we went all out for Gannon's birthday. Like, we took him to a Rockies game. He t- we took friends with him. I mean, you know, like popcorn, hot dogs. But, but we didn't do that with her. But mm-hmm. in her defense, we bought her a Switch. So it was kind of, like, different. But she didn't understand that. So I let her stay up longer than she's supposed to. It was like, a, you know, kind of sort of bribery. But, you know. So she stayed up a little bit later. And uh, so she was still kind of... She's a very hard sleeper, and she's hard to, like, pick up, move if she falls asleep, whatever. But, see, I could tell she was just barely asleep when I went in there. So it starts beeping. It's like a beep, 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 beep. And I thought that someone was coming in the house. So I, I look and don't see anyone at any doors or hear anything. So I was like, it's, I thought it was just a sensor. So I hit in our 2564, which is our alarm code. But it didn't go off. And I was like, what's wrong with this thing? So I walked through Lena's room. The alarm is in her room, and I walk back like through the top part of the house. And you've been in the house, so you know the top part of the house. I haven't been in. There. Okay, so there's the upper level, and then there's the below basement. So I like walk back and forth or whatever. I didn't see anything going on. Then it started saying fire, 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 fire. Like it kept, it kept saying fire. Oh, wow. So, and I and I thought it was the uh, um. You know how, like, you, so there's, like, sensors for your fire alarm, and then there's sensors for your, like, uh, alarm alarm? Mm-hmm. So I was just going to everything, trying to, like, ban it while it was going off, because I was thinking kitchen, fire, nothing's wrong, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I was putting, like, towels over some of the sensors, because I thought that was, like, monitoring the fire thing, whatever. And then I realized it kept going and going. So then I see smoke coming up from the downstairs. So I run downstairs, and my idea of a big fire is anything that I see on fire pretty much in their smoke, you know, just, that's just because I grew up in the country, so, you know, like, I remember bonfires and, like, things like that, you know. So, there was smoke coming up through the basement. So, the basement has, so, if you walk down the basement, there's a sofa and stuff over here. It was coming up through the basement. So, I, like, run back up the stairs, go grab Lane, and luckily, my point telling you about her being not a rough sleeper, she woke right up. So she wrote back up, and I and I like almost like grabbed her, and I was like, "Get up, get up, get up, get up!" I said, "I gave her keys." I said, "Can you go?" I don't remember the exact order, but I said something along the lines of, "Can you go take the dog to Daddy's truck and sit there and wait?" Right. So I don't remember the order of how we all ran out the house, but I know that at that point I did. She ran out, and I can't remember if I ran out to make sure they got the truck or if she ran out by herself. I don't remember that part, but I do know that they were. I know that they were had gotten in the truck. I came back inside, run back downstairs, and that's when I was trying to get Gannon because I couldn't get, I, I didn't know how to get everybody at once. So my main thing was to get the front people out, you know, and then go. So then I ran back downstairs to get Gannon. And then the fire was on the floor over here, then on the sofa. So I'm pretending this is the sofa and this is our floor. So it was right here and right here. And I saw the candle that was over here. So there was covers everywhere because the kids always get on about, they leave a lot of covers laying around all the time. I mean, there's like 10 clothes and LOLs and blankets and all this. So they were all right here. So I take a whole bunch of them and I go and like, like, like basically smash down on the sofa and the um, fire to put it out. So I got a, a burn and then I was like, get up again and started running at that point because it wakes him up. He's alert. He's realizing that the covers and everything's on fire, the carpet's on fire, and we all go outside. So we get it in Albert's truck, and we drive. And I drove off in panic because I saw that I put the fire out, so I knew that there was no, you know, like, nothing wrong, like, it wasn't going to keep going. I drove off in panic because I was like, oh, my gosh, what do I do now? Like, we, we break the carpet, you know, we done this and this. He ends up uh, freaking out because he's scared he's going to get in trouble and, and da 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 So, you know, like, the whole talk was going on. So we drove maybe around the block a little bit and came right back. So we came back in and, like, develop a plan for the next day to figure out, honestly, we were going to face the car- like fix the carpet and try to, like, not say anything. And the reason for that is because, like, Albert freaks out about every little thing. If the kids do something and I- I'm on, like, me, and he'll be like, you didn't do this. You weren't being a good mom. You weren't doing this. You weren't doing that. And so we both kind of were, like, little like, worried about it, and he gets very, like, crazy, like, if something goes wrong. So, 
That was the plan. Go to sleep, rest. He was going to stay out of school. We were going to get the carpet fixed. And then go from there. Plus, something was hurting. So, Lena didn't want to uh, sleep in her room. You know, everybody was still kind of, like, frazzled. And I think Lena slept with me or on the sofa. I brought the dogs up. And, again, I went to, he wanted to go in his room at that point because he was already sleeping with us. Right. So, that's where Sunday, uh, like, pretty much kind of, like, stopped and everybody went to bed and yada, yada, yada. And I, I think I sent Albert messages because uh, he was sleeping. That was on a different time zone, and he didn't see him that night. So. Okay. And I didn't feel that no one was in harm. I made sure I say that because the fire was not, the fire was not going. Now, I know that Gannon had like black marks all on his shirt, like 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 smoke marks. But he had on a long sleeve shirt and a short sleeve shirt because he sometimes he has on whatever. He had on a short sleeve, a long sleeve, a short sleeve shirt with a long sleeve shirt. Um, so I didn't see him in any kind of like nothing other than the little burns that we had. I didn't see. Where did you see burns on Gannon? All right, so with Gannon, I just saw that, okay, so like on the top, like right here, so like say the shirt's right here, so like right here there was a burn, and, and the reason for that was I think whenever like he was trying to come up, it kind of, I'm sorry, it kind of burned him a little bit, I'm not going to make an assumption, I don't really know, and as far as that, I didn't see anything else, like I, I didn't know any like other differences or anything like that, all I saw was that, I said, you okay, he ran out the house, he was firing out the house, everything was normal, yada, yada, yada. Now, I'm going to let you know in a little bit why he was bleeding. Okay. But at that point, when you get to the Monday morning thing, I'll let you know about that. Describe the flames for me. How, mm -hmm. how tall are these flames? Is it like smoldering on the carpet or kind of creeping across like a grass fire? Or is it like coming up, working its way up the couch? Like, how is it? Well, it I really don't know. I know that it was like here, centralized on, on the floor. But like I could see, I think the smoke might have like kind of intimidated me more because I spent all night coughing. So I think that that kind of intimidated me so much because I couldn't, the visibility was starting to be a little bit, you know, like as if I had walked into a small little fire and I, and I was just afraid that it was going to, because, you know, like upholstery for the couch, that was my biggest concern was the upholstery for the couch. So, okay. So I would say, you know, it was like maybe like in this area, like right here, it wasn't like here. So the flame, the flames were, you know, two, three feet high. You think? How much light did you see coming off of this through the smoke? No. Okay, and that's fine if you don't know. I'm not really. I'm not like a professional. To, and I was in the moment of freaking out to like okay. give you an accurate answer. Sure. Of uh, because I don't want to tell you what's here, and it might have been here. I don't want to tell you this, 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 and that. I I don't know. This is all based off of your memory to the best of your ability. Right. And that's all it is. Okay. I do know that I saw covers coming up on fire. What was the co what covers were on, coming up on fire? Like he had a cover on because he was he was sleeping on the sofa. What, so was, what on was the sofa. he covered with? What do you mean? What kind of blanket? You you had mentioned there was LOLs, there was quilts, there was color. Which blanket. kind of what blanket was he using? Oh, I'm not sure. There was a couple that were there. There was a black. They were all. Some of them, I put them all back in that bin that was sitting there. Did you? He said you didn't. I have haven't been in there. Okay, so there was black. It was like a little furry. There was. Watermelon ones. I don't remember specifically which one he had, but I know that there was blankets in the area because they always leave makeup around. It was a mermaid one around. But the whole operation of when I grabbed them and put it out, I grabbed them all and done it. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Were any of them like damaged whenever that happened? Oh yeah, they all. I left. I left them all there when I showed them that night that you know, like they were damaged or whatever. Okay. Like, well, I haven't been in the house either. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm speaking to you like you. Yeah. No, I didn't go into the house either. So I was like trying to make sure that we're. Yeah. So but then Gannon decides that he doesn't want to go to school because of his tummy issues or because he's going to help you with the carpet. What is. It was kind of um, a combination of both. Okay. And, and who, who excused him from school? But, well, I had text Albert and said, could he not go to school for his son? Okay. Because. He he was hurting with his stomach, but also the whole plan was that we were we were going to figure it out. Like, so who actually contacted the school to to excuse him? It wasn't me. I didn't. I don't know. Okay. Um, Did someone contact? Because I didn't. I, I, oh, I would assume that okay. somebody would contact the school, or you probably would get like a phone call. I know with my kids' school, if they're not there by eight fifteen, the office. Then they would call okay. Albert, not me, because he would have the um like the automated system where he's like, "Your child's missing." 
I mean, your child is missing from school today, whatever, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's Sunday, and, and you're, you're saying a lot of we and that kind of thing. So, so you mentioned earlier that Harley had gone to work. Mm -hmm. She got called into massage envy. Mm -hmm. So who went on the hike? And so it was originally going to be all of us, Harley, me, Gan, and Lena. And then Harley got called in. She, like, she switched this to someone. Mm -hmm. But then that person, like, I guess the policy is that that person agreed to take your shift, but then don't come. You still have to come or something. I don't know. But, so she just was like, I have to go. She's only going to be working there, like, a few more weeks or whatever. So I told her, I was like, don't burn any bridges. I know it sounds crazy that you have to do that, but you got to go in. So she went into work on Sunday. Okay. So it ended up being you, Gana, or Gannon and Lena that went hiking. Right. Okay. And so then let's go through Monday. Okay. Yep. So we wake up. We wake up on Monday. Normal. How we wake up. You know, like everybody gets up, whatever, whatever. Gannon stays in bed. He already knows that we are going out and about today. That was the plan. Lena, I walk Lena out because usually Gannon walks her outside. So I walk Lena out to the like, front door and around to make sure I seen her around the corner to get to the bus stop. And she did. Okay. I come back inside. I don't remember if I laid down a little bit. I probably played on my phone for a little bit, you know. Wasted a little bit because she goes outside at like 6.50, 6.55, you know, still early. Take the dogs out, um, things like that. Well, I go down, start talking again about, hey, like, this is the plan. Like, go downstairs, the basement, whatever. I say basement, but as in, like, his room is down, it's a uh, furnace basement. And I realized that Gannon, he actually had, like, marks, like, on his arm. And they were actually, like, feeling at that point. And I didn't. I did, I swear, I did not realize that they had, I, I don't know if, like, they start, like, the burns are sitting there. I don't know if they started, like, peeling, like, overnight or, like, whatever. And he has, like, really bad anxieties. So whenever things are peely or, like, uh, things like that, he, he bites his own nails a lot anyway. Like, anything that's, like, loose and things like that, he bites them. So I don't know if, like, as, I guess, as burns, like, you know, burns a little bit. I'm, and when I do this, I don't mean, like, I'm giving you a location. I'm just saying, like, as in burns, like, on your skin. Um, I guess the way in, like, you know, like, pull a little bit stretchy or whatever. So, like, on your arm, it kind of gets a little stretchy and peeling. Mm -hmm. So, then I was, like, freaked out because I was, like, I didn't know that that his arm were, were like that. So, I'm, like, crying because, mm -hmm. and, and this is where I have to start telling you, you know, like, I'm, like, very, like, I was scared. Because my thought process was, Albert is going to kill me. Like, because I made a mistake as a parent and forgot to, like, really check him down. And he really got a little bit more burned than he should have. So I was freaking out because, like, it's going to kill me. And Gannon was like, it's okay. Like, it's, there was blood. And, like, he had on his arm. And as it was peeling, I sort of called. What did they have? I should have called the hospital and just asked, you know, I don't know enough about burns, but I should have called the hospital and just asked, like, I made a mistake. I did. I swear to y'all, I didn't know they were that bad. I did it all. So I feel horrible. So here I am. I know it's not, you know, about me, but as a person, I was feeling horrible that I didn't, I didn't call Albert to say, you know, they're like this. So I told him, I said, okay, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put some, like, aloe on your arm, you know, and things like that. And I was like, it's going to be okay. We're going to fix it. We're going to, you know. And all I kept thinking about was we're going to fix it. And I don't know in my mind how I was going to fix it as far as the, he, he, he wasn't in pain. He wasn't saying, like, I'm hurting or, or anything like that. He was more of, like, peeling it. Like, you know, like, it was like, mm -hmm. it was like a boil. Is, am I saying the right word? Boil, like, blister? Like a blister. It was like it was pulling a blister, you know. Okay. Um, so there was blood, and, and then so I'm like holding him, and I had blood on me. And I think when I say blood, let me explain to you. I don't mean like dripping out, pouring everywhere blood. So let me not like give you that okay. thought process. Because sometimes when I say like if I say flames to me, I'm like this is a big flame, you know. 
So there was there there was blood. So I was just so like like a true guy. So I was like, we'll just clean it up. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll figure it out. Where's the blood at? So the blood was on his arms, on his like a uh, sheet that he had, which we 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 washed the sheet. Um, so it was on his sheet. It was on his arm. And he had some on, like, like his arm, had, I guess, from, like, sleeping or whatever. He had some on the wall. So we, like, we cleaned up everything. We, I put a new, I put, like, garnish, the, am I saying that right? Garnish, the, like, the wrap thing. A little bit of wrap thing. And I was like, we'll check it with the aloe and see if it, if it gets better. Because so, my next thing was, I'm going to assess the situation in so many hours. And if it looked, because I, I did look online, and it said, like, if it turns a yellow color, that it could be infected or whatever. And I was like, that was going to be my next step. So I want you to think that I was like oh neglecting God. the fact that. So you realize that he's got a burn. You you do some, some treatment that you think is appropriate at the time. Um, and and then you, you tell yourself, you know, I'm going right. to do this follow-up. With right. Him. Okay. Right. So so then what happens after after you take care again is okay, make so sure he's okay? Honestly, I'm placed in the house. And I know there's two things I got to fix, you know. And when I tell you that. Albert will freak out over things. So I'm, I'm just, I just want you to know that. So, Emma, I want you to take a picture of my mind of how I'm, like, afraid to be like, okay, i got to fix these situations, and I need to fix them fast with carpet and things like that. Okay. So, number one, I was like, I need to get the car- I need to fix the carpet. And number two, I need to figure out, you know, like, assess, like I said, does Gana need to go get, like, some burn cream or whatever. So I said, let's get this is probably as good a time as I need to pause it and then pick back up after okay. lunch. I was wondering when we get there. Okay. Um, council approach for a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, if I can have everyone back in the jury room at, say, 120, we should be able to start uh, this afternoon uh, on time. What we're going to do is I've, I've been talking with the attorneys, and um, when we come back, there's still going to be about uh, three hours and 20 minutes or so of the video to go. We will take another break uh, during that. Uh, that's just too long to have you sitting. Um, so we will take another break during that, uh, but that's what you can expect when you come back. So if you want to bring um, uh, beverages or something like that, uh, feel free to do that uh, so that you have something uh, to drink. Uh, it seems like it's getting a little warmer in the courtroom. When we came in this morning, it was a sweltering 64 degrees, <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a little bit warmer now, So and I expect it will be this afternoon as well. So anyway, we will see you at 1.20. Uh, all rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? Prosecution? No, you are. Defense? No, you are. Okay. All right. We'll see everybody back.
Oh, that's nice. Looks like the turn is remote. Yes. So there's not going to be anybody right. here except me. Mm -hmm. So they can get a guard if they want. I love the end of the Right. We'll call 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury is not present in the courtroom. Is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? Prosecution? No, Your Honor. Defense? No, sir. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. <coughs> All rise for the jury, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. May all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury. When we took our break, we were in the midst of a video. I think we're going to start it right at that same point. Prosecution. We're going to leave out. I think I told you guys it was like maybe 1035 or whatever the time frame we left. So this is where I I should have like made this mistake. So I drive to the, okay, so Lurston Ranch. At the end of Lurston Ranch is a bunch of new builds, like construction, things mm -hmm. like that. I drive to the new build. I was going to be like, hey, look, see here knows how to, you know, fix it. Because if I get online and start calling people, then they'll be like, make an appointment. I figure I might find somebody that, you know, do like a little side job and come and help us fix the, when I say carpet, I'm talking about fix the living room, the, the spot that I had uh, cut out or whatever. So I did. I pulled up um, on the back part. There are some new houses being built and there are some like Hispanic, and I'm not saying that to be like discriminatory. There were Hispanic people that were out there. And I was like, hey, do you know where you can get the, car the carpet that, is in the Lorson Ranch model home. So I told him the model home, which was the same home that we had. I mean, I don't know if it's the model home, but I gave him the name because I, I asked, like, I looked online for the company for the name. And I said, it's in this. He's like, everybody has that same carpet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got a roll of the car, like a roll of the carpet. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> we got it from the guy on the scene. Like, I say we got the scene, but, but the construction area. So we got the carpet from the guy in the construction area. Well, I didn't get it then. He said he was going to bring it to me. So I gave him the address. Mm -hmm. and this is where I messed up. I gave him, and this is why I couldn't tell you this in front of Albert. I gave him our code to get in. Because he was going to go fix it. And I just assumed working in the house, he was going to be okay, you know, whatever. And me and Gannon left. I just said, hey. Did, this is did you give him the garage door code? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about the alarm? Well, if you go in through, say, like, you're walking in through our house, there's no sensor, so we always keep it on, on our alarm, and you can walk in through the garage and the alarm will never set off all. Never. Okay. And the reason for that is, like, there's no door. Like, there's nothing that tells that door that it's open. You can then 
so you don't have a sensor there. Right, right, right. So we, we just called me, and the kids come in every day in the garage and never have to, like, set, you know, reset, anything like that. Okay. Um, so me and Gina go on. I don't remember exactly where we went first. I know we rode a little bit because I was looking for different places to buy, buy the dogs some, like, different key outfits because sometimes I get them at Ross. But Petco has some really good deals going on right now. So I was like, I'm going to go to Petco. Um, Gina was like, at that point, it was like he wanted to lay down because his stomach was hurting. He wasn't complaining about, like, any, like, pain on his arms or anything like that. He mm-hmm. just said he wanted to lay down because his stomach was hurting. So we were in Albert's truck. So we lay down. I mean, he lays down in the back of the truck. Um, so he's just laying down, whatever. I went to Petco. I can't remember if I went in the store beside Petco. I don't. I know we went some places around town, just different uh, locations. What places did you go to? I know I went to Petco. I know I went to a gas station to get gas. Which Petco did you go to? The one at, um, is it Nevada in something? Okay. I, I don't remember. Do you remember? It's like it's nice. It's then? a nice area. That's, that's the area I basically was in for... I wasn't gone that long for most, most of the time frame. That was the, the area that I was in. And then I made the wrong, when you're coming back and it tells you to go this way, this way, I made the wrong exit. Like I got in the wrong one. So I had, I went back, I guess that would be, I went back. I went north a, a little bit before I turned around to come back because I, I made the wrong one. Um, so I get back and let's see, I can't, did we go eat at that time? Look, I didn't get anything to eat. Maybe I just got Starbucks. I I could look at my credit card or something like that. See if you if you want to look at see what I spent that day. You want me to look? No, but okay. okay. eventually, yes. Okay, that would be helpful. Okay, so um, I start, oh, I don't even remember what happened. Then I realized I had to go back to Petco. That's why we turned around and came back because I started off. I bought two outfits, maybe one or two, and then I came back in Petco, and I got the rest of the outfits that are on there because I was like oh I'll go two more for this price so I did go back to Petco twice um so I'm sure you'll see that in between did you guys did you go um see if we left at 10 something you know it's like a 30 minute drive from Lorson Ranch Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if I got there got gas got fireworks I don't Maybe I was there at 11 ish. I don't want to say time. Because okay, so you go to Petco the first time, and then how long in between the first visit and the second visit to Petco? Oh. I, can I give you that, like, looking up? A guesstimate or, or, or maybe an hour? Maybe an hour. Um, do you ever, like, any, any tracker apps or anything on your phone? Because I know, like, for me, I have that Life 360, yeah, and it'll tell me. me to show yeah. you what we think? Okay. It'll tell me, you know, yeah, what my short trips are. It'll even tell me if I walk somewhere. It's, it's freaking awesome. Okay. Yeah, I just get tracked by Google. <laughs> I have Android phones, so it just tells me. My my family likes to know where I'm at, so. Well, you know, I can do you that to Harley because, um, I, you know, with the only child and then her father was killed so it's always like she and I and like she was like really all I had until I got renewed or whatever mm-hmm. so um I kind of like do a maybe a little over <laughs> board of stalking them. hey you know what I do that right now like all right let's see do you have the one with the subscription I'm like mm-hmm. trying to figure out if no, I get that or not I don't she always says something about purchasing it mm-hmm. she said it would tell if like you the like trash right, that's what and, she was saying yeah, yeah. And she was saying that um, it was kind of like how the Apple Watch would do if you had a crash detection. It would alert authorities that they have. Yeah, okay, this is, I don't know if this is like a service thing, but it's on. Um, I would say, I'm waiting a little, I would say hour-ish because I did, I'm a very indecisive person when it comes to like shopping. So I had to go back to make my mind up. It, I can leave right here, but it's loading. I think maybe. Can I see it? Maybe it'll yeah. maybe it'll give me better reception. Yeah. Oh shoot! Give a password or something. I can put it in. No, I can do my fingers. Okay. Sometimes this corner, if you fold it up high, it'll. Because I know people watch it. I want them to have my passcode, man. They'll know our code for a lot of stuff. All right. Here we go. Is it working? No. Oh, my corner is, like, typically the sweet corner. Hold it up here? Yeah. We can set it down here. 
to see the kids going. Um, okay, so you make the second trip to go back and buy more outfits, mm -hmm. and then, um, what, where, where do you go from there? Is Gannon, is Gannon still telling you that he wants to, like, lay down? How's he doing? Um, he, oh, something happened. There you go. Yeah, I told you this was a sweet corner. It said purchase could not be completed. I, I didn't purchase anything. The purchase cannot be completed. Huh, what does that mean? I have no idea. I've never had that pop open before. The purchase could not be completed. Please try again later. Uh, well, I mean, we tried. I guess it says the accent signal, so. Free mm -hmm. membership includes two. How long have you guys had that up? Oh, God. Since we started driving for a long time. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, maybe a long time. Yeah. Cause I want to say, like, I don't, I'm, it's never had me do it for just. He just says. He didn't even ask me to put in anything. Purchase, purchase did not. Mm -hmm. You didn't hit anything. I didn't hit anything. Okay. So. So you go back to, to to Petco the second time. Does Gannon these places that? Sorry, you, I was gonna say it says crash detection disabled. Does that mean I don't have the? Yours okay. looks different than mine does. Um, and you don't have a subscription. Mm -mm. Like it gives me, but it sends me all the alerts. Like it says, like Carly arrived home. Well, yeah, I mean, I get those too. Yeah, if you have certain places set. Like no, I get a home. Yeah, well, I get the work at home, but it'll say completed a Fort Mile Drive, completed a 15 hours. Oh, okay. See what I'm saying? Like, I get, I think we might have different versions. We're going to Android. So, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So, when you and Gannon are out running around to these places and, and you know, getting your gas and your coffee and right. like Petco a couple times, and does he, does he go into the, the okay. stores with you? No, or? but I part. And I know you're going to see this, so I'm going to say that I parked on the front, and, like, I don't know if you could, you'll probably, if you see the Petco, um, cameras, I'm in the, can I show you? Sure. I'm in the store a lot of times walking back to the front door doing this. And my point of doing that is because I was making sure that I didn't see him, like, you know, if he needed something or, like, eating out or whatever. And we, he stays in the car, like, I really stay in the car all the time with, like, if, like, Lena's in the car, and he'll be, like, it's okay, stay here, stay here, buddy, we'll be right back. Didn't think anything, anything of it because he had his Switch with him, and he was playing his Switch. Did he know what store you were in? Yeah, thank So, like, if he needed you or paper yeah. else. But, and, I, and, I, and I did keep walking to the door sure. the several times, and I'm pretty sure I did it on the second visit, too, walking back to the door just to make sure. You know, I could be, it's like, oh, you know, sure, if I need you or whatever. Sure. Um, so, yeah, you can see that on there. So why do you need to know like what I did in there? Or, or, so you're just in there shopping, and then it wasn't even a long shop. Like, okay, like it wasn't. And then you come, and then you come back out, and then where do you go? Um, so I don't. I know we were right in that area, like different places, but I don't think I stopped anywhere else specific to get anything other than Starbucks. I made a wrong turn, and then uh, two times at Petco, and I was looking for Marshalls, but. After the second time at Petco, did you go anywhere? I think after that Petco is when we started to head home. Okay, so you go home. And I wanted to, I want to give you like an accurate of that if I pull this up because I, I don't, I feel like right after Petco we went home. I don't want, I don't want, want to try and bring it up. Yeah, I don't want you to think that I missed a, a stop or something. And I will tell you on the way, on the way there, we did stop and get gas somewhere. Okay. I can't remember if it was on the way there or way home. Do you remember what station? Oh, we, but we did Michelle, stop and get gas. Here, come and go. If you, do you gotta go? I hate to do this. Yeah, I need to. I need to run out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come back. Okay. Okay. Um, it shouldn't take me very long, hopefully. Um, but please continue talking with Detective Houston, and then whenever okay. I get done with that, I'm gonna come back in and we'll we'll get back on again. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to pull this up too. Oh. Sure. The the USA app is being slow too. Is it my phone? I don't. And you can try that corner again. It might. It, the floor is a little weird.
So, after, after you guys left Petco, mm -hmm. um, so did you buy something there that time or? The second time, yes. Okay. Okay. And I know she kept asking me about what was going to do and what was he, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So, I'm going to say this about getting back. Okay. So, everyone has been, yeah, like, about this whole thing about camera footage and this happened because we didn't see this or didn't see this. So, I'm very sorry. What do you mean, everyone? So, like, my whole family is being harassed. My mom is being threatened to be killed. My daughter is being stalked. Uh, I fight took me a while to get hair because I had to put some safety measures in for her own well-being. Okay. And uh, my family from back home is being threatened. Uh, people are staying there, sending people after them. Um, okay. All those things. So, you know, there's always a world of people making uh, situations and saying, let's be a good person, but then threaten someone else. Okay. And so being aware of that, that that's, what, that's what was going on. So in between all that and all these people were sending me like messages that people were sending them, blah, 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 blah. I didn't respond to any of them. During all that, there was something along the lines of someone checked uh, neighbors, two doors down or something, camera footage, and no. never saw anyone do this or that. Like, I don't know, like specific. But my point behind telling you that is, if, if if this is what you guys, and I'm not saying this is what you're basing stuff on, but if this is what you're basing stuff on is like in the same day and age timeline, security, things like that, you will see on somebody's security, Janet and I run to the car at 10 something that morning and we're returning at 2 something. Okay. So he, well, I remember specifically the truck, I pulled it right in front of the ring. And like, we're ring? Yes. But we don't have a subscription. Okay. But according to these neighbors who, and see all, all the way to the truck every day. Okay. They should be able to show you during those time frames that we run in, we we run out, we he runs back in, or whatever. Okay. And then so you leave around ten something, and then you get back around two something. I feel like it was like two thirty five, two two twenty five, two something. Okay. Because I knew I had to be back in time to do a couple things, and then I knew Lane would be coming there. I knew Harley would be getting off work. Yada okay. yada yada. So that okay. was the whole thing. So, going on from there, Shannon goes inside, I, I think first, I don't want to misquote myself, but I'm pretty sure he ran in first, and I, I had the bag for Petco and all that stuff in my hand. Now, I don't, what store it, did you guys use? We always go in through the garage if we, typically, if we, like, park, um, like, on the front part of the yard, I think of it. Sure. So, we go in through the garage. Okay. He goes in through the garage. I go in. I'm getting ready to put up things, stuff like that. This is where it got it. I, I, I made a mistake. This is it. Okay. So, as we got inside, I heard something. But I didn't think anything about it because I thought, you know, maybe, maybe Dana was, like, doing something. Maybe we were, like, doing whatever. Mm hmm And the guy was in there. And I gave him the code. The guy from the... Yeah, it's all my fault. I gave him a code to fix the carpet. <laughs> and he... He was inside. I noticed when I had, like, walked in and saw... I saw our... our we have, like, a little bookshelf uh, thingy. I keep my shades in there, too, but uh, we also have, like, our guns and stuff. I I saw it was open, but in my mind, I thought maybe I left my shades or whatever. Your sunglasses? Yeah. Okay. So, I didn't think anything of it when I heard the noise, and I just started walking downstairs. I didn't walk downstairs with, like, a gun or anything like that. So, I started walking downstairs, and then when I walked downstairs, I hear something again. Well, at that point in time, again, it was on the sofa, and I saw him, and I heard something again, and I walked on around to where the... So, Gannon's room is here, okay. and there's a storage closet here. Okay. And I heard something, and so I walked through the storage closet to open the storage closet. And when I do, it's him. And he was standing in there. He had on gloves. In the storage closet? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I was terrified. And then he just knocked me down and, and like, towards Gannon's room. And he was, like, he was hitting on me. And he was, like, hard, like, on the ground. Okay. And he was trying to break me. And I just, like, told her. I said, I have 
Okay. And like from there on was like in a blur because I was trying so hard because Shannon had a table in his room and I like I went back and hit my head on it. Like with him, Shannon runs inside the room mm -hmm. and like tries to like you know be helpful, do something, whatever. And from there, it was kind of like a blur. Everything else that was going on because I was just like crying, and I was freaking out. And I swear to God, I don't know what. I really don't know. I don't. Okay. I don't. And I'm just like in the moment thinking. Like these memories of like wow, you know, like the thing was open. He had the gun. I I didn't remember what happened there, and so I kind of like blacked out just a little bit. And, and and so all these things are going through my mind as I'm blacked out. I don't know if like I know he was like when Dana was like trying to get on him. I know he was like moving in and you know like and, and it was just all like so like a cycle to me. And so I'm like out of it for a little bit, just for a little bit. And then, from the, from when the time I woke up, I say woke up, but like I kind of like out a little bit, and I I immediately like freaked out. I was like, I could I, I was like I could I couldn't find Gannon. Mm -hmm. It was like the guy was still in the house. Lena was on the way. I didn't know where Gannon was at because I was calling for Gannon. I thought he was hiding. Like I I legit okay. thought he was hiding in like maybe the other closet that was on the other side, the other you know whatever. I thought he was hiding. Like, I was so scared. So I run up the stairs because I hear, you know, I know it's like almost time for Lena, and I hear that the Ring app had like a like alert for someone at the front door. But it could have been just like like Amazon or something driving by because there was nobody at the front door. And then I run back downstairs because in my mind I was like thinking, where is Gannon? And I didn't want to leave and like run outside and scream and you know go crazy because I did not know where he was at at the time. And everybody. Says to me, you know, like, because well, I told Albert and him about it, and they're like, "Why didn't you like run to go get help?" And I, I didn't want to leave to go get help, and I did. I was terrified because he was. I know Albert would kill me because Dana was still in there. Mm -hmm. So then, when I get downstairs, he has the he has the gun, and Dan, he has Dannon, and I'm sitting there like freaking out, like, "What am I doing?" Blah, 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 blah. And Dana does make it to the door at this time, mm -hmm. and then. So I go upstairs because I, I, I know that he was like, don't say anything because I didn't know if someone thought like it was a cop or, you know, if someone heard something or I didn't know anything. So my thought okay. process was if I say anything, getting him down here, you know, I, I need to just be as cool as possible at like, because we order things at Amazon like all the time, you know, books and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it was Lena. So the reason I sent Lena away was because I wanted her to be safe too. So I sent Lena on a mission to go get, like, the mail. You, Lena, it never gets the mail. No, nothing like that. I sent her on a mission to go get the mail. Okay. And so I just started making up random things for Lena to go do. And I looked at Lena, and I said, it, she was saying, I was like, just stay gone for a little while. Because I didn't want her coming back, and then that's, you know, like, her in a, in, in a situation as, as we were, too. So, like, in my mind, I think if I say anything, if, if I do anything, I, I, I just didn't know what to do. I was, I was in complete panic. So, I go back downstairs again, and I'm, like, pleading and, like, talking and, like, all these things going on. Like, just back and forth with him. And why are you doing this? Why, why did you hurt us? Why are you doing these things? Mm -hmm. And then it just started being, like, a like a hustle and puzzle, like, back and forth. And I, I don't even remember how it kept going for you know, like maybe I say five or ten minutes, but I don't know if it was that long. And then he was like on top of me again. And then I kind of lied out again because he hit my head again. Oh, really? And then, yeah. And then I was on the table that was inside, like in between the red, the, the red blue table in there. Okay. And he forced me in there again, and he was trying to do it again. And I was just like losing, losing my mind, like completely, like Albert, Albert's sister was was raped. And so, like, in my mind, I kept thinking, Albert's going to be, like, like, I'm nothing. And, and I shouldn't have been thinking about that. I should have mm -hmm. been. But but I was. And that was all I could keep thinking about, you know, like, was, like, Albert was going to sit up there, again is over here, Lane is coming, and all these emotions are running through there. Mm -hmm. and, and he was, like, he asked me to give him a, a suitcase, and I gave him a brown suitcase, and then he, he hit me on the head again, and I was, like, right here. Kept, like hitting me right there like that. Okay. And so 
then he did that, and then I walked out again. I was having a panic attack. And then, I don't know what happened from there. I really don't. I, I don't know. I just know that I, I, I did lie. I did. When they came, I did say, get a lift, whatever. You know that. Mm -hmm. but, he, but he never did. He never loved the go play area. I just didn't know what to do, and I panicked in the moment. And I didn't want Albert to be like, trying to hurt us. But I'm trying to get in a lot of fights. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I just want you to know, that's the only reason that I, that I made up the lie, is because I knew that I didn't want to face the consequences of, you know, trying to explain to him all that was going on. Because he was saying to me, you're trying to make this about you. You know, this is not about you. And, and, and I knew all those things because I've lived in it. I, so I, I panicked and I just told a story and I was going to try to think of like, you know, man, I'm sorry that it might have delayed, you know, like looking for Gannon, but I do not know where Gannon was. I, I do not know. I do not know his, his whereabouts from that point on. But it was still in the same time frame that I gave you guys. So that wasn't, there was no contradictory to that same time frame because it still was about four o'clock. Okay, so go over the time frame with me. What was the time frame? It, was, it, was, it had to be around like four. Okay. Because Harley gets off at 4.30. Okay. And so Harley had just gotten home or no, was on her way home or, or something. And, and my phone was like alerting. I knew Harley was on her way home. And I was going to tell Harley when she got there. I was going to be like, look, this is what happened. We need to get help. We need to call 911. And all I kept thinking about was I, it's going to be my fault. Because I gave them... I gave him the code. He bought the carpet. He did all that. Okay. And I say fix it? I just said, no, I had already cut it. Oh, okay. He brought the, the big roll of carpet. It's at the house. He brought oh, it. Is. Yeah. Okay. And where's that at at the house? It's in um, the, the back storage room. Okay. Is that he, the one that he was hiding in? Huh? Is that the storage room that he was in? Yes. Whenever you went down there? Yes. I put I put the carpet back in the storage room. The reason I put the carpet back in there because it was laying like in the like so the storage room was right here. It had fallen over at some point when all this was going on. So okay. I put and I picked it up and put it back like okay. on the thing. I rolled it up. Oh. And then not all the way rolled out, but it was like somewhat rolled out through the commotion and I rolled it back up and put it okay in the inside. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um are you doing okay? Yeah. Okay. Um so the time frame is that four o'clock is whenever. I don't want to tell you exactly four. I don't like saying that because about I don't four o'clock was whenever. Yeah. We can say about. Okay. 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 And then what happened after that? So did Lane Harley is, come home? Or? Yeah, Lane is still out and about. Harley's home. Uh, comes home or whatever. I'm pacing the house, like trying to think of a plan of like what do I do, and I should have like immediately. Like, gotten on the phone, did yeah, whatever. But all I kept thinking about was, it's all my fault. It's my fault because I was going to say to me, you gave some stranger access to our home. You know, this is all on you. And, and in my mind, I thought I could fix it. Like, in my mind, I thought I could fix this. I, and I don't know why I thought that. That was a horrible decision-making problem. But it also was in a very emotional state that in normal situations, People can say all they want. I will call. I would do this. I would do this. But if you're not in a situation, everybody handles things differently. Sure. And I was making an irrational decision in a panic situation when I should have immediately been an educator, being all these things. It should have been one of those things where it was immediate, no hot answer. And you might think, this girl's going to be one of your flight attendant. She's got to be able to think that. It was not that easy in the moment because my my mind was in so many directions that I could fix it. I sure I literally thought I was going to fix it. Sure, and and that was where it went from there. So I was going to tell Harley. I didn't tell Harley. I paced, paced, paced around the situation and was thinking, okay, if 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 I don't have any 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 kind of like information, like if I don't have a plan in my in my brain by a certain time, that's when I'm going to call somebody. Okay, and so that's how. So you had like predetermined a, a time that you were going to call if you hadn't figured anything out. I didn't come up with a specific time, but in my brain I kept saying, "Okay, I got to do, I got to act soon." But I knew that you know 
I'm like thinking by six six thirty, like I need to make a a great a good decision because okay. what am I going to tell the girls? Because they're going to be like, you know, like where's Gannon? Da da da. Like we we because we were going to all go eat sushi, so that was where that time frame okay. would have been. Like, what am I supposed to do? Go get in the car and be like, Gannon's not going with us. I couldn't keep going on and on with the irrational decision of not calling nine one one. Okay, and, and and I had to stop the decision. So what happened? So, so tell me what what happened as it went on. So I called nine one one. Okay, and they said, "Hey, sorry, you know this is not an emergency. You have to call this other line." Okay, so I called the other line, and it was a four hour wait for them to get there. Okay, so four hours later they came. I'm still in a panic set. I'm like, these people are no, nothing. I say is going to solve this situation. So I did say that. Can was at this time. Again, I've, I've made it as a very rational decision because it could have been more helpful to be honest and say, this is the description. Here's who we're looking for instead of like the situation being like, he was gone. Mm -hmm. and, and that was horrible. I should have done that because I panicked. And, okay. And made next decision. Okay. You know. And so from then on, that's when you, you guys came. Um, they came through, asked me questions. They searched the house. Um, every room, flashlight, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. They went outside in the garage. Uh, they searched my car, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And was Harley there at this time? Uh, when they did the searches? Mm hmm Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she had, this was, you, it took like four hours. Uh, so it was like later in the night that this had happened. Okay. So when you say they searched your car, which car did they search? Like the car, my car. Like the black car. The black car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, so... There was a deputy, there was like six or seven. And then one of those deputies that responded to the scene, uh, he came around with a flashlight and he like searched like, like everything like up and down, up and down to every room, would ask me questions like, would the wallet be here? Would this be here? You know, like, would this be here? Would this be here? Sure, trying so to figure out what's every, normal, what's right, not normal. And I put everything back in order. Like, okay. like I, I told you I moved the carpet, you know, I, I, I fixed the situation because I was, I was being stupid, and I, I, I should have, I should have told them what had really happened. Okay. And so he went through everything. He went through the outside. He went through the car. He went through the trunk. He went through everything. Like he everything. actually got into the car. He he wanted my ID. Okay. And he then he asked me. He, he said, "Do you mind if I look around?" He sure. went in the garage. He got he opened my car. To, in fact, he left my car to open because the next morning the back door was open. Oh um, really? Yes. Yeah. So he, he went in the car doors. I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have a record of who, who was in there. But he opened the car, opened up this, opened up the truck. He looked through the bags that were in the truck. He looked through everything in the garage, the bags, whatever over here, came back in. He did the same thing and, you know, like in different parts. So he's trying to be like really thorough. Yeah, like trying to be really, really thorough. He was going through every part of the house. Okay. And he asked him, is anything missing? And I, it was the truth. There was nothing missing because. I put the, I did take the gun that he had. I did put the gun back. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so is was there anything else that happened on Monday? Like, did you talk to Harley about it, or, or about about, uh, about what I told you? Mm -hmm. No, I told them the 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 first. Like the first situation, like what you told our dispatcher, right, right, right. That um, and that was that. Uh, Gannon went to go play at a friend's house. Right. And do you remember the friend's house name? And or I, I never gave anyone a name or anything at all. Okay. And okay. also, too, like, I didn't want to leave out any key, like, key points or whatever. Sure. I had my headphones on because when I was, like, upstairs when it all started, I had my headphones on, so my headphones were still on through the whole thing. So that's why if you ask me, like, where... Like, did you hear any noises? Did you hear anyone leaving? Did you hear the alarm go back off? I had my headphones. I had my headphones still on. They were still on my head. When you came inside the house? Yes. Okay. Yeah, like, I had my, my, my headphones still on when I came inside the house. Like, not, not coming in the house with them, but, like, in the house. When I went downstairs, I still had my headphones on. Okay. Yeah, so I can do like this. Right, okay, so help me understand. Yeah. Um, so when you came into the house, you didn't have them on, but then you had them on when you went downstairs? Yeah, because I came in doing, like, a normal... I would get ready to listen to music. I was going to work out. Oh, okay. So I like, you know, you like move them back and forth. What kind do you have? Like I have Beats audio. Like, like the, the ones that go over or yeah. like they come in? Yeah, the ones that like, okay. go, like 
they kind of like smash your head in or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I always have to like, yeah, I always have to, on like, your head. always have to like move them, you know, like back and forth and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's what I was doing, like moving them when I was like, do I hear something? You know, because okay. cause it's kind of like I heard something, but I wasn't sure that I heard something at all. And that's when I started when I'm there. Okay. And are, are they like noise canceling or anything like that or ambient sound or do they just do like, like regular music? I mean, I think it would be noise cancel, right? Because that would be... I don't know. I think you can get them either way. That would be beat. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you can get them either way. Yeah. So I didn't know if you knew. What. Yeah, I don't I don't know. We have two different pairs and the one, like we have two different... And I know one of them is the, like the push, push, you know, like push in kind or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the other one doesn't push in as much. And I have the ones that like... So okay. that might Do you be, have two different pairs? No, one... No, Albert, I'm saying like we have two. It's a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so which ones were you wearing? Mine. Okay, which color are those? I think they're like a gold or maybe like a matte, like a matte gold or... Okay. And what color are Albert? Black and red, I think. Okay. I think. Okay. We just want to make sure yeah. that, you know, like if we see them or whatever again, then we know which ones are yours yeah, and which yeah, ones yeah. are his. So that it's like, um, you know, if you said that, um that your head got hit and stuff like that. And we'll go back to that right. a little bit, but maybe if he like touched them or, or something like that, then we can, we want to make sure that we get the right ones. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Um, so any, was there anything else that happened Monday, like after the deputies left or anything like that? No. So I, I went out to my car that morning because I knew that Albert was going to uh, fly in or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so normal, like, like routine, you know, like I got up, whatever. I got in my car and I realized that he had, the guy had left the back door open. And then, so I was like, oh, my car might not crank. And I, you know, drive out and I drive down the street because I was going to drive my car, blah, 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 to pick it up. And I decided to come back because it was too early. His flight wasn't coming in until 8.53. Okay. And I was going to like, honestly, just, just drive. I had to think in my brain. You know, I was like, this is the best thing. But I didn't. I just drove down the street, came back. And that was in your black car? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then, so then you ended up picking him up later? Yeah. And you took your black car to do that? No. So, well, yeah. So what happened is I took my black car, but I had already, I sent him a message earlier and I said, hey, can, is it okay if we get a rental car? Okay. And he said, yes. I have a leased vehicle, so you can only put like a thousand miles on it. And I'm like pretty anal about you know, like, I don't want to go over and that type of thing. Okay. So his car is very expensive on gas. So I was going to get a little, I did get a little economy car and I knew we'd be driving around everywhere. Everybody was like searching. And in my mind, I was like freaking out because I had, I'm going to blame because they come on our codes and our home. And so I was like, we, I know we're going to drive every, everywhere all day. So I was like, I'm going to get a rental car. Okay. So I did. And okay. so I got my, I got my rental car. And I left my black car at the airport. You left it at the airport. Right. Because I had to have a way to, like, I didn't walk. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Albert asked me where my car was at, and I told him it was at French. The reason I told him that is because I, I, Albert and I get a lot of fusses about this whole working and changing career thing that you guys, uh, I told you about in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, a personal situation that I just, I didn't want to fuss with him about, you know, like the working and changing, you're going to give up your career for this, this, and this. So I just said, it was, he knew I, like, I had just worked at French. So he knew that. So I said, it was at French, one of my friends brought me. That's what I told him. Okay. So that's why he thought it was at French, but it was my way of, so he thought that. I wanted him, he knew I had to go get my stuff from French because I stopped working there. Um. So, and, and that's kind of, I wanted it to go with the story because I wasn't ready yet to tell him I wasn't returning at all to education. It just wasn't. Okay, so he doesn't know that yet. Well, he knows that, like, I've been, I'm going to be a flight attendant, and, oh, never mind, I can't do it because I've been back and forth. You're going to go from making almost, I made, like, 60 grand mm-hmm. to, I think they make, like, a 18 to $20 an hour, and but you can only do so many things, like reserve shifts, you got my crash pads. So I'm back and forth on something I really want to do and the money. So okay. I went back and forth with him on that, and that was just one of those things where, I just wasn't prepared to be like, oh, you're going you're to be a teacher again. Oh, you're going to do this again. Oh, you're back at the school again. Blah, blah, blah. You know, okay. so you're so, back at something again. So. so you took your, so you drove to the airport in your black car. Mm-hmm. Okay. What time did you do that? 
his flight landed at eight fifty something, so I got there in time to park my car and then I walked up to the um thing and he was coming down the escalator mm-hmm. and then I go over to budget and I you know get the um rental car. He's sitting on the little corner over here, waiting on his bag. Um we walk out, we get the car. Okay. And so where did you park your car at the airport? Do you remember? Um, in the short term parking, maybe about like a middle way. Middle Okay. Middle, uh, there's it's a long like the short term I think. It goes from you got the rental cars, the section here, the section, section. So it went to like the farther section and maybe like over here. Okay. Um, okay. And then but so you're in your black car this morning. Right. Okay. Because I had to turn the rental car back in. Okay. Right. Okay. So you picked your car up this morning? No. So I took the rental car back last night because I needed, I didn't know what time situation, you know, he's upset with me for not telling you guys first so that, you know, it could have been a a quicker search or or, or whatever the case may be. So I didn't know, like, I thought we were going to have to stay, you know, like at a hotel or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So I parked my car. My my Harley picked me up because I was going to get a room at a hotel. Okay. And so I, I thought you guys knew that because it was shared there this morning. So. Well, people are working different pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just want to make sure that while we're talking that I have all of the information. Right. right? So if I, if I ask you something that you feel like has already been covered before, I'm not trying to be a brat or anything like that. Yeah. I just want to make sure we have everything. We're all on the same right. page with everything. Right. Okay. So um, you drove the rental car back last night, early mm-hmm. this morning. Second. No, it, it, was, it was last night. It wasn't. It wasn't that, it wasn't that late. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then Harley picked you up, mm-hmm. and you left your car at the airport still? No, no, no. Okay. So I drove my car, I mean, I drove the rental car back, mm-hmm. got in my car. Okay. Left. Okay. Okay, so I didn't have anywhere to go because they're fussing at me, and people are in our, you know, everything's going on in the searches and, and things like that. So I just, basically, I didn't really have anywhere to go, and I... My stuff was, some of my stuff was at home, so I didn't have a car to get gas. I didn't have anything like that. So I was basically, like, just, you know, like, going somewhere, parking, like, trying to stay warm because it, it got a little bit cold or whatever. Sure. So finally, I just finally, was call, like, gave in. I was like, Albert, look. And he was like, I need you to tell me the truth. And I that's when I started messaging her that, hey, I would. I'm going to come home, and I'm sorry. I'll tell you exactly what happened. It's all my fault because I should have let everyone know that. I gave someone the code, and I tried to refer to the code. So, um, so at that point, I leave my car at the hotel, which was near Harley's work. Okay. And she, Albert was like, are you guys coming? And I said, yes, we're on our way. I leave my car at the hotel the entire night and leave in Harley's car. We stay at home tonight, well, I mean, last night, and then I come back with Harley when she came to work this morning, and I, get, I walk over to the hotel. Okay, so had you gone and gotten a hotel room and then changed your mind and decided no, to stay home no, and I, parked your car? No, I parked my car because I was going to get a hotel. And I, okay. My thought process was if we got in Holly's car and went home and I didn't want people like, like his ex-wife is there. You know, I didn't want people like, you know, there's no, no the domestic type situation like going on, you know, okay. with me, myself, against you know, like her family and that type of thing. So my plan was we'll just come back here and stay at the hotel if, sure. if we have to. Sure. So that was the whole point of me leaving my car there. Okay. Okay. Do you remember which hotel it was? Yes. It's the uh, uh, IHC, the Holiday Inn that was right there. Holiday Inn? Yeah. And again, that's where the police were at all morning where my car was at. We were? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it could have been something separate, but I just assumed because when I got my, when I got in my car to pick it up, I'm just like, work at, at the one at um, Center Point. Center Point, mm-hmm. so over by like the movie theater and stuff like that. Okay, and it was sheriff cars or CSPD yeah. cars. Uh, wait, El Paso, whatever, white and maybe green, maybe white and something. Hmm. Okay, I just assumed they were there because. You guys leave my car with it, but I parked it there because we first of all only drove one car in case it came back. I okay. had to stay at the hotel. So Okay. But yeah, it was parked there. Okay. Um, and then I picked it back up this morning. So. You picked it back up this morning? Yeah. And then you came here, or yeah. did you go anywhere first? No, I, I was just driving around because I was on the phone trying to figure out situations for, like, my mom was getting, like I told you, was getting all those messages. So I wanted to, like, 
talk to them because they were freaking out and I hadn't been able to talk to them in the last 24 hours. So at that point, my mom was, was like really worried that I hadn't told her why are these people, you know, in her death threat, you know. And so at that point in time, I had to make that decision to focus on making sure my mom knew like, hey, listen, don't respond to, you know, anything people say, you know, and that type of thing. Um, so I do have one question. I know, like, um, and, and it, it was probably really frustrating. I know your husband was upset and stuff like that, too. Like, we had, we took a long time to get out there for, mm-hmm. um, I guess we were under the impression that it was a runaway or whatever. Right. So it took longer. You know, in her death threat, you know, and so at that point in time, I had to make that decision to focus on making sure my mom knew, like, hey, but then don't respond to, you know, anything people say, you know, and that type of thing. Um, so I do have one question. I know, like, um, and, and it, it was probably really frustrating. I know your husband was upset and stuff like that, too. Like, we had, we took a long time to get out there for, mm-hmm. um, I guess we were under the impression that it was a runaway or whatever. Right. So it took longer to get out there to you guys. Um, but in the meantime, like, when we did get out there, there was, like, all these people out in the neighborhood and, like, stuff going on in Facebook and stuff like that. How did that happen? Like, um, Albert had had someone else um, start talking on Facebook. Uh, okay. One of the kids' mom. Okay. So she, like, initiated something on Facebook. And then, of course, all the people comment on it. Okay. Because the community page is a quite active page for her. Okay. okay. I didn't know if the, like, you had posted something or mm-hmm. Albert. Not originally. He had the little Cambria. Okay. To post an original post initially, like initially, and then. Okay. Is that like a friend of your guys's or? That's uh, one of the kids, Braden's mom. Okay. 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 Um. All right. So I want to go back a little bit. Okay. Um, just to kind I think of. Yeah, I could like use the restroom really fast. Absolutely. Okay. Sure. Um, what, I didn't get to eat all this. We we'll have to like, like be like. Is it, no, we're coming back. We're okay. Coming I was going to say, was it like a long term process or something like that? No, you can just leave everything wherever it is, and we don't have to like clean up anything or anything like that. And I'll just show you where the restroom is. Do you want to leave that here? Move what? Your hot pocket. Oh, you don't want to take it to the bathroom, right? Oh yeah. For, uh, <laughs> Forward. Stretch break. Yeah, no, no, that's a good stretch break. Take a take a seventh inning stretch break here. Got the horn section over here. <laughs> we good to go? We are. Okay. Thank you. Anything else you need? Another cone? Okay, thank water you. Water or anything?
Okay. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, yeah. I know. I can't, that's still in this job. If you leave this job, I don't know. I don't, like, it wouldn't work out that well. Yeah. I know I'm not going to do that because Albert will lose his job. Okay. All right. Let me choose. Bye. All right. I know you're on the phone. It's okay. Sorry. You know, a little caffeine. Oh. Okay. So I just want to back up with you. Um, we kind of have like a good overview of everything, um, but so we can start really narrowing down to try and try and gain in and everything else yeah. like that. I just want to try and get some more specific stuff on everything. Yeah. Um, so I, I just write some stuff down. Um, so, um, I did so going back to the um, just a little bit to the to the fire part. Mm -hmm. You said that Gannon had some some stuff on his arms. What mm -hmm. part of his arm was that? Like like I don't remember like the inner area. You just point to like wherever like in this like in the inner area like this. Okay, so like right here. Yeah, but like it like the burns are like not like you're thinking like 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 round burns. It was more of like. Not like burns that are like this, um, right here. Mm -hmm. It was more of not necessarily burns, but like uh, a little bit of like skin, like it was like skin peeling, like in left. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so that was like on his left arm, his right arm. It was on both the arms because remember when I came in, I I took the covers and like basically like like got on top of both of like on him and the the fire. Oh. Not like not like him pushing him on the fire, but like. Like, you know, like, I was just trying to get the fire out. Okay. And he was, like, hanging off the side of the, like, oh. off the side of the, um, the sofa. And he was still asleep? No, he was, he was, like, like, he, like, saying my name. Like, oh. like, he was alert, like, what's going on, because he had just, like, woken up. Okay. Yeah. So he was not having a full conversation with me, but, as in, just, like, calling my name, and he's like, I'm so sorry. He kept saying he was sorry. He didn't mean to do it. That he's been got me for a year. So... It was him thinking, oh, my gosh, shoot. Like, kind of like waking up being like, oh, shit, I just made a mistake. Like, we would say mm -hmm. in the in the mind of a, of a kid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying mm -hmm. that for me. Um, okay. So, the next day, mm -hmm. you go to, like, you're trying to figure out how to get this carpet fixed. Mm -hmm. And you said that you had already, you, you cut the carpet? I cut the carpet. Okay. Yeah. What did you use to cut the carpet? I had a... Albert has, like, these tools that are, like, wood working tools, like chisels, and, and I don't know the specific name of the ones, but they're, like, a little saw thing, it, and I just, like, took the carpet and did, like, this. Okay. So, okay. You know, I mean, I didn't necessarily saw it, but I just kind of was, like, they're very sharp tools. He has a lot of woodworking tools and stuff in the, in the, in the garage, so I just took one of those things, got, like, a handle, and... What color, you know, like you use? Because right? I, I tried with a box cutter, uh -huh. but I couldn't, like it wasn't, like, like deep enough to, mm -hmm. like, really pull cool, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
because yeah, I, I tried a couple times with a box cutter. You don't get kind of like started the process, but then I had to get like a stronger object or whatever. Okay. To do it. Okay, sure. Um, so you cut the carpet, mm -hmm. and then you guys are going to go try to figure out how to like get this fixed or whatever else. So you said that you um, you went over to like where some new construction is. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Can you tell me more about that? I'm I'm not familiar with the area. I mean, I could if you want me to drive you there, or next like or whatever. I don't know. Like they give you straight names and stuff like that. Sure, that's sure. That's fine. But can you just describe it's it for me a little bit better? Okay. So like the school, there there's the school in the back, and so there's a bunch of new buildings. Okay. That are in the area right near the school. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember, like, when you went to, to the new builds and stuff like that, was it, like, the first house in or, like, 12 houses in? Or yeah, I was how just, far in did you have to go? I wanted a couple. I'd rather just go show you because you're going to quote me on me telling you an estimate of the number, and, and I, I don't think that's fair to me. So I can give you an accurate description of which house it was. Okay. Well, for now, let, let's, let's go with what you kind of remember. Is like, do you remember, did you have to drive um, far in there or just a short distance? I don't know what you mean by, like, far in there. Like, like into where the new builds are. So there's no, they're all, like, you just go around. It's, like, in loop. Okay. So I don't, I don't know what you're asking okay. so far. Sure. Um, I mean, I can show you. I just don't know your terms of distance that you're asking me, like. Okay. Well, I guess, like, so there's, you're saying that they're, like, in a loop or whatever? <laughs> no, the whole area is in, like, there's loops, there's streets, there's. Okay. You know, like different sections of the new build. Okay. Yeah, so there's like, I, I can show you because you're going to quote me on me giving you hand motion and, and things like that. And that's not fair to me being okay. being on a, a conversation. That's just not fair. And I'm sure if I had a turning here, he would say we're going to go show instead of just okay. giving you something that would be an estimate. So you went to the new build. Mm -hmm. And um, you found this guy... And, and asked him about... Yeah, his name was Eduardo. Eduardo? He said, or oh, Eduardo. I don't know how to say the Spanish things right, but Eduardo, Eduardo. Okay. Something like, I like maybe I'm saying it wrong, but I heard Eduardo. With like a G? Yeah. Okay. But it might be a J if it's the Spanish. I'm not sure how they okay. did it, but I'm not Spanish, but Eduardo. Okay. Yeah. So he said, he told you that was his name? Yeah, he said Eduardo. Okay. Yeah. And so maybe about like five, eight, really skinny. He had on a tool belt. Um, had on like a, it was like a, like a sweater vest, like a sweater vest, like a, a cold weather vest. Um, I think it was, I think it was red. I'm not really, I don't, I don't really remember exactly, but he did have blue jeans on and he had on the, like the work, like the combat boots or whatever. I'm assuming in my mind that this was just, um, like this was somebody who was like a, he looked like he was a, you know, like a legit worker. There were people, you know, like on the houses. Uh, there were people working in different areas. So I didn't think it was any. Sure. That he was a legit, not necessarily a contractor, but someone that was going to be able to. Someone knowledgeable. Right. To be able to, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And I didn't, I, and I didn't explain to him what had happened. Like, I didn't say, okay, this happened. I said, we need a piece of carpet. Do you have the carpet that, for this model of home? Okay. And what did he say? He said yes, and I like I was like, "Do you have the carpet?" And I gave him like a hand reference of like the size that I would need, and he said yes. We have a little for that. They have the, the I don't know if he said they had the all all of them have the same in those model homes or the same color. He was said something in long. I don't really know the, the the definition of that, but some certain homes have the same exact thing and everything. Okay, you know what I mean? Like I have the same. Four and one, the same, because a lot of the homes are the same every five houses or whatever. Right. So you like they have like three or four houses that they build over and over and over again. Right, right. Okay. And they put the same finishings in them. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that was my uh, assumption that I had taken from that. Okay. Right. And so he said that that you, that they had it, and then what, what what happened next as far as like him having it? Um, so you need to get that? No, no, no. It was, I, I just always check to make sure it's not my daughter. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because. Because you're on the mom. So he said he was going to bring the carpet and fix it. And I gave him the code to get into the garage. Okay. Um, and so, and you had mentioned that you thought maybe you would find somebody that would want to do like a side job or whatever else. Like, did 
like how much did he say he was going to charge you for doing this and for the carpet and stuff like right. that? So we never had made that like uh, just like the like that conversation. I just said, hey, and I'll give you a small donation. So what I did was I said, okay, I think my ex husband Holly that he used to like work in um, like she thought and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm thinking we'll jump like this back home would have been like ten dollars an hour. Here it's probably a little more like fifteen. You know, fifteen, twenty dollars an hour, whatever. And I said, I'll give you a small donation. You didn't ask me earlier about the part, so sorry if we left that out. And I said, I'll give you a small donation. And then in my mind, a donation was going to be fifty dollars. So that's exactly I had cash. And that's exactly what I had was the fifty dollars, like on the counter. And I explained that to him that it would be on the counter. Thank you for you know doing it. Make sure the garage is closed. And like I said, you didn't ask me all that, but I did go through a conversation. I just didn't be like, hey, bring the carpet. Here's the sure, and that's why I don't want you to think that because that was, that's, that's what that is we not what happened. I went through the process of make sure you close the garage back. We have a security system. I told him we had cameras. You know, like I, I talked it up through the conversation. Okay, to you know let him know that these are this is the steps and you know the processes and stuff like that to follow. Okay, so let's let's talk about that conversation right. a little bit, just because we didn't, and that's why we right. go back and right. get you know more information and everything else like that. So um, he says he has the carpet, and then um, did you ask him like, okay, can I just have the carpet, or did you ask him like, can you do fix it for me, or what you or did he volunteer to fix it for you? Why do you need to have it? Cause like, did you ask him if he would just give you the carpet, or like, I, I was going to be like a package deal. I was assuming. But it's just like I wasn't asking for like the carpet for the size room. I gave him like the okay. like the size. So in my in my mind is he's bringing a scrap like like rolls or scraps or whatever. That's already some extra from the job. Okay. So you didn't ask him to just like bring you carpet so you could fix it. You asked him to come and fix it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I mean I I had in my mind to fix it, mm -hmm. but then I was like I you have to measure and then like. Because I changed tools, like one side was going to be like this plant, so if you cut it different on that side, and it just was a little out of my <laughs> thought process so that I could. Okay, do. yeah. Have you like if you've never done carpet before? Yeah. I would imagine that like trying to patch something would be right. kind of hard, right. especially if you had to mm -hmm. use different stuff yeah. to cut it. Okay. Um. Okay. So he agrees to yes come to your house to fix it. So you give him the address. Yes, I get. Okay. I, I went through the whole thing. Of, Here's where it's at, like his money, how much you know we do back home. I mean, it was probably like a you know, good two, three minute conversation okay. of the specifics that needed to be done. And okay. I did that out of panic because I needed to get it fixed. I didn't want to put it on Craigslist because people say they call me or this and they upcharge and oh, we need to replace the whole section and things like that. And did he tell you, like, what he would charge you, or did you just say, this is how much I'm willing to pay? No, I just immediately said that I was going to give a donation, okay. like, in the terms of, like I, like, I didn't really have a lot to give you, but can you, like, hook me up? But I kind of was like, can you, like, hook me up like that? Okay. And I'm being more of, like, a, please do this for me, I really need it, like, I don't have a lot of money. Like a favor? Yeah, like, like a like a, I mean, because if he's on the job working and he makes so much an hour and can make an extra fifty bucks that day, that was one hundred fifty might turn into two hundred. Gotcha. You know, so in my mind of thinking of doing that was back to the times that Polly's dad would do the same thing. You know, he would be like, "Don't go do, it. don't go pay a subcontractor. Just go get someone who wants to work after hours. You know, mm -hmm. or whatever." And so that was my, my that was my thought process. That'd be cheaper, faster. Someone will come do it right away. And then we're done with the situation. Okay. So, um, what did you tell him as far as, like, how to get into the house and stuff like that? What do you mean how to get I just gave him the garage code. Okay. And I explained where the carpet needed to be replaced. I mean. Okay. There's no, like, when you enter the home, there's no, like, specifics. You just upstairs, downstairs. That's it. Okay. So, you told him it was downstairs and kind of the area that it was in or? You could. You walked downstairs, you were thought. Okay. Like, it wouldn't have been, like, you needed to go search for it. I mean, that's okay. common sense. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know I'm saying you so. common sense. I'm saying that to the person that's common sense, like, oh, that's kind of it, you know. Because, see, I had to, the rug right here, when the, I showed the police when I came, I had to put the rug and put, like, a piece of carpet that was on it. But the problem with the piece of carpet that was on it was, that was a piece of carpet that was, 
from the outside. Oh, okay. like, you know what I'm saying? But we walk on it. And it was like an extra piece. But right, right. And I didn't, I mean, sure, they could have, you know, used the same carpet, but I I needed a carpet to fit that specific size. So if someone had extra carpet, then why not go ahead and fix the whole thing, you know? Sure. And we could have a little extra roll for, like, hopefully if there's ever an emergency or anything like that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Because um, I thought that there would have been some somewhere. Like, in your house? Right. Okay. Because, you know, like, sometimes, you know, like, uh, I knew, like, uh, when we had our home, we sold it, we left our um, uh, square, what are they called, the hardwood floors, and we left, like, maybe, like, ten little sheets and mm-hmm. things like that. So, like, I thought, you know, but in my mind, like, okay, no, I'm just going to go. I hadn't seen anything, so I had to, you know, go find it, go find it yeah. Okay. And, and you act so much differently when you're trying to be impulsive and make it, hurry up and get it done quick, quick decision. When I probably could have just been like, hey, uh, you know, let's look at something that we have. Maybe in the back corner we could have cut a piece out or something like that. But I didn't want to go mess up an old lady's house. An old lady's house? Another lady's house. Well, oh. her house. Like the renter, like the owner. We rent from them. Okay, so you yeah, rent. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I thought you guys owned. No, no rent. My bad. Okay. So, um, um, so you left. So you went there. You said that he was about 5'8". Yeah. Okay. What color hair did he I have? I say five. My husband's six, but just a little bit shorter, skinny, dark hair, like dark hair like mine. You might think I'm Hispanic, so like I'm really brown in the in the summer, but he wasn't here too. Yeah, he's Hispanic. I know, but people always think that. So the uh, uh, skin complexion was a lot darker than mine. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know if you want me to give you like a for a skin complexion thing, but I would say like middle to tannish. Okay. Color. Um, and was his hair, like, did it have texture to it? Was it straight? Was it curly? Well, he had a thing on his head, so it was like a, like a little, I don't know, like a fat piece or something, and it was just, I can't tell you, like, a hairstyle, because he had, like, a little, uh, brown, sh- like, strap thing around it, but it was just, like, like, almost, like, jet black hair. Okay. But it wasn't, like, long. Okay. And then, um... What was his face shape like? Maybe like a little chubbier than mine. Okay. Like more rounded. Was there anything um, about his face that like stands out that would help us be able to find him? Like that would we be able to be like, that's the guy right there. Like, did he have? Well, I was noticing some bad thing, but like maybe like a little bit of. Is it a crater? They're like, like the little holes. I don't say holes. No, like you know how you can see some people and it's got like a little like holy like skin from the acne. Like acne? Scar? Yeah, yeah, like scars. Uh, like, yeah, like, that's really good stuff. Yeah, so but like, out like, like acne, like scars were kind of like present just a little bit there. Okay. And not bad though, not like, you know, super bad, but it could have been like even more like recalls or like whatever, but it's just a little section of like right here, but do you tell it was just like from old, like age or whatever. Okay. Um, or maybe even from dryness. I don't know. I wasn't giving him a skin consultation, but I do remember there was like little spots here. Okay. Did he have any facial hair? Yes. He had a mustache that went right here, like around in this area, and that was completely it. Okay. It went like this here. Like the... Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to give you this because I don't know how to say the wording. Okay. Just the mustache. Yeah. Okay. Um... And you said his hair was, like, jet black. Do you remember, like, approximate, like, could you tell approximately how long it was? Or his hair? Like, was it long, short? Yeah, I, was, I just told you that. I just said it wasn't long. It was, the belt, like, barely fit around it and, like, flat, like, you know, like, little flat pieces here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, not bald, not bald, but not long. Nothing was hanging on, okay. on the shoulders or, or anything like that. But it wasn't, like, a military cut or anything like uh, that. Yeah, no, 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 not a military cut or anything else. Okay. So kind of like medium length. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then, how old do you think he was? I would say easily late 30s, early 40s. Okay. But it, and based upon me thinking that too, about the face, facial structure, you know how you can look at some people's skin and the, uh, the, the lack of elasticity or whatever it is, it's different. So like those little, you could tell that had been there for a while. Okay. Almost okay. like it was like a, 
I don't think that's burn, but almost like you could just tell something had been. Um, that's a very okay. unique feature I just wanted you to have because that wasn't something that, you know, like, hey, did, you, did the person have wood stakes? This was, you know, on their face right. that would be permanent. Sure. Do you remember seeing any tattoos or any other like? No, I didn't remember seeing I remember, I just remember the vest. I didn't see any tattoos. Um, do you have a shirt under the vest? I don't know, shirt or jacket. Okay. I mean, like, a face under the vest, but like, you know how you have the vest over and people wear the shirt? Yeah. That's like a Colorado thing, but kind of. <laughs> what color was the jacket? Do you remember? Or I, just I just remember the red part, because remember I told you earlier, I was like, I think it's red, but I mm -hmm. was talking about this top layer. So, yep. Yeah. So that the vest was red. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know if you remembered what color the shirt was that was under um, No, I don't. Okay. I don't. And then you said he had boots on. Yeah, he had on like the, like the, um, Rocky boots or like the like the construction boots that okay. were like, Do you remember what color they were? Yeah, they were that light tan color like a sand. Okay. And he had remember I told you he had the belt thing. I don't I know everybody had the belt, but I just You said it was a tool belt? Yeah, it was like a like a strap thing that had in pockets. Okay. Okay. Um and I and remember I told you that at the scene. I don't remember like a specific color, it was just, oh yeah, you know, you see now you're like, oh, person in black shirt, or something, whatever, I didn't. Okay. And I do, but the, but the face did stick out, and I could, I, I wish I was good at drawing, because I'd want you to like, to like notice that, or whatever, and it was like more rounded, kind of like craters type thing. Sure. Um, and then, so, and you went through the fact that, so you guys left there, and you went to a Petco? Well, we already talked about, I don't know if I got gas beforehand or right. not, but I told you guys I would be more than willing to give you the, the information from an exact travel um, for the route, but we immediately left the Worcester Ranch area of Delta Okay. Yeah. Um, so what was, you had said you were going to leave him the cash on the bar. Did you go back and put that there, or were you going to, like, or had you left that there whenever you left? No. So we have, uh, I always have, like, everything that was in the, with all the notes and everything like that that was in the drawer that sits on this side of the kitchen or whatever. Okay. I had, and I had cash put in there because I had gotten I was playing the lottery. So I had okay. ca cash back from the lottery, and I had already laid it out on the counter. My mindset was the reason I already laid it on the counter was not because I had it predetermined I was going to leave it out for a specific person. I already had it laid out on the counter because I was going to give that money to Harley until Harley, because Harley has been paying on the doll because Chance, we finance him. Okay. I say finance him, but she's paying him back or whatever. And we always give her a portion of Chance and a portion of her car payment. So I was going to give that back to her anyway. Okay. And so in that moment, I don't even remember when I came in that I checked to see that there, that the whole month, I, did, I left her $100, but okay. I didn't check in the moment if that $100, like when I walked in, I didn't say, hey, there was only 20 there. And my mind wasn't thinking about, you know, like it was gone. So I thought, you know, okay. But in my conversation with him, Here's, here's how much you want to do, donation, blah, blah, blah. So when I come in, I didn't think to go look to see if he left the remainder of the $100. Like, that just wasn't in my mindset. Cause, you know, cause but you, it was already there on the counter whenever you had left. Right, and that was just because when Holly got in, I was going to tell her that that was usually, like, I either I zilly her money or, you know, like, whatever we pay. You what? Zilly. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, everyone else says zilly. Like, so it's kind of like Apple Pay or whatever. Okay. They so usually, like, I, I zilly her money or things like that. But I would know this. I haven't had my... Um, USAA credit card in mm -hmm. such a while, so I didn't have a way to, you know, to go get it or whatever, so I had lottery ticket money. Okay. So I was like, I would use the lottery ticket money that I'd been stashing to go buy new lottery tickets. Okay. And do you remember, was that, like, when you put it out there, was it like 20s? Yeah, so it's all, yeah, it's always 10s, and the reason it's always 10s is because I, I tell myself I'm not playing anything, look, like, above the, 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 like, the 10 amount. Okay. And I go to the, the um, save weight all the time and put it in that machine. If okay. you put more than ten dollars in that machine, they're they're gonna keep it and you have to Oh, okay. You have to ask like, you know, oh I I put a twenty in there, you had to spend twenty in lottery ticket. Okay. So you had ten dollars or a hundred dollars in ten dollar bills yes. on the counter when you left. Yes. Okay. Um, so you weren't worried you didn't have to go back to like put that back out for him before you went out. Yeah, no, and I didn't intentionally like leave it and say, you know, whatever. I in my mind when I left because I didn't know like, hey, what time 
I didn't have a specific time. I knew I needed to be back before Lena, but usually Holly gets off at 3.15. So I was assuming she might beat me back home. Okay. But she works. Remember I told you, like, they were having people having to take shifts and all that. So she doesn't work until later in the day. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. So, and then you come home. Let's talk about what happens when you come home. Okay. And I know that, um, that it can be difficult to talk about. Um, so... And I did want to talk about that part without, I, I just, I'm one of those people that tries to, tries to, like, not think that mental health is always, a, you know, a, an issue or mm -hmm. things like that. And, and in my mind, I'm always afraid of the whole, like, oh, it's because of mental health problems, you know, like that type of thing. So, sure. I'm talking about it, I'm trying to, like, I think if I'm, like, emotions, I'm trying to be the blocker to think that I'm not going to let that be a stigma. That I have to, I'm going to have mental health problems because of this. So that no, and and and, and what I was going to say is because um, you know I've been a, a special victims unit detective, and so I've had to investigate different types of assaults and sex assaults and stuff like that right. with adults and children. Right. And so I just kind of want to let you know, um, and this is you know tip. I would let anybody that I was going to have this conversation right. know. Um, that that's what I've experienced with and mm -hmm. that it can be a hard thing to talk right. about and that I understand that. Um, and so, and that it can be kind of a sensitive subject right. and, like, people don't w always want to say mm -hmm. specifics, but for us, like, to be able to document everything and to be able to, to really pursue it, we have to get into the specifics. And I just okay. want to apologize up front for that because I know it can be uncomfortable. Does that make sense? Are you okay? Do I have to talk about that? I don't want to, like, I said, like, I don't want to be dreaming. Okay. I'm sorry, you don't want what? I'm like, dreaming. I don't want to dream anymore. My mind keeps saying it. Like, in my mind, I keep saying it. And I'm trying to block it. And I'm fighting a battle, blocking out exactly everything, you know? Sure. Um, well, so you would just ask, like, I can say yes or no. I just don't want to be, like, really specific in terms of, are you talking about, like, you're going to ask me questions about, like... So, what I'd like you to do is is start by telling me what you remember hearing whenever you came in that day. And then, and, and as you walk me through it, I'll have to ask you some questions, okay? Yeah. Okay. So, you, and correct me if I get anything wrong, okay? You had said earlier that whenever you came in, that you, you thought maybe that Gannon had come into the house first. I, I'm almost positive he went into the house first because I had to get the, the packet, the bags that we had purchased. Okay. Like the, like the Petco bag. Sure, sure. Um, and then, and you guys came in through the garage, correct? I want to say the garage. I'm like 80% that it was the garage because we parked on the front without the shop. Okay. Um, so, you come in through the garage, Gannon has already come inside, what's the first thing you remember seeing whenever you come inside? I usually always go in to think about, you know, hey, I need to uh, let the dog out, hey, I need to do this, mm -hmm. you know, like that is my mentality is to go in to do that. And the alarm could tell if no, it won't because I had put those things on there. See, that's where the hard part is because I can't give you the exact time um, because Yeah, but it, it might. And some of the things, so remember I told you I had the, mm -hmm. the things going on and we had put the little towel things on them or whatever? Sure. Some of the sensors were picking up, but some of them weren't, weren't. So I can't give it in. Like, is that kind of, if I went in, I could tell you if I went in and went upstairs or went downstairs first by the motion. But the motion was all off because I had put... Uh, put towels. Right, there. right. You so, hadn't pulled those down from the night so, before yet. Yeah, like, I, in my mind, that was not, like... 
Yeah. Some of them, like like the one in the corner, like hangs off the side. So it might have picked it up or it might have not. Have. So if it wasn't for that, I could tell you uh, by that did I go straight in and go straight to the basement for because it would say like, well, so I there's more responsibility. I want to so with with this kind of conversation, it's really all about what you remember and what your perspective right. is. Okay. So I remember it was just basically being you know like normal because I'm excited. We got you know new clothes. For the pets, and I, I mean, we're coming in the door, yada yada yada. Okay. The day's halfway through. I had, I knew I had specific responsibilities to continue out the rest of the night. My brain hadn't said, "Hey, you need to go check" or anything with the money yet, because it, I, I just wasn't on that, you know, that direction yet. Sure. I was on the direction I wanted to work out, I wanted to listen to my music, I wanted to you know, like relax. That was my, sure. that was my mindset. So it wasn't to be like, "Okay, is this here, is this here, is this here." That type of thing. Sure. It should have been because I gave someone the code to get into our house. But in in my experience in Lorton Ranch, it's been that, you know, most everyone has uh, people, they give people their codes and let them come in and fix things. And, you know, like you can do the Amazon packages and have them delivered inside the door. So I wasn't thinking, you know, like I need to run in and check, make sure it's okay. If I felt that I was doing a harmful situation, that would have been my first. First off, I wouldn't have done it, but second off, I would have went in immediately and been like, did he fix what he's supposed to do? Did he think something from the hall? That would have been my initial thing. So it was a normal, I want to listen to music, I want to work out. I don't know, I might have got something to drink. I don't, up and down, dogs, that type of thing. That would have been my, you know, mentality. But what, I didn't hear anything until I had my headphones on and I thought, like, it's one of those things where you thought you heard something because, like, the downstairs, it, it if anybody makes any kind of noise, like a boing, it's like it echoes really loud. Oh, really? Like it has like a like a, a louder echo through the vent. Okay. So even sometimes, whether you're asking about noise counseling or not, even like having things on or not, sometimes it's just the way that, you know, they're sitting on there, you hear something, you know. And that was like, you know, like almost like an okay. echo noise. Okay. And that was, and, and below my room would be that storage room. Okay. So, so you were in your room when you heard that? So when I heard that, I don't remember if I was, in the, I know I had the headphones on. Okay. I don't remember if I was in the room or walking back and forth because I had a big speaker box over here. And then either I, either I played the big speaker or played the headphones or, or however on the big speaker back and forth. So I don't know if I was like here, there. Again, I wish I could give you the uh, motion thing because that would give you a better time like at 254 or whatever, 55, here, there, here, like that. But when I heard it, that's when I was just kind of like, oh, did I hear something? Remember I even told you earlier, I had the couple of times before I even thought that that would be of a concern. So when you thought you heard something, what happened there? So I, I don't remember if it was one or two times or whatever that I kind of was like doing this here mm -hmm. and I back and forth. And that's when I told you that I, you know, started to walk down the stairs. And I told you that Dana was on to the right of the area. Okay. Like when you walk down the stairs, he was on the right of the area. Okay. And the guy was over here. Okay. And was he just, was the guy just out or? No, the, the, the noise was probably because of like moving around, I guess, or, or whatever. And the door was like almost not, not, not necessarily like a semi-crack, but well, maybe a little semi-crack. I don't know if he was looking out, like, like peeking out or anything like that. And so I noticed that someone was right there. And that's when immediately it was just, there, there was no, it wasn't like, hey, how are you? It was. If someone's in your home, they're not there to, when they're not supposed to be doing whatever, they're not there to, to like, talk to you. It was immediate from then on. That it went to that, and Gana came in, okay. tried to get on. So let's, well. let's, slow, let's slow all that part down. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you go downstairs, you notice somebody is there. What's the, what's the next thing that happened? So I noticed that he was there, and he had, I told you, when I went in my room earlier, I, one of the things that I remember triggered, not that it triggered, but, I thought it was odd, but I had my shades, and I remember I told you my uh, doors were open to the cabinet in the room. Okay. So I noticed um, that they were open, so that kind of, in my mind was like, did I leave that open? But that also set off the fact of when your brain runs rapidly and you're looking, you're like, gosh, that's why that door was open. Okay. That, that, so like you put it together. Right, right, right. You put, I put it together very, very quickly. And so that part ran back in my mind. And so immediately when he saw that, he, like he saw me, mm -hmm. I don't know if, it, if the intentions was to 
us to come in that soon. I don't know the intention if it was to do anything because I don't think the intentions was going to be like take anything from us because it was a, he he already had them gloves. He already had the had a, had obtained a gun from our home, but had already you know done those things, and immediately it was in attack mode for me. Okay. And from there, and, and oh, I didn't mention to you, I did go in the um, cabinet because I take a lorazepam for okay. uh, anxiety, mm -hmm. and I was like already super anxiety from like having all this, you know, like going on and stuff with the like fire and stuff like that. So I took two lorazepam. So, so I did go in and take two two lorazepams and blah blah yada yada. And that was in the cabinet, the lorazepam, or was that somewhere else? Like in the kitchen. No, you said that you went in. Where was I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like in the kitchen, we have a kitchen cabinet. I have to say that to you. Okay. The cabinet that I'm talking about, that the doors are, is a bedroom um, cabinet. I say cabinet. It's like a armoire, like a like a small one has doors that open. Okay. I, I should specify cabinet, cabinet thing or something. Right. The bedroom one, the the kitchen one would be where the medication. Right, 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 right. So I did take. That's why I said I think I might have got some drink or something, but I did take two of those. Okay. And so that I did do that, and then I did come down. Okay. So just so we're clear, the kitchen cabinet was where your medication was. Describe for me the armoire in the bedroom where the shades and your gun was. So you want to know like what's in it or like what? What does it look like? What so, color is it? Sorry. So it's uh, silver, mm -hmm. uh, like a almost like a chromish color with like glass. Okay. And um, uh, it does have handles, like a little knob that you can. Uh, pull on or what it, like pull open mm -hmm. and then of course they have like I keep my important documents in there like a passport or does know, it have drawers or anything no, no drawers okay it has the insert like shelf the, yeah the shelf okay perfect and where is where does that fit in your bedroom if you walk in the room like say I'm like opening the door walking in the room it's exactly right here okay and is it like does it sit on something or does it have its own feet it has it on feet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're talking yeah, about it. Yeah, it has it on feet. Okay. Yeah, and like if I had to do like a, I don't know what, samples or whatever, I I just wanted to tell you about the medicine because I didn't want you to be like, oh. But I mean, it's prescribed to me anyway. So. Yeah, true. That's not Yeah, true. and I had already taken one that morning too. So it was, I was just, I don't have to take a panic attack, but I just had taken a lot, a lot I don't say a lot of it. I thought that, but I'd taken, yeah, I don't take any at all unless I'm having a panic attack. And I had it was a little bit more than usual. Right, 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 right. Just because it was just, you know, like, okay. the whole anxiety of it. So, so you go downstairs, mm -hmm. and you see him, and you said that he had already found a gun. It, he had already been in the home, mm -hmm. like, in our home, um, like, moving, like, I say moving, like, doing something. Because you wouldn't have just walked in and known, hey, there's something here. You had to go in and most people would probably look through drawers and things like that. I don't know. I'm not making that assumption. That's what I mean. I'm just saying he had already obtained one. So okay. I'm kind of like, I don't, I can't speak for what, you know, like what went on or, or I anything. Just love sure. Okay. What, um, can you describe the gun for me? Um, so it was our black gun. Black gun. I, I don't know what, um, what make and model, like what the brand was or whatever. Um, okay. Uh, was it do you know whether it was like a revolver or like a like a no, pistol automatic, or automatic automatic automatic? Yeah, like a these pump trigger. Okay. And is that like um? And you do you know the caliber? Maybe. I think the three three eighty maybe three eighty or nine one of those. Okay. So you said it was your black gun. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many? How many guns do you guys have? Um, four. Four? Okay. What kind are they? Um, I don't know the big one that Albert has. It's kind of like an AR something. Okay. Um, and then there's the shotgun. And so, two, I, I think they're both 238. 380? Yeah, like I think, like, the, like I think it's like a 380. Like, a mm -hmm. Sure. They're both 380s. Okay. Um, and are they both black or, like, sometimes they have, like, the colorful ones? Yeah, right? mine's, uh, like, a teal color. Okay. Do so you have a black one and a teal one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. I just wanted to cover that really quick. Okay. So you go downstairs. You've already obtained a gun. You think it's your black gun. Well, no, I don't think. I, I saw you were colored black. Okay. Um, so I was assuming where I told you that my mind went through that that was, like, it was our, our black gun. Right. Now, at that time, I wasn't 100% if it was or not because mm -hmm. I, the black, there was plenty of black gun. Sure. So tell me what happens next. So do you want me to go through the whole, like, assault again? Well, we need to we need to know like more specifics about it. So you said you saw him and that he had the gun and then he attacked you. How did he attack you? This is fine. We're still five clicks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take a recess until uh, three fifteen. Again, don't discuss the case among yourself. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Don't do any research about any aspect of the case. Um, with that, if we can have everyone back in the jury room at 3.15, we'll be able to go ahead and I'll rise for the jury, please. Uh, thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the court hearing. That's like that's about right. Okay. No, I I because I know there's another video that's I don't think it'll probably be mid morning Friday. Where they get to me, so I'm sure we're going to finish this one today. Yeah, we may. We may not. Th there will be some empty time, I think, in the in the room that we'll just push through. But when I mean empty, nobody's in the room. Great. Right. Yeah. But it. But it's not going to be like thirty minutes, right? I can't remember. Honestly, there's a chunk though. Okay. Well, we'll just uh, if we get it finished today, great. If we don't, we'll finish it up on uh, Friday. And my uh, docket tomorrow is virtual. So you can leave everything here. Okay. You don't have to, you don't have to play off tables. You don't have to do anything. Good. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Court of Beans. That's then. All right.
Let's go to the courtroom. We're ready to bring the jury back in. Yes, Judge. All right. Let's go ahead and bring them. All right, for the jury, please. Thank you, ma'am. I'll be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 versus Letitia Stout. When we took our break, we were introduced for the video uh, interview of the defendant. That's where we will resume. Prosecution? <clears throat> Hey, did you work with like a big thing and stuff before? Mm -hmm. but. Hard to tell someone about me, but like touching me. Sure, I get that. I just, I just need to like not, not a little bit of that right now. Can I get a little bit? Like you want to take a, take a break? Or? I, I, I just, you wanted me to give you like play by play basically of an assault is very hard for you to ask him to do. Okay. That's not like me explaining how to play a game. That's very difficult to explain what you remember. Well, and we can take it slowly, and, and, and you can tell me what you remember, what happened, and stuff like that. You know, I want to make sure that you're okay, and I want to try and find Gannon, right? Right. Okay, so the more details that I have, the better it is that I'm going to be able to try and help you and to try and help Gannon, okay? Well, me telling you about an assault on me is... You're not going to get, like, a faster result unless they, like, actually put some action into it, you know? What like, do you mean? Like, I don't know, like, action, is, is, it, is it too late to, like, check your body? I mean, is it... No, no, it's not. Like, those type of things, is that... It's, like, it's not too late at all, actually. No, it's not. And if you want to do that, we can actually absolutely get that set up so that we can make that happen. So it's it's definitely not too late. Is it like a private like area or like how does that work? So um, what it's it's called a stain exam, and they're done by uh, forensic nurses. Okay. At the hospital. Okay. So okay. it's like in a in an actual. You yep. wouldn't know that's what you're there for. No. And so I mean, well, obviously the nurses would, right. but not like just whoever else is in the hospital. Right. now. And so um, because it is like a. Um, 
because it's a forensic thing and because it's part of a criminal case, you know, obviously this person who assaulted you, you know, so that we could gather evidence to, mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, when we find them that we can prosecute them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We would want to take you over there to the hospital and we get the forensic nurse to come and talk to you. Okay. And then um, they have paperwork to go over with you, just like any other kind of, like, bureaucracy or anything else like that, okay. right? Um, and they get your permission to gather that evidence from you and to do an exam. Okay. okay. And then, and they're all female, all the nurses. Okay. So, um, and, you know, they have their process that they go through and they collect all that evidence and then that's turned over to us. Okay. So, it, it's not too late at all to okay. do that. So, that was my... But we need to know what happened because just like if, you know, like, and this is just like a totally off the wall example, but like if your kid comes in and tells you, yeah. hey, mommy, I'm, I'm hurt because yeah. I fell down. Well, you need to know where they fell and how they fell and whatnot so you can help them. But that's the easy uh Right, easy thing, but when you're doing several different things in your brain and not to mention you're being violated physically, mm -hmm. it's hard to give that specific, you know, details. I remember the pushing me in the room. I remember having my head hit. I remember those things. Sure. And, and what I'd like to... I remember my clothes getting taken off. Okay. Okay. But I don't want to be telling this got taken off. I don't want to be on that. And that's not what it I is. I would tell that to, like, a nurse, you know, in the specifics, so that that could assist in the process. But I, maybe I would. I say I would, but I don't know. It, it's just a hard, the hard thing to be like, okay, your pants are tight. You remember this, you remember that, like that. Sure. And, and really, we just, we need to know, like, the narrative of it. And there will be some stuff that I would ask specifics of. And if you remember, you remember. And if you don't, you don't. Or what you can say is, you know, well, I remember that, but I don't want to say. No, I'm not trying to not tell you anything. I mean, it's just a hard process. I, I guess maybe I'm thinking you're asking me too much details. Maybe I'm overthinking what you're asking me. So do you want me to, like, like I said, do a play by play of what I remember? Like, as far as, like, what, moving? Like, well, just start at the beginning and tell me what happened. Okay? So, all right. Um, so, when he pushed me into the room, okay. I remember, like, the like a battle process of, like, you know, like, back and forth, uh, you know, like, that type of thing. I, I remember that type of thing. Tell me more about that, the battle back and forth. Well, if someone, uh, he's not much bigger than me, so mm -hmm. it's not like it was this big, powerful person that, I, I mean, I feel like I'm... I'm fairly kind of a little strong. Um, so it wasn't a just here, get on the ground. It was, a, you know, like a getting, like, move around the room. Uh, I don't I don't really remember, like, which direction. Sure. I After I hit my head the first time, that's when it started to be the, a little blur into, okay. into what was happening then. Okay. So. And remind me, what was it that you remember hitting your head on that first time? I think I want to say it was that red and black table. I'm sorry, red and blue table that was in Gannon. Red and blue table? I feel like it was the red and blue table that was in Gannon's room because I remember, like, going back and hit my head. Okay. Okay. And what? And you, you keep motioning back here. Did yeah, you like the back of your head? Right, yeah. So, like, it was in, like, well, there was a couple, of, like, the ground was a, was a big force. But I was also fighting back, so I don't want you to think that it would have been some sort of, and I did, I did have, like, oh, I, I was going to, like, show you that I did have the bullet in there a little bit because from the little, little scratch. But I did have um, the ability to, to push back some because he wasn't, like, overpowering that. It was just, like, here, here you go. And sure. That sounds awful to say, but, okay. So when you got pushed into the room, where, and you got pushed, like, you guys are doing this battle back and forth, and you hit your head, did you end up on the ground first? I don't remember. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't. I just remember hitting my head, and and I remember the next time I hit my head, and the second time that it, 
he came back after me and tried again. So there was a couple of times that I kind of was in and out of it. And so what, not to mention I had taken lorazepam, a little extra than usual. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, a little bit, I don't know how to say, like, how I did not, not I'm not bad, but it was sure. kind of like being, like, zoned out a little bit. Sure. Um, it was almost like I was at, like, blacked out. Okay. Because it, it was one of those things where I could, like, hear what was going on, but I kind of, but I didn't, like, know what was going on or vice versa. What do you remember feeling? There was not, like, like pain as far as, like, your, your, your female part. I okay. feel like your, the pain was on the struggle of, like, your body was tired. Okay. So, like, it's tired in trying to, like, your brain's telling you don't get in, but your body is just in, in a tired mode. Okay. And, and that was, was more of, like, an I just almost, it's almost like I, I was giving up, but, but I wasn't, you know, like, once, once we were, you know, I, I can't, I can't talk about Um, so do you, are you saying like once he, did he penetrate you? I, I remember my clothes coming off. Not my top part. Okay. I remember the bottom part, and I don't remember if this was the first time or on the second time, which wasn't a successful time. Um, I remember my clothes coming off like on the bottom, and I remember having my top on. Okay. And I remember I was pushing, like, like, like pushing back. Sure. And then I, like, out of my mind, I, it was almost like a little blur because I hit the head again. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, you're like trying to push up, like the push on your off and you get pushed back down and hit, hit your head. Okay. And then it's kind of let it. Like, I'm not going to, here's the thing is that this, this conversation like, what we talk about is not, I'm not going to run and talk to your husband about or her, his ex-wife or, or right. anything else like that. Okay. I, I don't just, I don't want to give in because I wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't agree to it, but I, at that point, it feels like I, I did give in. Okay. And, um, thank you for telling me that. I appreciate that. Um. When you say that you gave in and that he completed it, do you, I don't, I don't remember about, when I say completed, I mean as in, I was able to like, to like, have that bolt of energy to like, get up again, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't know if there was like completed, I don't, and I don't, I can't, I'm not wanting to think about that, that that's good. So I'm not asking if he, like, ejaculated or anything else like that. <laughs> that, that wasn't my question. I'm sorry. That's what I thought. So my question is, did he put his penis in your vagina? Right, yes. Okay. Do you know... Okay. Sorry, that question. Um, and that was when you were on the ground? Okay. And you said that he was pushing you down. What part of your body was being pushed down? I don't remember. Okay, so you said that like you kind of like came back up at some then... point. I I don't I don't remember. Okay, I I, I'm, I don't want to give you wrong information about step by step about my body being violated. I don't think that's fair. Like I don't think that. Because then every time I have to keep saying to you like, and it's happening. I have to say that to you again. I have to say that to you again. Difficult. Okay. Was there anywhere else that you were penetrated? No. You mean like an area? 
Yeah, anywhere else on your body. Like the penis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, and then at some point it ended. Okay. Um, what happened next after it ended? So, oh, but it didn't end at that direct moment because remember Gannon comes in. Okay, like, tell me about that. Gannon comes in to like jump on him. Okay. Like, to, to like kind of help me out. Okay. And so I don't remember anything but like laying back and I remember that I could like hear that Gannon had came in. Okay. I could hear that he knew this is not what you're supposed to do. That Gannon did? Yeah, like Gannon was aware that someone was, was trying to harm me. Okay. He might not have understood the complete in essence of it, but he understood someone was in a home and wasn't so close to ignore what he was doing. Okay. Right? Okay. I mean, our home is, we're very open. We're always like, we talk about like, oh, you don't have a girlfriend, you don't do this until you're married. So, okay. So he's very aware of, you know, like that's not how things happen. Sure. Um, in the kid's mind. So he came in okay. at that point in time. And then I do remember that Gannon was, like, I don't remember, I don't want to say thrown, but, like, he can't jump on a big guy. Uh, that's a big guy to him. Mm -hmm. You know, five, six, seven, eight-ish mm -hmm. is a big guy to him. Sure. Because you know, he's full of something. And I don't remember from there. I just remember that Gannon tried to jump on him, and I remember Gannon was over here at this point in time, and then it was just, it was just kind of like a blur about what happened, but I do remember after it. And when I say finish, I don't mean what you're asking me about exactly. And I do remember when that was, like, getting up, mm -hmm. that it was a, you know, situation. So, when so he, that was when he had the gun again and afterwards, not necessarily at him, but had a, had the gun and had Gannon. Okay. Can you tell me more about that? So he, I don't, I, I just know that in, in, in the way he had him was kind of not necessarily at, like, a, like a here, if I had like a zone, let me show you. It was more of like a... Do you need Okay. It was more of like a... More of like a this wrapped around. But like Gannon didn't... Was he recognizing like the gun? He wasn't trying to at that point fight. Like okay. fight back to him. Okay. He was just crying like to me, like to help him. Okay. And so that's why I made the decision to try to send the other the other kids somewhere else because what if I would have ran for help okay. at that point in time? I had every opportunity to run for help then. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a good enough shooter to like or really don't I'm, to like run go feel like I'm gonna shoot somebody, you know, because I don't what else are we gonna do? You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So I'm just not my mind wasn't thinking that of trying to create harm if I made a dumb decision. Okay. And and that was probably where I should have done some sneaky technique of I thought about it after. I should have like gave Lena a letter, you know, or, or stuff like that and said, Hey, go to the mailbox, take the neighbor's letter. Like this is something I thought about after. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think about it at the time. Okay. Like in the so time frame. So when you were on the ground and, and Gannon came in, what do you remember hearing? Him yelling. What was he yelling? Like he was yelling my name, like directly specifically at me, as in like... Gannon was? Yeah. Like, what does he call you? He goes, well, I just remember I told you about my name thing. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah. so he was saying Tesha. Tesha? He was like saying, are you okay? Okay. And then that's when he realized that wasn't. Like, not that I wasn't, but he realized that was kind of like in and out of it. And what were you saying? I was, like, immediately, like, doing, the first part was, doing the first time was doing the pushback, like, get off of me, get off of me. So I wasn't, said that. but I wasn't communicating with Gannon. Okay. Like, I wasn't saying, Gannon, go, you know, do this specifically, or, like, I didn't say, like, run, go, do it. I didn't say anything directly that I recall. Okay. Now, maybe I did, but I, that I recall wasn't, specific direction, you know, to, 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 to guide him in any direction that was more of like a, like a battle, like, like a back and forth thing instead of being. But, I, and that, but at that point, I do remember like 
when I was down and I, you kind of get like that little concrete where your head jars back a little bit, where your uh, head jars back a little bit, um, kind of made me a little like dizzy a little bit. And was the man saying anything? I don't remember anything but noises. What kind of noises do you remember? I, I, I can't guess. That's, that's the thing, right? So, like, I can't put words in your mouth. I can't guess. So I know, like, Like, I'm sorry, pleasure noises? Yeah, I don't know how to describe it, like pleasure noises, but like, oh, okay. And so he's making pleasure noises, and then Gannon comes in and yells your name. What does the I mean, man I don't remember if they just came and yelled my name or if he jumped first, but... Okay. What does the man do? I just... It was more of like a this, but he was... You know, inside of me. Okay. Kind of. I say kind of, but like, he's moving. Okay. So obviously, he's got to put more... More like... got to put more like force on your body. Okay. And that, that's just when I just started to cry. Because it was like a given up, like a, kind of like a given up type moment. I'm sorry that you are upset by that. And it was just, because what, I mean, what are you supposed to do at that point? Sure. You can keep trying to fight. But they already taken something from you that you only have personally with yourself. Sure. Do you remember um, Gannon saying anything else other than your name? I know he was calling help at some point, and I think that would have been when he had. I don't remember. Oh gosh. I don't remember like any um, anything other than oh he, I, I think I feel like I remember the second I don't remember around the second the second time of the battle he was saying get off of her okay but I don't I'm telling you when I tell you that and I hope to God that you are never in that situation but it's just a, it's just almost like a blur because you're so disappointed in your like. Uh, Emotional feel like your self worth. Sure. And, and how you feel about yourself. Sure. You feel like you're nothing. What did you smell when this was happening? I definitely, I was going to say that to you. I forgot to, like, earlier. And again, you didn't ask me that because I wouldn't think about I could smell like a, like a very uh, um, strong, like, um, paint or like a, Almost like a, a paint, like someone had been painting, or like they were around a house that might have had um, the drywall. Almost like it was like a work, like a work smell. Like you do, you're doing this, like the drywall. Are you talking about like paint or like the texture smell? Yeah, or? like the powder of the drywall. You know how like you sand, mm -hmm. sure, has like that that smell. Mm -hmm. Like I could smell like that part on them, but I feel like at one point I thought I smelled alcohol. Okay. And um, you said that your ex, Harley's dad, did drywall. So the drywall smell is something that you would be familiar with? Um, he did what he did it a while, like a while ago. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but I you know, like, in our home and things like that, I'm pretty, I don't want to say, like, know a lot about drywall, but just from being around the work sites growing up, I think well, with him, I was young when I was with him. I remember a lot about, you know, like drywall in general. So, sure. Um, I don't know if it's specifically drywall. It's more of like a, like a sandpaper-ish smell. Okay. Like, uh, Did you smell anything else? You said you smelled alcohol. I, at one point, I remember smelling like a, not like a, a deep, strong alcohol smell, but I could, um, have like a sense of alcohol 
like like a like a breath of it. Um, sure. Sure. Come up like like aroma. Okay. And it kind of was like a. I don't know. Like almost like a fetish, like a fossil type smell. I remember at one point. Okay. Okay. If you kind of like you walk into a restaurant and I got some fresh tomatoes and that. Okay. Um, what do you remember feeling on your back? Just a couple of days um, before this, I have been having like a lot of uh, lower back pain like already. Mm -hmm. So it took that like pain away and it was almost like it was just like, because I'm getting pushed back, but I'm straining. Mm -hmm. so it was almost like a like I felt a little bit of nerve, but I didn't feel it. Like I I didn't have any. Hey, there's the back pain. Oh, back to this. It wasn't like that. I I knew that there was nerve being shifted or you know changed in some direction. Okay. Uh, then it, it was lower. Kind of on the floor. And just remind me, um, you went upstairs and told Lena to go away, basically, to keep her safe. And then you came back down, and that was when he had Gannon, or he had Gannon before you did that? You mean? Like when you said that he had his arm wrapped around? Right. So once he had him, once I came back, because, so after, so once I came, once he, once I got up and, and whatever, there was the ring. You know, I told you about the motion and thing. So he grabbed him then. He had him still when I came down, but. You grabbed the, him then? Right. None of the ring is what triggered, because there was the first ring that wasn't, um, there wasn't anybody on the ring. Or, there was no one there. Because um, I think I went up and down, up and down. Or maybe, I don't remember if I went up one time and down or up one time twice. I, I don't remember okay. exactly, but I remember there was two alert sure. um, or two uh, triggers um, to, to, to the door. Okay. You know, and, and I was like, yeah, so two triggers. I feel, maybe it was two times because the first time there was nobody there. Okay. There, there was no, it must have, something must have said it all, said it all. Yeah, so, and then there was this, Lena was the next, um, the next trigger. Okay. So I, but I knew the next one was Lena. Okay. Because I knew the timing was perfect, and you can hear from our house when the bus hits its brakes. Okay. So, I didn't have to go look at an app or anything with that, because I knew that, you know, the timing was just the same as normal. You know, that you can hear this, is right there, you can hear, you know, kids are on the way, like that type of thing, and sure. I knew it was Lena, and that was my first thing to, I open up, I let Lena in, you know, I had a conversation with her, just like it was a normal, a normal day, but then that's why, because I didn't want to be like, here, go, I, I did quickly say, here, go, whatever, but I wanted to not just open the door, like, here, go right now. Okay. I had to at least make a 30 second, one minute, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm exaggerating one minute, but 30 second dialogue okay. um, of here, I need you to go get the mail. Okay. Or here, go, you know, daddy said go like your bike. Or, sure. You know, that type of Because later on, you know, she would, I knew she was going to have to eat snack at some point. Mm -hmm. And I figured just that later on she was eating. I figured out another time she eat snack. I was worried about getting her like, out, and, out and about that time. Um, when the... I'm sorry, I, I should have given her a note. I should have, I should have given her a note. We, we don't, you know, we don't need to go into, like, what you should have done or shouldn't have done or anything else like that, you know. Um, things are, are never perfect, and we can, we can beat ourselves up for a hundred yeah. years about things we should have done. Right. Right? Okay, so that's, that's not... I'm not here to judge you or, or anything else like that. I'm here to understand what happened right. and try and gather as much as we can so that we can help you and we can help find Gannon. Okay. Um, when when the attack was going on downstairs, did you said you got hit, your head got hit a couple of times. Were you hit anywhere else? I don't know. Yeah, you, are you asking about the like a punch or like? I mean, yeah. Were you? Were you? Kind of I, I, lap kick. I don't remember. I don't remember being hit anywhere else. 
Okay. Do you have any injuries? I don't have, like, uh, any specific injuries here because I was grabbing like this, like, okay. like pushing up. Most of it was just, like, head, I don't say trauma, but head force on, on, on my head and then the nerve in my, maybe thigh for that part. Okay. Um, and then, like, and then I did, like, have, like, a little, like, this, that little, like, right there was, like, bleeding. Okay. And then my nails, um, I know they look crazy now, but um, they were, and then, of course, that was the third mark, so that was the, you know, so my nails were like that because when I get nervous, you know, like, I, I got the nose or whatever, mm -hmm. so, but that would have been from, from me. Okay. Yeah. So, you go upstairs, tell Lena to go, and then you go back downstairs, right. and he still has Gannon. What happens next? So, he, okay. he still has Gannon. Hold on. Okay. Can I, like, be, can I try to re? Yeah, do what you need to do. So, like, he was the first time my body, and then he has Gannon. And I don't want to make sure he's not hurt, so I go there come back down. Oh, that's when he was asking, or he wasn't asking me, he was demanding uh, different things. You know, he was demanding, like, the, I, my, I probably didn't tell you that earlier, but I do remember that now. Okay. He was, like, demanding things from me. He was demanding me that I was not to say anything, that there would be consequences. He didn't say the word, there were consequences, but it was in a, a louder tone of direction of saying. What, what exactly did he say? I, I don't remember exactly. I just remember there was some sort of, you, you got to make sure you don't tell anyone at the door, you know, and I had common sense enough to know if he had Gannon and had the gun, that I'm not going to sure make a stupid decision. So coming back down, um, at that point in time, I remember being like, what, like, I don't remember if I was necessarily pleading or asking, you know, saying help. Um, I didn't have a weapon. I couldn't just go grab and hurt him. So somehow, I don't remember exactly what, we end up being in it again. Like okay. being in a commotion again. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the second time that he was attempting um, to try. And that's when I kind of went completely a blackout. And I don't remember, you know. What I, oh, yeah, I remember I, I told you he was demanding uh, different things. Mm -hmm. And I gave him a brown suitcase. Um, I gave him uh, a box that was in the room. Um, he asked me, he asked, he demanded the brown suitcase. Oh, he didn't demand the brown one. He demanded a suitcase. And I just gave him. The brown suitcase. Okay. And in my mind, I didn't, you know, I didn't know. Can you describe the suitcase for me? I, I don't remember. I just remember. There was, we have like 10. Okay. I just remember the brown. Is it like a, is like it a check bag, a carry-on bag? Yeah, maybe like, oh, I like 27 inches, maybe. Okay. So like, it's you know, like, like one you would check, not one you no, would carry on. No, you can't check 27. You can only check 20, 21. So, so check is the ones that like you you give to them. Right. That it, it can't be over twenty one. Um, or thinner or whatever can't be over twenty. It has to be over twenty one. It doesn't have to be over twenty one check, but if it's over twenty one, it can't be a carry. Right. So the bigger like, so a lot bigger one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like, I say about twenty seven. Okay. Um, inches or, or inches or whatever. And I thought he was gonna put things in our home and like okay. take all of our stuff and like our you know, anything that needed I was already gonna like take the gun. What did he do with it? And take, you know, like I, I don't know. I provided what he asked for mm -hmm. or demanded and then we got into it again because we were there was there was yelling and I don't remember what we were yelling about but mm -hmm. it was it was just anything I could do. If I give you this, if I give you this, take everything. Mm -hmm. And we just, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and. Okay. And you said that he wanted a box? Yeah, he, um, that was one of the things that I, I'm trying to remember, other than, um, 
And I, that's why I said I thought he was going to attack her, like, whatever there was in her home. Because originally, I didn't think that he was in our home to take. Remember, I told you I didn't think he was in our home to take something because uh, he was done. done. But at that point, I thought he was going to, like, like, clean us out with, or, or I say clean us out, take whatever he could. Like, steal things. Yeah, like, steal things from us because you can, uh, if you're in Lorson Ranch and you're like, oh, I'm going to the airport, but it doesn't look like you're walking out the front door with a TV. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that was my mindset of like. Oh, so you think that he was going to, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like what you're telling me is you thought he was going to take stuff from your house and put it in the suitcase in the box. And right. Make it looked like he was going to the airport. Yeah. Like not like to, he was stealing. Yeah. Stuff yeah. I don't, and I don't want to say specifically the airport, but like it looked like. So oh, it, travel. Yeah. So like in my mind, I'm just thinking. He's about to clean this out, but I don't really care. Take everything sure. that he wants to take. That was, like, in my mindset. And then I remember there was, like, talking or yelling or... I don't remember how we got to part, you know, the, the second part, but I remember he he wasn't able to, you know. And, of course, when, between all that, I mean, there was, I wasn't running around naked. I had to put my pants back on. Sure. I know, and that was a awful feeling, like, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, I just ran upstairs, and I had to, you know, like, put myself back together. What do you mean by put yourself back like, together? Like, my, my pants, like, okay. I couldn't, I, if I would have showed up at the front door, or whatever, with, you know, Lena or anyone, I mean, I do, like, walk around in, like, short shorts and all that, but I'm saying, like, it would have been... And, and like you say, we're not going to go on what I should have done, but it could have put off alarm to this is this is what you need or, or whatever, whatever. But um, if, this is my daughter. Is it okay if I just let her? Uncle wants me. Okay. Um, do you remember, um, so can you, can you describe the box for me? Just a brown box? Is it like a cardboard box? Yeah, like a wooden box? Yeah, like, it like a metal, like, did it have stuff in it? Yeah. No, no, like, there was nothing in it, but it was just a regular, like, shipping box. Like, I, okay. that's why, I mean, that makes common sense of, I'm putting stuff in there, and, but he, he could have, easily have gotten that himself, but he would have had to have let him again and go, but that, you know, that was his way to have control of the situation. Sure. And where was, where was that box at before you got it? In the, like, in our storage room? Okay. Yeah. And is that where the suitcase was as well, yeah. or? Yeah, I got the suitcase and I had the box, and, and I was saying things, because I did think he was going to rob us, like, I say, like, take all of our stuff, and. I started out with being like, upset about being robbed, but then it was like, take anything you want. Mm -hmm. That sounds really scary. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Because in my mind, I'm like, but but I knew if I'm given into the situation, then I can get what, you know, like what I would put the result out of it, which would have been that every, everybody would have been safe. And he's going to get what he wants. And your intention was to call someone that he wanted to take advantage of. So you give him the stuff. There's another altercation. And you said he couldn't. And you kind of trailed off. Yeah, like he couldn't. He couldn't at that point in time, like, like take my pants back off. Was it okay? Like the first time. Okay. Because, it was, because I was more of in a... I'm like lackadaisical uh, thing at that point because once we were like when I hit my head this, the next time on the thing I think that hit some sort of spot that I just I don't really remember after that like, where was Gannon when that I, I don't really remember after that that's, that's where that's where it kind of was um, everything from then is a blur and so it was me telling you that was like what do you mean you don't know what happened after that? And no one's going to, you know, understand that unless they're there in that moment that I don't remember. That's not what I'm saying at all. 
I have to ask the questions, right? Because if I don't ask the questions, then somebody later is going to be like, well, what happened? What happened next? Where was he? And right. I can't say, well, I didn't ask, right? right? Like, I have to ask the question. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wasn't, yeah. I was just saying, yeah. like, in general, not specifically. Right. So if I ask the question, I'm not trying to, like, make you feel bad or anything else like that. I'm just trying to understand and make sure that we cover everything. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so you say that um, you hit your head again. You kind of don't know what happened next. Do you remember, or I guess, can you tell me how this ended? I just remember, like, being out of it, but I could also, like, in my mind, like, I could hear, you know, like, loud, like, loud uh, banging, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I don't remember, I couldn't see, you know, like, what was going on or, or anything like that. I just... It's like I could hear a little bit of a struggle, but I don't, I don't know what was going on. Okay. And that, for me, is hard because I need to know, like, and I hope that, I, it's like, dreams, I'm like, maybe I'll dream and remember what was going on, or maybe I'll have, like, a recollection, recollection, recollection later of, maybe, oh, yeah, I remember this, but I clearly have been pounding my, 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 my brain to, to, to put it, give it to you about, like, exactly what was happening. Sure. At, at that, sure. at that point in time. What, what's the first thing you remember after the second incident, after the attack, the second attack? I just remember being like, where's Gannon? And I was freaking out because I didn't know where he was at. Okay. And... I didn't see anything that would have told me, and I thought he was hiding. Okay. Like I, I thought maybe he was in the closet or, you know, somewhere hiding so that he knew, you know, like, he would be okay, like, away or, wh or whatever. I thought he was hiding. Okay. What, do you, what was the first thing you did after this happened? I was calling his name because I did think he was hiding. Okay. And at that point in time, once I realized that he wasn't hiding, I went into that mode of like, okay, I'm fixed this. Help me understand how you understood that he wasn't hiding. Well, because if I am saying to him that everything, that I assumed that everything was I didn't see the guy in my, like, sight. No. I'm assuming that he was hiding, you know, like, in, in my mind. So, like, I didn't see the guy, so I'm assuming he's hiding, so then I'm asking him, you know, like, Gannon, where are you, Gannon? I'm assuming he's hiding, so then I'm asking him, you know, like, Gannon, where are you, Gannon? Oh, so maybe he was in the closet or, you know, somewhere hiding so that he knew, you know, like, he would be okay, like away or, wh or whatever. I thought he was hiding. Okay. What do you? What was the first thing you did after this happened? So you, I was calling his name because I did think he was hiding. Okay. And at that point in time, once I realized that he wasn't hiding, I went into that mode of like, okay, I'm fixed. Help me understand how you understood that he wasn't hiding. Well, because if I am saying to him that everything, that I assumed that everything was, I didn't see the guy in my, like, sight, I'm assuming that he was hiding, you know, like, in, in my mind. So, like, I didn't see the guy, so I'm assuming he's hiding, so then I'm asking him, you know, like, Gannon, where are you, Gannon, where are you? Okay. So then I realized Gannon would come out, uh, or, again, I can't say we do different things in different times, but if Gannon was thought it was safe, he'd come out. So then, in my mind, to be honest with you, when I said I'm going to fix this, I thought Gannon was still hiding. So when the detective, like, um, searched the home, I really was hoping that that was, that's what was going to happen, and he had been scared to come out because he didn't know if it was safe. Or maybe if he was, like, you know, had hit his head or, or something after I, what I don't remember, 
he could have been, you know, hiding and maybe he got, I don't know. I don't want to make assumption of how he could have not, maybe not been aware, aware alert. My think, my thought process was when the guy said he was going to, sure. so the house that I was going to find him, like, we'd find him, that's when it really set in that, but I didn't know where he was at. Has Gannon ever hid in the house before? Um, not that I'm aware of. I mean, they play little, like, back and forth of, like, you know, like, hide behind the sofa or, like, boom. But it's only, like, you know, a little bit of time. Um, but in a certain, but we don't have, like, a violence of, you know, and seeing another, another man hurting someone. So I, I, I would think in that moment he would have been hiding. Okay. But he wasn't, you know, prone to be like, I'm going to hide out. But his personality is very, um, in, like, actually getting along with people and, and that type of thing. So, yeah, I didn't think that um, somebody who talked to the school and, like, they said that, that he was pretty laid back and right. you know, quiet. Right. And that would have been, you know, my thought. Again, Dana you know, was on his medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a different, um, his, his, the way he acts is differently than when he isn't. Sure. So he would be a more hyper, you know, so that's why I would have expected, you know, that he would have, he would have come right out. But then, cause on the medicine, he'd been more like zoned out, we try to make decisions, um, correctly, because he would have been, he just like that when he takes it, Get it so he can't do any sport like he has about okay. like any reading off ever. So my mind was thinking he didn't take his medicine, you know. So what's his behavior like when he doesn't take his medicine? Um, it's not bad. Like it used to be where you couldn't get him to focus on anything. Mm-hmm. Like if he went to church, he could not sit in church without electronics. And I know that might have been a little bit willful, but um, it was. He needed something to have that attention for the ADHD. He needed something to have that on. Um, so without a medicine, he could, and like on, like on the hike, he might run way up there and then we take up, you know, because like that much energy. Okay. And is that what it was like on Sunday? You mean at the hike? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like he had the, bo- the burst of energy, but then his stomach was, when his stomach got hurt, I mean, he didn't see him. That's when he took more of the, he was able to control it because he was focusing on his obsessions on cleaning his body. Because okay. I mean, imagine like walking around. Sure. That would be uncomfortable for right? right. pretty much anybody, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened to the gun? So, okay, so the gun, this is how I knew, I didn't know in the time at the Dillard Dark. I didn't know. I didn't know in the time ago. I just assumed that it was black colors. The mm-hmm. yeah. So remember, I said that I put the stuff back in the closet. I put everything back the way it was because obviously at that time I was and told them what had happened because I was in that mentality of I'm going to fix it. So I put everything back in the in the position that it was, and he did not take the gun. Where he he couldn't have because the gun was. The gun, when I left it, would have been up there. But I didn't bring it down there. But that was our gun. So that's right. how I knew for a fact that he had to have our gun or either I, he had it in the process of stealing it and somehow it fell and he maybe had another gun. I'm not sure about that part, but I do know that I took, I put it back in it. So where did you find your gun? Correct. My gun or where? Yeah. So it was over and you said you were putting everything back where it belonged. Yes. Yeah. Where was it whenever you found it to put it away? So, like, at the carpet, because the carpet roll piece had, like, fallen off, so it was at the carpet. Okay. And that was, and you said the carpet was kind of, like, leaned against the... Leaned in, but kind of had fell over coming out of that storage area. Right, right. So, it was, like, I, I want to say it was in, like, pieces. I want to say it was The in, carpet or the gun? No, no, no. I want to say that the carpet had, like, not necessarily multiple pieces, but I remember, like, Maybe, di- maybe different directions. I don't remember, but I feel like I saw different directions. Okay. But, yeah, I had, fall- I had fallen over, but the gun was there. I didn't see where Gannon was at. That's why I assumed in the situation that he was hiding. 
Okay. I didn't think that there was a concern, you know, at the time okay. that, you know. Okay. Um, describe for me what Gannon's room looks like after this happened. I just remember putting it, putting things back together. Like, I say back together, but, like, I remember we had, I, like, I had already, like, um, like, straightened out his room from before, because, you know, when he had the, like, brains and stuff, and I do remember Gannon was, I, oh, I, I do remember Gannon was bleeding, and I think from the apple it would have been something with his arm. Okay. But I do remember he was, like, he did have, like, blood and, and stuff like that. I do remember at some point that he was bleeding. I just, I, I want to say, I remember he was on, not just like on me. I feel like at some point in in, in that, and I might have, when the first time he might have, like, landed on me or, or somehow I was, like, holding him. Not necessarily holding him, but I feel like he was there. Okay. Okay. So I had that like a uh, like knew he was here, but yet I was still yeah. taking advantage of. Okay. And so, but but yeah, back to what you said about the ring. So I put like everything, you know, back in its order. You know, I want to say that it might have been the team minutes or 20 minutes, I don't know. It would have had to been, so it probably would have gotten off at 4.30. It might have even been, sorry, it might have even been a little bit longer that I remember being out of it. And the reason why is because just the time frame. Okay. And the, um, um, this all happened on Monday, right? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I had it all right. right. Um, so, you put this stuff back together. You found the gun on the floor next to the carpet mm -hmm. and it's fallen over. Where did you put the gun? I took everything and put it back. When I had to tell, like, Albert, that was the first question that he asked was, like, uh, where are all the guns? Are they all here? Mm -hmm. um, that type of thing. So, I, I put them all back together. Okay. And I don't live in your house, so I don't know where it all back together is. So where are the guns typically stored? Um, either in that shelf that I was telling you about. The silver one? Right. Or okay. in the closet. Okay. And so, so I put the 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 other guns were never like had never been touched until you guys. I haven't touched any of you. Well you're the part. Okay. <laughs> um, so they were already in the closet, but the handguns usually are in different sections, which would be accessible in case of emergency. You don't need the shotguns to be that, you know, that accessible. So I put the, the my handgun was already in its place. Your right. steel one? My, yeah, my, my handgun was already, like, like in its place completely. I mean, I don't know if it was in the exact same location, but my handgun was, was present. Okay, and, where did that? What, and what you just told me. And that, yeah. And and that, yeah. Council uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take about a 10 minute recess. Uh, so if I can have all of you head back to the jury room, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Don't discuss the case among yourself. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Um, with that, I'll rise for the jury, please. Well, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I know it was fun. <laughs> the timing was perfect. It was yeah, but I had, it was doing it for me. <laughs> and then he stood up. So I'm like, oh, there you are. And that was fun. For me, it's a new one. Yeah. It's a new one.
just one minute, I think, for one of the jurors. Let's go ahead and bring the jury back in. I know. So that I know. Our own morals. Could you start it here? Yeah, I'm, sure. yeah I'm sure it's going to take. Is it? I'm sure. Oh, yeah, she's. I'm going to recover it. It's not as bad during the day. On openings, yeah, I did too. Yeah, that was my work. Yeah. I felt awful the night before. I was like, "Are you freaking kidding?" Oh, um, I don't even know. No, nobody's done on the guys. I felt pretty bad. No, I ever. All right, for the jury, please. Yeah, I would have too. Except for it makes you feel kind of screwy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. May all be seated. Court will recall CR one three five eight versus Letitia Stout. Record to reflect the jury is uh, present back in the courtroom. I'm sorry for the interruption, ladies and gentlemen. That was an emergency I had to deal with unrelated to this case. With that, uh, go ahead and start with the board. And then, just as far as timing goes, Judge, do you want us to just play it right up till five, and then about five till five till. Okay. Yeah. So everything's already here. I just put. I say gun. Let me. When I tell you put my gut, put the guns back in a place, there wasn't multiple out in, okay. the, in, in different places. I just want to make sure you know that it was. Sure. It was, I put that gun back with it, its partner gun. Okay. To make sure it was in the same So you put the black man gun into the silver armoire mm -hmm. thing, chest thing, with your teal handgun. Right. In the, in the same chest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And have they been moved since then? Well, Albert took them. Robert took both of them? Mm -hmm. He maybe gives me gives him mine too. Like, you know, when was that? Today. Today? Yeah. So like okay. he took um all of them when you guys I guess they, you guys I'm sorry. When in your department, um I guess they went through my closet or whatever. Okay. Um they still left the guns in, in the closet, but you know, they went in the same place that they were. Sure. And so Albert took all them too because he was like Oh, well, I don't want you to harm yourself and, and things like that. So he was saying those things, and so he took them all and made me give, made me give him mine as well. And that was today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a history of trying to harm yourself? No. Say <laughs> things like, he tried to say something about, like, I'll grab a knife. That's not true. I do not do that. Like, I have never done anything like that in my entire life. Never have seen any kind of counseling for anything uh, prior to anything like that, disturbing, you know, somebody, no, nothing like that. So there would be no, you know, like reason. And right there in the beginning, that, that mental health thing, I've always tried to put a blocker up because I know that, you know, things can, in your life can cause this problem. And I just never, I never did anything like that. Like, I might be like, I was raised in the country, so it might be like a, someone says something, I mean, that's a funny thing, like, you're without, you know, like that type. Sure, sure, yeah. But not anything that would have been, then like, I'm going to cut myself and okay. harm myself. He sure. was, you know, like in his military mode, protection mode. And, well, he cares about you. That's yeah. good, right? He wanted to just take the, take everything away. Okay. He's like, I don't want you to hurt yourself. And I was like, what? Okay. So I just want to kind of like sum up what I think about, or what I kind of know generally about what happened on Monday. Okay. Um, so Albert didn't go to school that day. Or not Albert. Gannon. I apologize. Gannon didn't go to school that day because he was not feeling well and because you guys wanted to get the carpet fixed. Right. You went to the Newville area. Mm -hmm. 
and you met Eduardo. Eduardo. Mm -hmm. Um, and you arranged for him to come over to your house mm -hmm. while you were gone to work on replacing that piece of carpet for you. He did come over to my house while I was going to work on replacing that carpet? Yeah. You gave him the, like, the garage code and stuff so he could come in and... And when she said I was gone when replacing the carpet. Well, he, I was gone shopping while he was... Going to do the okay. carpet. I got you. I thought, I thought you said it. I was making sure that you hadn't twisted the way I said it. And that's exactly right. I want to make sure that yeah. nothing's twisted. Yeah. Okay. So, you were going to go to Petco, do some running. I just sat to go Petco. I sat to go shopping to get dogs some new. Yeah. Just happened to be Petco. Yeah. So, you were going to go do some shopping, and he was going to go fix the carpet. Mm -hmm. You left the house around 10.30-ish, 10, mm -hmm. 10 10.30-ish, and then you go, there's, at some point you got gas, you went to Petco twice. And I, and I think you saw it earlier, but it was actually Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. Coffee? Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts, mm -hmm. maybe? Okay. Um, and then you get home about 2.30, 2, 2.30. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You come in, and... You said you wanted to listen to your music and work out? Yeah, I was in the, and like donut mode, not in the remembering, oh my gosh, it's going to fix up. Okay. And then um, sometime between that 2.30, or after you get home at that 2.30 time frame, you were getting your headphones, putting your headphones on, music, zone out, whatever else, you thought you heard something, you went downstairs, and that was when this attack happened. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, what time does Lena come home from the school bus? It depends. They change the school hours. It could be anywhere between three fifteen and and three thirty. Okay. Depending on So three fifteen, three thirty is the typical time mm -hmm. Lena comes home. You send you don't want her to be in danger, so you send her out to go ride her bike and check the mail. And right. you go back down, another altercation happens. And one of the next thing you remember is that you kind of come to and Gannon is missing. Right. Okay. So, and that, that was probably like around four o'clock. Rough estimate. Oh. Yeah, because it, it would have been, or it could have been 4.30, but it could, but it wouldn't have been after 4.45, five, because, all right, let's see, Hollywood took 30 minutes to get home, so she hadn't. Got home, Lena was still riding the bike or out and about. Yeah, it had to be four ish. Okay. Four fifteen. No later, like I said, than four forty five because that would have been probably would have been already okay. like on her way home. I think I have a pretty good idea. Um I'm 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 pretty sure that was exactly right. Okay. Because I think I told, yeah, because then I sent, then I sent Harley and Lena to, to Daughtry. Yeah. Yeah. So Harley would have a drink later. What is the, um, you have an alarm on your house? Mm -hmm. What company do you use for that? Um, ADT. ADT? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm to write that down. And you have the same, that's the, is the passcode for the ADT stuff the same as like your garage door code and stuff like that? Or? Like. You mean like the login? Like when you go in to disarm the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, it's different because um, the alarm is Gannon's birthday. Gannon's birthday? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to take a break. You need to use the restroom. Um, no, but I really need to. Um, I haven't showered and I don't haven't eaten. And I I'm just getting tired. Okay. So okay. Um. All right. And we had talked earlier about whether or not. Um whether or not it would be able to take action at this point, as far as like gathering evidence and stuff mm -hmm. like that. With um, whether it had been too long, and I told you that it wasn't. Is it something that you're willing to do? Right, yes, yeah. definitely. I would do anything for you to figure out 
who Eduardo is and make sure that Okay. And and it's perfect that I found you to say to make sure that I could just like Okay. What um what pants were you wearing when all this happened? I there was a set of like uh clothing um and I had like washed the stuff like you and I yeah, sure. I get it. Um, taken some of the stuff, um, I don't know, whatever, but I put it with all the stuff that, like, I had washed and stuff like that. I don't remember if it was a black and purple or a black and blue, but it was, like, sporting like, athletic thing. They were on my, um, chair when I went home last night. Were they, like, leggings or joggers or? Yeah, they were, like, like, kind of like this. Like, yeah, yeah like, well, but more of the nylon-ish material. Okay. Thing, so they were like black and maybe purple or blue. Yeah, it was one that I wear like a lot of Nike and, and stuff like that. It was one of those. Okay. And you can give them the alarm code, right? You just gave them the garage code. Cause, yeah, because you didn't have to have, you don't have to have like the alarm code to come in the house. Okay. You have to have, you know, and, and that's the thing that I even set the alarm. I mean, I, I may or may have not. I mean, typically I try to. Simply, I try to, you know, log into my phone and do it if I forget. That's just sure. assuming if I had, whether I had or not, that the alarm, but I, I, I'm pretty positive. I don't say positive. I'm almost certain that I had set the alarm. Sure. Um, but you don't, it doesn't have a sensor on the door. Like when Are you able to see if you log into your alarm account whether or not it was alarmed at that time? Yeah, that's you... what I was trying to show you, but I couldn't observe it. Okay. Okay. Um, you might need to like plug into the Wi Fi or something like that. Yeah. To do that. And there's a there's open Wi Fi. It's like E T guest. Right. You know, it doesn't require a yeah. password or anything like okay. that. If you want to do that, um, can you use a restroom or anything like no, that? No, I'm actually I I mean, am I am I like free to leave or we're not holding you here. Um We'd like to get you for that, get you over to the hospital for that. Oh, I, would, I would totally do that, but I really am. I just want to get some, some food and take a minute, and I can drive myself to the hospital. I don't want to feel like I'm some, you know, person they're going to look at differently because I am showing up with, you know, seeing some people, and I just, that's why I asked you, was it secret, like, where people would know? Because I understand you have a, a goal and a purpose, and that is our common purpose to have done here. Mm -hmm. But we also am thinking about how emotionally. Yeah, and I get that. And so I will tell you that if we drive you over there, we don't go in the front. We go right. in a back way. Right. Um, so you wouldn't be seen by the right. general public or anything like that. And obviously we're not in, like, uniforms. Everything is concealed, all that other stuff. Um, so it's not like we walk in with a... Scarlet letter or anything else like that. So, okay. Um, let me go check on a couple of things really quick and then um, we'll be right back. Okay. Okay, you said I was free to go. Are you wanting to leave right I'm, now? I'm really hungry. I'm thirsty. My, look at my lips. The cat. Okay. So that's really bad. Okay. I mean, I, you guys know my, it's not like I don't answer or talk to you or, or anything like that. Okay. I've kept uh, some communication with you. Okay. Can you give me just a few minutes to just check to make sure that I covered everything that I need to cover, and then I'll come back in? She said that I would be able to go, and she didn't say I would be, like, I, I, I mean, I'm sure I've been here hours, and she said specifically that I would be able to go. And I'm not saying that you can't. I'm asking if you can give me a few minutes. I, I think you can call me, or, I mean, I, I, I feel I, I still have, like, you know, I have to maintain my, my, my mental, my mental health mm -hmm. in this situation, and that's very important, mm -hmm. you know, and I just, I just want to go, my lips are burning, and I, I want to get a sour, I mean, look at my fingers, and all those things. All right. So, it would be better to get... The forensic exam going over there, like before you not shower, like, not like themed. I'm not doing like as in shades and things like that. I'm not doing that. I haven't showered in two days. I, I like that. That's that, that, I'm not doing that. 
but I will guide you go. Well, I mean, if you, if you're saying you want to go take a shower before you go get the no, I didn't say I was going to go take a shower. I said, I need, I need some time to like, to just rest. I'm exhausted. I want to take a shower. I want my hair is nasty and I'm not going over there like dirty, smelly for someone. So. But you realize that's how we gather evidence, right? So if you go take a shower right now and I understand that you're like uncomfortable, right? right? And that you want to take a shower, right? And so that's why I would like to get you over to the to the hospital to get the exam done. Okay, well, I, then I'm driving myself there because I I am not getting escorted to an exam when I'm already going through a difficult time where having to violate my my body mm -hmm. to whether you go in the front or the back. I mean, am I not allowed to take myself there? No, I didn't say that at all. I'm I'm trying to figure out, and I'm trying to impress upon you, like. If you go take a shower, then you wash away the evidence. I know, I understand. I just said... And you said you wanted that you weren't going to go over there while you're... Yeah, I don't want to get dirty. dirty. I can at least go freshen up or something. Like, I'm... Okay. All right. I'll be right back. Okay, so you, can you tell me how to leave? Please? I have to go over here. Let me get somebody to escort you up. Okay. Hi. Said that I could. That I could go. Well, can you talk to me about what? Can I? Can you, you tell me I could? I know, but I left. I just want to. I just want to get the fill in. So I have a couple questions about Sunday. If you're okay, filling that in. I know you're tired. I'm tired. I said so that I could. So I just want to take a break. That's all I'm asking for. Where do you want to that means I want to go to a rest. Like she said, I could drive myself to the hospital, so I just felt wrong. What do we need to go to? Am I am I able okay? to just to just go? I mean, what do you mean? Am I okay? But I've been hearing about a hospital. I mean, what's going on with that? This is this is why this is frustrating because I have already <laughs> her information. That you guys can fully like watch and see, and you can know why I'm going to the hospital because she wants to get um, DNA, DNA, let or to have your body checked. So, right. Were you supposed to be the Did that happen? It happened on Monday. On Monday. What? I can't. I can't. Right now, I'll go through it again. I can't. Okay. So let me make sure that we've got everything lined up for a same exam. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, right? she's going to do that, and I'm going to just take a break. I want to get food. Look at my lips. So, chat. I haven't. You want the food? I know. I want. What do you want to eat? Okay, she just said I could be escorted out. Okay. And I just. Hey, I, I hey, promise you have my number. I haven't not. You're done with, you're done with all this? Right, I haven't not communicated with you. I have been. Are you done with that cup? Nothing, but. I, can I not take it? You can if you want. I, I just didn't know if you were done with it. We we were cycling too. So okay. Okay. Hang on. Hang tight for me, just real quick. Let me make sure that she doesn't have any other questions. Let me finish. Let me just okay. Okay. I get that. Get that. Let's just let me just let me double check with uh, her. You said she said I could go. That she finished up the interview. I don't. I don't know. Me here? I'm not holding okay, you. Okay. So can someone walk me out? You want to go? You want to leave? I I will I will clearly ask answer your questions. I just want to take a break. Like I've literally done followed all your. All Where do you want to go for your break? I want to see my I want to see my child. Okay. I want to get lunch with her. Well, I'm more than happy to to get you lunch or to bring your daughter here or or whatever needs to happen. I'm not I'm not saying that that you can't leave. But I would like to finish up this conversation with you. There's a couple of questions about Sunday that I have, and this is the first time that I'm hearing that you're sexually assaulted. You go stand right. That would be well. You lean towards the door, so open the door. If you'd like to have a conversation in the room, we can. It's up to you. But like I said, I missed out on a bunch, so. And I'm being able to just go and chill out. 
doing? Is this in the room? Where do you want to go? So, am I not allowed to? I'm maybe asking the question. Well, I'm, I'm trying, so I guess our communication isn't the greatest at this point in time. <clears throat> Are you, you wanting to leave the office to go get something? Right, hey, yes. I just, I, I, we, have, we have my number. I'm not, okay. I'm not going to okay. not answer you for anything. I'm going to answer you. Okay. Thanks, Bane. How are you? Man, I just want to get started. I, I, I do. And so, um, once again, we're, we're back on we're back in, in the interview room. Okay. We're on camera. Mitch Maholko, he's in the investigation section. Okay. okay. So at this point in time, you know, uh, we're, we're just a step out, out, outside and tell me I'm wrong. Thanks. But you decide that you, you wish to leave and that there's no problem with that. Um, I, I asked if. Uh, you didn't ask. You took. Okay. At that point in time. Um, uh, I, I, uh, uh, you know, really, for me, I, 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 and, uh, and I told you that it would be applying for a search warrant. Okay, you said applying. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I literally just need directions. I, I mean, I have family numbers in there I don't have. Okay, you're going to be applying for a search warrant. Is that, is, is that understood? Okay, I'm going to ask you one, one favor. You let me find out, or you show me something that is, that you can legally take my phone and you don't have a search warrant yet. Can you show me that? Can you show me that? Can you show me that? We are being video recorded. I understand, but can you show me that, sir? Because that feels like that's kind of a little unconstitutional. Okay. And if that's the case, that was it. That can be something that you did right now. No, that sounds unconstitutional. Hold on to this phone. Okay. Can I use another phone? The phone is turning. That is unconstitutional. There are multiple phones here. Um, I, I'm not hiding anything from you. I just want direction. I want to be able to call my family. No, you don't understand. No, you don't. You are doing something that's unconstitutional. You can avoid traffic. Thank you. So we're going to hold on to this. Is we are You don't even have a warrant yet. I just want direction. I want to get back to directions. I don't want to know. I want to get back to the call. That's all. That's all I want. That's the call. You can. It's not about the phone or the number. So it's the call. So it's the call. We've got you so far supported at this point. We're going to be held. So we can do a search for it. And we're going to be able to do it. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to hold you here until we get that first. Do I have to sit in the Yes. Do I have to, like, stay at the door? I mean, I'm, I've been shut up in here, ma'am, and I've been nothing but respectful to you. Sure, and, and I'm... And I didn't... Mean, sure. Can I speak to you, too? I wasn't... I'm, I don't care that you had the phone. You took it out of my hand, and that was very, that was very, that was very disrespectful. If you would have just asked me for it, I would have given that to you. I would have been sure. But it was, it was, a, it was a label to do. Okay, so that's, that was my, my thing with you on that. And then, all I'm saying is, can, we'll have to be trapped in a room. 
So you should, I understand that, um, and I hear what you're saying, right. you're not feeling disrespected about right. the form being taken, and that right. was this is right. Okay. Right? And, and, and I'm sure that, I'm not letting him speak right now, but I'm right. sure if I did, he would say that he is right. sorry for making you feel disrespected. That's fine. Okay. At this point, I'm being told that you have to stay, okay. and this is where we have to keep you. Okay. This okay. is this is going to be the most comfortable environment. Okay. Okay. There's like there's a couch and whatever else. Our other interview room. Why would you say I'm paying us a lot now? We're getting a search warrant. We're getting we don't have the phone. Uh, for you. For me, what's needed? Because you've given us multiple different stories. Oh, you talking about like the the thing you stuck on the next. Yes. Oh, I was like, okay, I got, I got, I think it's in. I got because you. at this point, you have evidence potentially on your body. I got right? it. I'm sorry, I think it's in. Okay. Well, can I at least like go to the bathroom and like? No. Wipe off. Nothing. I can't see nothing. Well, I, can, I can tell you that that a forensic nurse examiner is a is oh, awesome to. So, yeah. When I tell you you can't go to the bathroom, okay. What we're telling you is that you can't go into the bathroom. No, I didn't see and that. I had to like hold up, now go. hold up. And I've offered you the opportunity multiple times to go to the bathroom. I know, but I wanted to think. So hold on. Okay. So here's the thing. Okay. I don't. You can take whatever you want from my bathroom. Right. We're not saying that you can't go urinate okay. or defecate if that's okay. what you need to do. Okay. What we're telling you that you can't allow to have happen is you go in there and get paper towels and begin wiping possible well, evidence off of it? your body. Do you want to watch me? We will get back with you and we'll get you to, to the bathroom here in just a minute. Okay. Okay. So just have a seat for us and we'll be back with you. Can you just watch me? What about like the older drinks or something? I don't know. Hot meal? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you need a, a colder bottle of water? Or a Gatorade? Are you taking my drink? What? No one? Am I able to make a phone call? Can I make a phone call? Because you said I could make the phone. Yeah. I told you I'm going to say that. Who does it? We're not, we're not asking, we're not asking you questions. I'm not allowed to make a phone call. I'm not asking you. I have the right to Tisha, Okay, so things have changed since, since I made that statement to you. What? Okay. And so that is, at this point in time, I just you're, you're no longer. Please let me explain to okay, you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So things have changed. Initially, you were free to leave. Right. And, um, you know, you can stop answering questions. Right. Whenever you wish, et cetera, et cetera. Now, okay, through the course of the investigation, uh, we have reason to believe that you potentially have evidence on your body, and we're applying for so, a different warrant. So, so that's what it was. You're not free to leave. Don't want to be escorted away. Basically, I'm not stupid. There is. We know you are. Okay. Yeah, you're very so so, And then, and then somebody can carry educated. We're trying to get you to. We're trying to get you to cooperate with it. Um, but we are going to apply for the search warrant. I know. I said so she just take me over there. Here's the thing. Because you've already said that you didn't okay. want us to do that, I now know. we have to go through the process of getting a search warrant because you've already declined that option. I understand. So it's going to take a little bit longer. Okay. And right now I need you to have a seat on the couch. But I did not call him back. I didn't call him back. Right now you're being held. So okay. Um, can you do those questions then while we have the time or you said something about you had questions. Um, you've already asked for an attorney. No, I was out in the hallway. You said, do I need to call an attorney? I'd like to make a phone call and all that stuff. So here's the thing. I don't, I don't want to get into all of that. Any, any I'm other questions? Because you've already said. I was saying, I was saying for attorney to ask them. Is this, is, am I, I know. And, and, and not the thing is, you. I do not want it to be misinterpreted in any way, shape or form. Right. Okay. So we're going to hold off right now. So you're saying you don't have those, have those questions to ask me while we were sitting on at this point in time. Okay. okay. If something changes, I will let you know. Okay. Right. 
to a place. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll take our evening break. If we can have all of you uh, where you need to be on Friday morning, we should be able to start on time at that point. Uh, again, don't discuss the case among yourself. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. So, and research about any aspect of this case. Um, enjoy tomorrow. Uh, see if you can get some sunshine. Um, and then we'll see you on Friday morning, uh, 9 o'clock. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you may all be seated, record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Is there anything we need to pick up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? No, you're not. Depends. No, sir. Okay. All right. Um, as I said, uh, my docket tomorrow is uh, virtual, so you can leave everything here. There's not going to be anybody else here except for myself and Mr. Sproul. So um, you can leave everything here if you want. It's okay. up to you. If there's something that you want to lock up, let us know. We can put it in an evidence closet. Okay. Thank you, Judge. And get out of here. Yeah. See. All rise.